stupid killer. Beats in the hood. What it good be, hoping this is what it should be. This is your boy N O R E. What up, it's DJ E F N. And this Drink Champs Happy Hour. Make, Make some, some noise! noise. <laughs> when we talk about an icon of an icon, when we talk about legends of legends, this man has had at least two, three, four careers. Careers. So many people come and go in this rap game for you to sustain your success. Like how this man has sustained and been a G about it the whole time. A lot of people would have lost their mind, went crazy, been rolling out here with 15,000 people. He came to dinner last night with his family. Mm. Like, like, that's gangster to me. Right. I mean, album after album, hit after hit, continuously to be relevant. You know, some say lit is the father of gangster rap. And then to have a great career like that and then go on to dominate movies and dominate a TV show. That TV show been out for fucking 25 fucking years. <laughs> motherfucker, if you don't know what the fuck we talking about at this point, we talking about motherfucking IT. <laughs> I want, I want to get straight to the speech. Go get, <laughs> straight, straight to the speech. Um, I never seen this, a speech as... I mean, you you and Snoop is, both is cold. Because Snoop thanked himself, right? Yes. And you thanked the haters. I thanked the haters. <laughs> <laughs> but did you make this speech up as you as you was talking or you had this written down? I walk, I walk with that all every day. Like, haters have always been my motivation. I actually have a closing line called Powered by Hate. Wow. Mm. Which I've always been able to use, you know, the the, the, the the energy from them as my motivation. Right. You know, like, all I got to do is go on the internet and I find somebody talking shit about me, then I'm going to go in the gym. <laughs> I get, you know, I, I take <laughs> right. that energy. That's oh, this, thing, this nigga fell off. Right. Okay. that That's why I need that. Because praise doesn't do much for me. I, I'm not that guy. Right. Like, it just, I, I got it. So, a bad show is what's going to make me do a good show. Mm -hmm. So so I always, like, use it. So now I'm getting a star, right? Uh -huh. You don't know how many times I've been arrested in Hollywood, how many times I've been face down on them stars looking at them. Like, <laughs> That's Chris. You know, getting cuffed. <laughs> so now I've been, I've been to Hollywood police station so many times. So now that, what a difference a day makes. Now they, they honoring me. And so I'm there, I'm in this moment, right? I got Dick Wolf and all the Law & Order people there. Uh -huh. Russell Simmons, Ice Cube showed up. You know, all my Gs all right. were there. And I'm saying all the right stuff. And then I just it just hit me, man. That shit just came out of nowhere. Wow. I said, man, I think the fucking haters, yeah. man. I gotta get there. Y'all really is what pushed me and motivated me to get to this point. The all fact right. you said I could not do it. Right. So... I tell I that I, it just happened, man. It was and, and I, I think people dug it. It was organic. Yeah, yeah it was it was authentic. Yeah. I caught the Holy Ghost. Like, yo, like, <laughs> see, see, fuck these motherfucking haters, man. They got, but I love them because I need them. See, see that part went viral, but you, but I, I suggest people go watch the, the whole, whole thing. Speech. Yeah, the whole you know what I mean. It was yeah, motivational. The, yeah, the whole speech. But a lot of people don't know you was cursing throughout the whole motherfucking speech. Like, well, I curse. I use all King's English. I, <laughs> I, 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 I explain to people that 
even the term curse. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if you look up profanity in a dictionary, there's something which is blasphemous. Mm-hmm. Blasphemy would be saying the Lord's name in vain. Right, right. So the only word that could be considered blasphemous would be God be damned. Right. We, you know, when I'm not going to do no no seance and that shit here, right. but basically fuck shit, bitch, hoe, dirty hoe, slut, this. Right. These are just taboo words right. that bother people. Right. So your parents would tell you, if you say them words, you're going to go to hell. But in that, by them using those words, using that theory, right. saying fuck is going to send you to hell, they in themselves are are creating something blasphemous. Mm. So if anybody's going to hell, it's your fucking parents for lying to you all these years. <laughs> because I, I, I think profanity is just an explanation point you put into a sentence. Right. You want me to give you an example? Mm-hmm. Your mother says, don't take the car. Your dad says, don't touch my motherfucking car. Mm-hmm. What he did is he took a, a, a word, brought it into the sentence that brought <laughs> your attention because the car can't fuck more or less fuck his bitch. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so... <laughs> So when we say these words, it's like they're just explanation points. Right. So I to add to the statement, but they don't have they don't hold any merit. Meaning, right, right. They don't hold you know bullshit. What is who have really ever seen bullshit? Like you know, it's not, what is a bull? How about dog shit? <laughs> so I, I just use them. So you know, and if if you ask me not to, I won't. I can also do that. All right. I can behave uh, if it bothers you, <laughs> if it offends you. But if I'm speaking freely, which I feel like I'm on drink champ. Uh, uh, so occasionally they'll uh, occasionally they'll pop out. And like you early said something about gangster rap. When I started rapping, I would curse or use profanity. That was new. That was new. People would actually get on a record and just say, talk the way people talk. I was new. It's like throwing paint on a canvas. How old was you? Like that. When I started rapping, yeah. I was uh about 26. Wow. Okay. I didn't start early. I I, I actually had been in the street, so I had some experience. Mm. You know, my wife will listen to rappers. She's like 19. Right. And I like, she's like, so how could they have done all that? I said, they haven't. Right. <laughs> they haven't. I'm I, 27. I've been in the military. I lived. I've been out there. I tried my luck in the streets. Right. So by the time I was rapping, my, my, my shit was loaded with information. Right. So, yeah, 27. What what year was that when you started? I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. I'm older, though. You know, I graduated from high school at 76. Okay. I was you know? born in 77, just so you know. Born in 75. Right. Don't make me son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was that. I was so, yeah. So, so last night, <laughs> you're hanging out. I got you to drink a glass of champagne. Yeah, I, I, I told you I don't drink, but I socially sip. Socially sip. That's I socially sip. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> and when you socially sip, is, is it always champagne? I sometimes, like, I'm out with my wife. She'll drink cranberry and vodka. Uh-huh. And, you know, depending on how you mix it, it can, it's just, you know, you can mix it strong. Sometimes I'll sip uh, Kahlua and milk, which is kind of like Starbucks. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I've drank Jaeger. My, like when, pe- when I tell people I don't drink, what I mean is I don't you sit at home. You need a lot of shit, Ice. I don't sit at Jager home. Meister. I don't sit at home and drink. Right, right. okay. You know, the homie that's sitting home at two in the afternoon with right. the bourbon, like right. looking right. at television and it's right. on and then. Right. That nigga, that's not me. And I, I never really drank when I was hanging out because I felt it compromised my position. I never thought being drunk was attractive. Yeah, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, For men or women. Because yesterday you said um, you didn't you didn't never taste the Ace of Spades. I never tasted Ace of Spades. So I remember when you drank Ace You introduced Spades, me to it. And, and it was decent. What I, what I didn't realize is you and Hoes... Not discrepancy, but um, misunderstanding about 99 problems. Well, the thing about the 90, let's go, you want to go into Jay-Z? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wants to get right into it. Because <laughs> you know he owns the champagne. I remember love for Jigger. That's right. I knew Jigger. I met Jay-Z way back in the day. Big Daddy Kane brought him to my house. Wow. Back when he was That's... with Jazzo. Wow. Jay-Z was just a kid, so wow. he wasn't really... Doing much, but he was just there with Kane. Kane was the boss. Mm-hmm. Everybody, they take. See what happens in the, in the, in this podcast world is they'll take something I'm saying right now and they'll edit it with another something from someplace else and it'll yeah. turn it into a conversation that not is not real. Right. There's right. no beef between me and Jay Z and 99 Problems, but a lot of people didn't know that that was originally my song. Right. 
Right. So when they asked me about it, I said, that's originally my song. Then the podcast world goes, Ice-T, see, Jay stole it. And, no, Jay did not steal it. Yeah, you're shit. just explaining something. Explaining it. So you want to know the story of the 99 Problems yeah. since we're on Drink Chest? Yes, let's go. I was with Brother Marquise from... Uh, Two Live Crew. Two Live Crew. And Joe, Brother Marquise was talking about Whoop, There It Is. Now, uh. do you know the story behind Whoop, There It Is? Nah. Whoop, There It Is is what they used to say at Magic City when the girls would bend over and you could see they pussy. Wow. I never knew. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, <laughs> right. Tag team with the DJs in Magic City. Okay. All right, now it makes sense. So when the girls boo, no, okay, whoop, and, there and, it is. Because I, I just want to be clear. Magic City is a strip in, club. In Atlanta. 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 Yeah, yeah Atlanta. Okay. Atlanta. I, I, I thought you were talking about Miami. Because he said Brother Marquis. Okay, yeah. Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. Atlanta. okay. Tag team were the DJs in the club. They were the strip club DJs. And that was what they'd say when the girl been a whoop, there it is. So now that became a big hit record. Uh, so right. Marquis is at my house. He's like, nigga, I was sitting there all them nights. That was the phrase it paid. <laughs> you know? And then out of nowhere, he said, man, I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. I said, what the fuck did you just say? Uh -huh. He said, I got nine. I said, that's a record, Mark. That's a record. So he says, okay, fuck with it. So I write the record. I got a hoe from the east. I got a hoe from the west. I got a hoe that likes a jacket off and rub it in her chest. I got a bitch from the north, a bitch from the south, a bitch that likes to suck it long and hold it in her mouth. I got a bitch with hair, a bitch with none, a bitch with a <laughs> knife, a bitch with a gun, a bitch with an ass big as a TV set. And there's a bitch over there. Hey, the one I'm going to get, but yo, but maybe not. She may not like me, though. No sweat to a vet. I'll fuck her sister, though. Word. I rock the whole damn herd. Fuck them all and put them on the curb. I got a bitch with a mink who rocks a Fat gold link who likes to fuck me with her ass upon the kitchen sink. I got a bitch with tits, a bitch with ass, a bitch with none. But hey, I give her a pass and I love them all. I love them crazily and they love me back. That's why they stay with me. So if you're having girl problems, I feel bad for your son. I got 99 problems and a bitch in the me. So that. That was that was that was on the home invasion album. So there's more, uh, you know, it, it goes on and on. And Marquise says a rhyme. And so so what happens the way the story goes? Rick Rubin was producing Jay Z mm. in the studio, and Chris Rock was there. Mm. This is the story I got. Chris is an Ice T fan because we we bonded from New Jack City. Mm -hmm. Pookie, Pookie, that's right. my nigga. Right. I yeah. saved his fucking life. Well, right. he got killed. Pookie got it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he relapsed heavy. <laughs> yeah, he relapsed. <laughs> Yo, Scotty. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> yeah, keep calling me, man. It's cold. <laughs> so, apparently they said Chris gave Rick the idea to do 99 Props. Uh. And so that's where they 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 decided to do the song. The cold thing is Jay Z when he did the song, he even took the hit. Hit me. me. Yeah, yeah, that, just, that's the part yeah. that got me. I'm yeah. like, damn, he got that part. So he, he does the record. The record's a hit. Now, I had a publishing deal with Warner Brothers. When you anybody knows what a publishing deal is, you can sell your publishing to people for a year. Mm -hmm. And and they'll give you the money up. Warner front. Brothers or Warner Chapel? I don't know. Okay, okay. All right. It was Warner something. Okay, okay. It could have been MC, it could have been Universal. I don't know. Okay. I had a publishing deal. Okay. So for that year, mm. they pay you at front. Like say for instance, over a year you might make two, three hundred thousand on your publishing. Mm. With a publishing deal, you you say, give me that up front. And then after that number, we'll split it 50-50. And then at the end of the year, I get it back and I could do it. So that's a publishing deal. Mm. During the time I I did the the 99 Problems, I was in a publishing deal. Mm -hmm. So that money just, I didn't get paid. Oh, it, went, it went off to the deal. Uh -huh. And that's how it happened. Uh, Jay-Z didn't steal it. Right. right. Uh, so I, the end of the story is, it hits the internet and everybody, ice tea's pissed. I'm like, I'm not even pissed. It's trip for somebody to say you mad and you not mad. I'm like, I'm not mad. Why are they making me mad, right? So <laughs> I'm at the Grammys. So I see Jay Z right now. Now Jay Z is another uh, has turned into a whole nother thing. Uh, yes, right. You know, yeah. I, but I respect that. Once he got married, he like he's now. I I, I respect marriage. Okay, okay, okay. I can't. We don't. You know. So anyway, I see him 
And he smiles at me. He goes, Ice, you mad at me? I said, nah. And he says, you know I love you, right? I said, I love you. I said, yeah. And he says, nine up. I said, Jay-Z, I, that's not by my words, right? And so then at the end, I said, but Jay, at, during, at the end of the record, you could have said, Ice. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you could have thrown a nigga a bone or something. I could have used it. I'm not a billionaire, Jay, you know? But no, no, all love right. and you know, once again, this is what the press can do and steer shit into right. beef that's not ever beef. T- to be clear, though, did your publishing collect off of that? Or I'm no? sure they did. Oh, they did. Oh, I'm sure they did. Okay. I'm sure they did. But no, there was no check written. I didn't get nothing like that. Right. I mean, just recently, Ice Cube is a neat teenage ninja mutant. Mi- ninja Turtles? Teenage mutant ninja, mutant ninja, ninja Turtles. Turtles, right? And so I'm watching TV and I hear... The, the fucking turtles say, uh, <laughs> six in the morning, police at my door. No way. Yeah. Right? You heard it? That's your shit. Yeah. Right. So yeah, Cube did that. Sick. But I got paid. Right. It, that goes through publishing and stuff like that. And I right. got a little check because I got my publishing back now. I own my publishing, so I got a, a check. Right. I won't tell, tell you, but I got paid. Right. I was like, okay. So, yeah, it's publishing. Jamie, I know he's not drinking, but can we offer him a glass of champagne? Yeah, give me, give me something. Yeah, yeah, give me, give me yeah, something from the top shelf, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, glass of champagne. Come on, come give on, guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, but yeah, yeah. I don't have no beef with nobody, man. I, I, I've, I've made managed to navigate this, this hip hop shit without any drama with anybody. Which leads to my next question. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm a hustler. I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm your pusher. Right. That was LL. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got the crackhead taking, taking everybody else's music, but when you offer him LL music, the crackhead said, "Nah, man." Okay, let's go to LL. <laughs> okay. Is this called drink champs or beef champs? <laughs> no, no, no. no I just, listen, as a fan, I want to know how that started. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> okay, this story's been told, but right. this is how it happened. Yeah. LL was LL was the the nigga at the time. LL was out, you know, it, it, insurmountable beat subject of discussion. You're motivated by that. So I need. So I'm a, I'm I'm in LL right, but LL had came out and said I'm the greatest all time early in his right. career. He started the goat thing. Right. Okay, I'm coming from LA. I'm trying to be a hot rapper, uh-huh. so I had to go at him. Uh-huh. That's just the culture. So I took off on LL. Fuck this nigga. Like, that's what's happening, right? Not like I want to shoot him. Just fuck you. You ain't the best rapper. At the time, I thought I was a pretty good rapper, okay? Right. And that's what it was. Um, I started it. <laughs> pretty much. That's it. <laughs> I started it, right? So LL comes back with the break of dawn. And he dissed me, called me a little rap raccoon or some shit. Because <laughs> I had a ponytail. And we was about to come back. I had another song called Open Contract, right? And um, at that point, L wanted to be part of Zulu Nation. Mm. And at that time, I was higher up in Zulu because Africa Islam had put me in the game. So Iz was the president of the Zulu. Right, right. So they come to me asking me, can L be in Zulu? I'm like, nah. <laughs> nah, I can't. So, I, cause I had a little power. So it went back and forth and stuff. But Bam Bada at the time just said, "Yo, we need peace, 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 peace." So me and L agreed not to talk shit about each other. We didn't do no handshakes or hugs or kisses or make records. Right. We just said, squ- "You know, you squash." Just people. agreed to it. We agreed not to be at each other. So right. I never said anything else negative about L. He never said anything else negative about me. Fast forward 20 years. We're in Monte Carlo uh, at a television convention, right? Oh, we're going, we're going to skip over Monte, Monte Carlo. Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the flyest spot in the world, right? right, right, right. French motherfucking <laughs> Riviera. Yeah. Yachts everywhere. Yeah, yeah, God damn it. And it's a, it, my feelings it's, immediately. It's a t- <laughs> no, we went on a vacation. It was a TV convention okay. where people from television in the United States would go over there and they had like an award ceremony and all that old bullshit. So I'm over there and I look across the thing, I see El Cool J. So I'm finna walk over to LL Cool J, right? 20 years, we have never really talked. So have y'all saw each other and not talk or, or never? No, we never crossed never, paths. Oh, okay, go ahead, continue. We never crossed paths. But it was never no real beef. Right. right. It was just rap shit. You can't have beef in Monte Carlo anyway. That would have been disrespectful. Tupac <laughs> and Big would have squashed that shit there. Right up. Come on. 
<laughs> I mean, y'all depends on who you fuck with. <laughs> some shit is on site, right? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> some shit is on, so anyway, I, I, I walk over to L. I said, yo, man, you've been blah, long years with this, that, and the third, man. You know, just want to let you know, you know, even... Even back then, what I, you know, I just, I didn't necessarily apologize. I said, I just clarified my position that I wasn't mad or we wasn't tight. He said, Ice, it was the culture, man. Uh. And that's like that. And then he turned, he said, man, I need you. He says, I got a, I'm doing this Rock the Bells radio and I need to get at you so me and you could show our, you know, this, this for the culture. Right. And since then, me and LL, I've been on his podcast. I'm not a podcast, but live stream. Yeah. And we chopped it up. And we were just recently at the Grammys together. I mean, see, That's real dope. beef, this real beef, real beef never dies. Right. Real beef. Real right. beef is murder. Right. Death. That's that never dies. I don't give a fuck. Right. You know, if somebody killed somebody that you love, that's not going no more. We ain't hugging later, nigga. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But everything else is not necessarily real beef. Uh, somebody ripped you off some money, this, that, and the other. You might be able to get over that, you know? So rap shit is not nowhere near real beef. That's not real, you know, not in my book. All right. uh, that's real shit. Right. So, like, again, sorry to bring up... Like, Here we go. Beef. Like, no, 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 Who else? No, no, Anybody beef. else? No, no, no. Bring no, no, up Soulja Boy. Why don't you bring up Soulja Boy? We'll get back to that. Who is this get to that, too. No, but, no, it's not even worth it. Let me just say something. No, last night... You got night, me here and we want to talk about that. Now, last night... We we out and you play we play on the speaker all night. You're playing the War Report. You're playing Bono Noriega's first album. It's the anniversary, so congratulations. Yes, yes. Hold on, let me build up to it. So I'm sitting there and I usually be like, come on, because I don't want to hear my own shit. That's one thing. Right. And then two, it's like you know it was a different setting, but I didn't say nothing to you. I just I was let you walk. And you know what today is? The 26th anniversary of the War Report. How the fuck did you know? I didn't even know like. I keep playing this shit all night, and I'm looking, and I was just like, you know, usually I'm like, oh, please, man, I don't want to hear my own shit, but for some reason, I was just like, it's, I can't tell Ice nothing. Right. <laughs> and I wake up this morning, and all I see is like, I said, this motherfucker told me, it was basically like you was telling me that last night. Look, Nori, this is what you don't understand to me, right? That's who you are to me. Right. You know, like L.A., we had our, our rappers, our gangster rappers, whether it was Spice One or myself or Pick up Q, Spice One. Mm-hmm. All, 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 the, all us ghetto boys. But we knew who was doing the similar shit in West on the East Coast. Queens to us was the most replicated gangster rap, the best, whether it's Mob Deep, whether it's Nas. Mm-hmm. I mean, we also, we got to go with M.O.P. Yep. Yeah. We got to go with Capone and Noriega. Uh, we know who is doing that shit, the apolitical gangster shit. Gangster shit, gangster rap is apolitical. Right. It means like, fuck the laws, I am the law. And mm-hmm. this is how I see shit. You cross me, you die. That's right. gangster rap, right? right. That's what Nori and them was Iraq and all that bloody money. Like, yo, we like, who are these niggas? What's who are these niggas? Oh, that, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, that, yeah. So I'm feeling that right, right. now. I see him like now people see me as the police. Right. But when I when I <laughs> right right because if you're 20, I've been on TV 25 years playing the cop. So if you see me on TV, you 21, 22, you have no reference point to me as anything other than that. Right. My reference point to Nori right. is not drink champs. Right, right. It's them what, 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 what? <laughs> nigga, like that, day, you know, like you get shot shit, right? right. <laughs> and I don't even think a lot of people who really set up with him on here realize how dangerous his music was. Right. Right. Was right. or is. Right. 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 They don't, they, they get it. Even if they caught the end of it, when they, you know, they like, uh, uh, you know, light a candle, swim laps around the English Center. That's not that gangster shit that <laughs> niggas was doing earlier. Right. Right. That early shit was violent, right. which yeah. I like, right? right? So I come in bumping that shit through my little speaker. I still listen to that shit. Uh-huh. Me right now, if you're in my car, we listen to Mob Deep. Right. We listen to that kind of heavy shit. I just, it puts me in a zone. It keeps me on like this. Uh-huh. So I love it. So, <laughs> but look, but look, this is my reference point. I see. Goddamn, goddamn. Got and before that, this is one of my favorite albums. Thank you, original gangster. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so I was gonna wear my Richard, but I said let me wear my War Report because it's a camouflage. It's only gangster. So, it's so, only right. What do you have on? Is another Richard? 
Why you say Richard? Because I'm trying to sound. <laughs> I'm trying to sound rich. That's how they pronounce it, right? Richard. Yeah. Richard. Richard Mills. I thought he was going to wear the other Richard that he had on yesterday. He just bought out another one. Come on, let's make some noise for that motherfucker. That, that TV money. And another thing we was talking about was don't get me robbed. Of- yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> you good? You good? I be telling niggas these are swatches. They look like swatches. They look like swatch watches. Like. <laughs> Yo, no, but I'm like, come on, man. Please. One, one thing. I don't wear jewelry. Yeah, but one thing. One thing that was funny is, um, <laughs> you. We was talking yesterday, and you said that how, at that time, it, it you was frowned upon to, to join a TV show. You was looked at like a Will Smith or like 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 you know like. Like, you was looking like you was, you was selling out at that time. Look, dude, everything I done, it seemed weird to niggas in the street. Like, when I started rapping, niggas like, you a rapper? Right. Like, you rapping? <laughs> like, nigga, we get money, nigga. We, get, we out here doing our shit, you know? You rapping? Uh, like, it was whack. Right. To, until, they, until they all went to prison and came home, and now they work for me. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> you know, but at the time, like, nigga, you better come get this money. Right. Stop mm. playing with rap. Right. Rap niggas. Like, they were, we was whack. Like, nigga, you dance. Nigga, we don't right. dance. Nigga, like, you know what I'm saying? Because you was a B-boy. You was out there. But I liked it. See, right. I, I got I got hit by the hip-hop bug. I wanted to be a DJ, a B-boy, all that. But my street cats, that was not happy because there was no money in it. Right. If ain't no money in it, they like... Why are you support. doing it? Waste time. Right. So I would hustle on the week and on the weekends I would go to the club and beep and play rapper. But as far as being an actor, of course, when when I started acting, no one had acted yet. Nobody. Will Smith, nobody. Yeah, Pac, yeah. nobody. I was wow. the first rapper to take on a dramatic role. And what role was that? Uh, my first, very first role has to be New Jack City. Wow. That was the first time. Because you had Tuffin and Leather. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. You had Tougher Than Leather. You had you had uh, uh, Beat Street. Beat Street. Breaking. You had Breaking. Crush Groove. Crush Groove. But nobody, but at that time, the rappers were playing rap. Themselves. They weren't really acting. Oh. Right. right, right, right. So I had to play a cop, and that was that was a trip, too, because that was the year I dropped the original Gangster album. I was terrified. I thought I was committing career suicide. Wow. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I took the chance. I got, I, I told you that story. I got pressed. Like, I used to get my hair done, right? You know, remember, I used to have a perm. I was, my shit was more wavy than the ships in the Navy. You know, because as a player, as a player, you have to outmatch a bitch. You got to, you got to look better than a bitch. That's the game. Of, that's part of being a player. You got to have your nails done better. You got to dress better. Your hair got to grow longer. You have to outmatch him. Like, you know, you in that weave. You know that ain't your nails, so so you gonna bow down to this country. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So, <laughs> so that's where this I was. Is mad in my, it's it's totally logical because yeah. they have to understand it. Uh-huh. They understand it. You know that that I'm I'm flying you. Right. Let's get that straight off the top. Right. So, um, I was in my place getting my hair done. I used to get my hair done twice a week, and uh, I said I got a chance to be in a movie. And the girl Pearl who did my hair was like. And you ain't going to take it because I didn't want to play the police. Uh, I was questioning. She said, nigga, all you niggas is running around here doing all this crime shit. And you, you talking about no opportunities. And this is the opportunity. If you do not take it, you a real life sucker. I, mm. And this is a woman calling me a sucker. She's like, you a real life sucker. You, you, this is your chance. Do it. You're going to keep it 100 forever because I know how you cut. But don't. Let this fuck you up, you know. But you, wow. and then, and then, then I, I, that was first one. Then I talked to one of my real G's, Nelsy, rest in peace. He's like, "Why you worry about playing police? Niggas know you ain't no motherfucking police. Right. <laughs> Why you worried about that shit, nigga? You got to get that paper." And then I would call my, I talk to my other homies. I say, "Yo, man, they want me to be in a movie, play the police." They be like, "Word? <laughs> Should I be in the movie?" <laughs> Yeah. Call people in jail. Yeah. Yo, they want me to. I know you in the bowels of the devil. I know you stuck. You want me to? I want to pay the police. Word. If I was home, could I be in a movie? You know. So everybody said, "Go do it, do it, do it." I did New Jack City. You know, and that was my first movie. And in the, in show business, if the movie you're in makes money, you'll be in another movie. Right. Yeah. And then you did New York Undercover, right? See, New York Undercover is another story where. 
I was at my house in Hollywood Hills. At this time, I was living. I was I was like I had elevated out the hood. I'm in the I'm in the hills. You ever see MTV Cribs? Yeah. Where I had the, the, you open the shit up? Yeah, yeah. the motherfucking house with yeah. the brains blown out. Yeah. Nigga. Well, who had a convertible house? Right, nigga, stop right, it. Right. Stop it. DJ Khaled ain't even still got a convertible house. <laughs> Take some champagne. Take a sip of champagne, goddammit. Well, nigga, I had a convertible house, nigga. Stop God it. Goddamn. Go Let's get to the convertible house. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this is some good shit. Yeah, this is good shit. <laughs> it's a spade, baby. I've tasted champagnes before. I, I, I know Dom is nice. Mm -hmm. A good champagne, when it gets in your mouth, it evaporates. Right, exactly. If you take in wax champagne, when you it tastes like you're drinking 7-Up. Right. Like, it's like... <laughs> right. Dude. All right, anyway. Uh -huh. Convertible house. <laughs> I'm at the convertible house, Fab Five Freddy's at the crib. One of my OG. Shout out to Fat Five. Fat Five from Wild Style. Yes, yeah, that's right. He was there. Wow. He's he's a day one hip hop. Yeah. Right. yeah, of course. Certain people are day one. So he's talking to me at my about my house. He's telling me we should I should turn my living room into a planetarium like in the back. <laughs> and so I could have stars up there so we could show the hoes the constellations. <laughs> Can't make this shit up. <laughs> Freddie gonna laugh. So Andre Harrell hits him up, rest in peace. Andre Harrell's like, you at Ice's crib? Tell Ice to come be on S be on um New York Undercover. So I told Andre, fuck that. I said, that's a rip off of New Jack City. Fuck you. Mm. In case you haven't checked, I'm doing movies right now, nigga. I don't do TV. So I'm on my bullshit, right? Cause I was doing a movie. I was doing a movie with Keanu Reeves and shit. So I was like, nigga, I'm up in the hills. I was a little bit, I was a little bit full of myself at that point. Right. Really coming to Andre, because I knew Andre from Jekyll and Hyde days. Right. Oh, come on, Ice. Oh, you too big now? That's what black people yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You too big? Now you can't fuck with us? I said, all right, give me a bad guy role and I'll do it. And I did Danny Up. Uh, then I did one episode and Dick Wolf basically said, I don't want to kill Ice. Will he do two more episodes? You're supposed to die in the first episode. And that's when I came back. I shot Malik Yoba's girl. Nice. Uh, cut fingers off. They let me wild out. Right. Two episodes. <laughs> And that was my first working with Dick Wolf. And after that, I did Swift Justice, one of his shows. Then I did Law and Order Exile. Then I did, uh, I had my own show, Players, which is on for a season. And then I got called to do SVU, which was only supposed to be a four episode arc. And I went on there for four episodes. I've been on there 25 So it started years. from New York Undercover. Yeah. Dick wow. Wolf, Dick Wolf is the producer of all those shows. That's he, incredible. Dick Wolf has nine shows in prime time right now. Nine shows. He has S Law and Order, SVU, Organized Crime. He has FBI, FBI Most Wanted, FBI International, Chicago PD, Chicago Med, Chicago. Nine shows in prime time. Yeah, he's not to be fucked with. Yeah. And his checks and his checks clear. <laughs> <laughs> never never been late on a payment, nothing. The man is the man is the real deal. All right. Everybody else is um, in Hollywood is complaining about the strike. How come the writer's all, strike? The writer's strike. How come Law and Order isn't? I'm I'm complaining. I'm not I'm not complaining about it, but it's fucking with my paper. Oh, because you're not filming as long as the strike is happening. That's why I'm down here. I'm on hiatus. We broke. We broke in May. We supposed to go back right after July. Wow. And we probably won't. Wow. So we'll we'll actually maybe go in, say August, but. With Law and Order, we shoot you shoot three episodes a month, so you, you right. It takes eight days to shoot an episode. Eight days, add a weekend, ten days, so thirty days. So you're doing three episodes a month. Uh, as a as a series regular, how many days you filming out the month? The shoot eight days, eight, eight, eight for each episode, eight, eight, eight for each. Oh, oh my god! But you're only in the scenes you're in. Okay, yes. So say out of the eight days, there's 45 scenes. I could be in 10 scenes. Right. I could be in 20 scenes. I could be in one scene. But you get paid at an episodic rate. So wow. if I say, huh, I get the same <laughs> check wow. as if I act. It's like being in the NBA. If I sit on the bench, I get paid, right? right. So wow. when they tell you, Nori, we want you in for 22 episodes and your episodic rate is whatever. Uh -huh. I don't know what it is. I mean, it's 100,000. Then you right. times that times 23, and that's what you make that year. Right. If you're making 500,000 an episode, you multiply it. Right. So, you know, it becomes lucrative. Right. It becomes lucrative. But when they have an actor strike, they start taking away episodes. That's money. Right. 
But I got to stand with the I stand with the writers because you know what it's all what about. What is the writers complaining about? It's streaming, man. Streaming. Yeah, and the whole AI stuff, too. The, Shit, hip-hop should be doing that then. Yeah. Well, hip-hop, I, I don't understand hip-hop streaming, but, you know, right now, like, you see me on NBC, so you get residuals. But then they got you on Peacock. They, and they don't really, they ain't even talking about how that money is, what's happening. So right. the writers is like, hold up everything. Because they'll just keep going. They'll just keep going and taking the money wow. until you, so they, they had to stop the boat for a minute. Like, we need to address this. Hip-hop streaming, I don't understand it. Uh, I, I really don't. Like, yeah, music. I used to sell records. You went in the store, you bought the motherfucking exactly. record. They had a sound scan. Now, Snoop was like, man, you do a billion streams. They give you a check for $45. Right. Like, Who came up with that? <laughs> Who came up with, with, with that, that, uh, what that the al- math? What's the algorithm, and how do you even know if it's a real algorithm? Right. You're just trusting. I don't, I don't, and then you get gold and platinum records, but no one bought the records. Yeah, you see it all the time. Artists you never even heard of yeah. holding up their golden platinum. I, I'm proud of my records. I'm proud I actually, you know, people bought the record. You think, think of, think, Nori, you sell a million records. That's right. Think of it like this. Uh, a stadium filled to the top is like 100,000 people. Right. Fill that stadium 10 times. Right. That's how many people walked into a store right. and bought your record. Right. Not pushed a button, right. walked in and purchased it. That's big. Yeah. Yeah. Them days is big. This push, Now you can buy one song out of an album. Right. Well, they had singles before. No, but I would put out singles that weren't out. You would Couldn't control buy the singles. singles. Right. I would send them to the DJs and I, I would to make you buy the album. Right. The game has changed. All games have changed tremendously. All right. That's why I change games. All right. Mm. Oh, now, <laughs> now, now, one thing we was talking about was a lot of people don't realize you wasn't even in colors. No. Now, who didn't realize that? There's a lot of people who would swear that I, mean, I see I was in, in colors. colors. Yo, I loved you in colors. I'm like, nigga, I was not in <laughs> I mean, he was technically with the music and the song yeah. was so yeah. big. You want to hear this color story? Hell yeah, you want to hear this color story. Come on. Color story is like this. I was already signed to Warner Brothers. I was early signed to Warner Brothers. It was a Warner Brothers movie. So... They wanted to use a song I wrote. Oh, this is dope. I, the Thunder, I had the Thunder brought in for my <laughs> for my interview to keep it, keep it got. <laughs> so, oh, so Warner Brothers had the movie. So it, they wanted to use Squeeze the Trigger for the movie because it was like a hardcore record at the time to be in the gangbanger movie. So... I knew that if someone wants to use your mo- your record in a movie, I told Nori this yesterday, you can ask to see the movie. If you're an artist out there and they say they want to put your movie in, uh, your song in any movie, you can, as a publisher, say, I need to see the movie. I don't know if I want my record involved in this particular movie or where they're going to place it in the movie. You know, they might want to place it in some bullshit. You're like, nah, that ain't cool. Fuck that. Right. I wanted the money. I wasn't going to turn it down, but I played the card. I need to see the movie, right? <laughs> so we went to see Colors. Private screening. Private screening. Right. It was fake to me because the Mexicans don't fight the blacks right. in L.A. If that ever happened, it would be mm. the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. S- second thing, <laughs> that, that, that scene where they play Colors, where the Crips and the Bloods meet in the, in the county. In the county jail. It can't happen. Right. By the time you get to that point, you in the jumpsuits. Right. And the Bloods and Crips never come connected because the Crips is like in 3,800. They're different modules they put them in. So that was fake. You know, they had on the colors, they banging on. Right. That was te- that was movie shit. So I got past that. I said, well, who did this? Who did the title song? And they said, Rick James. Right. Because I still own a soundtrack to Rick James. Yeah, yeah. Hunt down the... Color soundtrack, go to the last song on the B side, and it's a song by Rick James called Everywhere I Go. Colors. Look at all these colors. You know, Rick James, come on, man. So I was like, <laughs> Rick James, you the nigga, Good. but this is not your area. So that of expertise. So now I am riding home with Africa Islam. We saw it and I said, man, we gonna make a title song. We literally went right from the screen into the studio. Mm-hmm. Now at the time I was listening to, I was vibing off of King Sun 
King's son has a song called Mythological. And Mythological goes, it opens, says, when I get ill, it's a reason, because it's duck season, hunter of the fronter. <clears throat> Here I come. I am a nightmare yeah, walking, the cadence. psychopath, psychopath talking. talking, king, king of my jungle. jungle, just a gang. Now, so I'm, I'm rocking that cadence of King Sun shit. And then we just put the record together. And so I turn it in and they flip. Oh, this is incredible. It's incredible. And uh, I got an MTV award for it. Wow. Daddy, uh, that record's not on any Ice-T albums. And it went platinum, triple platinum, some bullshit. But it's uh, one of the... My most of my big hits were were, were soundtracks. Uh, when I did New Jack City, yeah, that's an incredible record. When I did New Jack City, awesome. I wanted to do the song for that, but I'm like, I'm Nino's, put, Nino's. What is it, Nino thing? I call it Nino's thing. <laughs> right, okay. So I was like, I can't really do Scotty's song because he's police. Right. So I'll do Nino's thing. <laughs> so George Jackson, rest in peace, was the producer. Ah, come on, I see, you know. You know, we'll get somebody else. Well, he wanted you to rhyme from the perspective of the, of the cop? He just didn't know what I could do. Okay. He thought he had to go out and get somebody else to do some gangster shit, like I, more Nino. And so I did put that shit down. Hustler word. I pulled the trigger long, gripped my teeth, sprayed every niggas gone. Got the block, sewn armored dope spots. Last thing I sweat to suck a punk cop. He was like, yo, this shit is hard. <laughs> So we put the hustler bow. That was number one on that album. All right. That album went super platinum. All right. <laughs> so yeah, I got a lot of I, I got a lot of record sales away from my actual albums. Are we gonna take another sip to that? Come on. Yeah. Come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> but let's, let's let's stay on New Jack City for a second. Do you know how classic that movie was? And when you making it, was making it, did two part question. Did he know? Did you know you was making a class? <laughs> no, it was a low budget film and Mario Van Peoples, right? Mario Van Peoples directing it. Right. And everybody in it was New Jacks. Huh. Wesley had only done Major League. Wesley had only done Major League and I think a Spike Lee joint. Chris Rock was the hottest street comedian. I mean, he wasn't big Chris Rock. Yeah, that's the I first was, time I ever seen <clears throat> Chris Rock. I was just a rapper, you know, and um, I believed he was a crackhead. <laughs> I, I mean, that's, that's good acting. I didn't know. I didn't know. Like, I thought that's what he was. Right. right. So they figure, well, Ice-T has sold millions of records. Uh -huh. Maybe that'll translate. Plus, they wanted somebody a little gangster and somebody a little political. Right. Right. But they were more concerned with me being able to go undercover and fool Nino Brown than actually right. playing the police. Mm -hmm. See, you could take teach a player how to play a square. But you can't teach a square how to play a player. Uh -huh. They not they can't pull it off. Uh -huh. So the, the, it was more important when I got around Nino that Nino could believe I was actually live with him. That part where I'm in the pool, I go, uh -huh. I got you back. You dig what I'm saying? So I was dirty like that. I got him. But but everybody during that movie, Nori, we were huddling. Uh -huh. Like we were doing a scene and everybody would huddle and like. What do you think? You know, it was because every and the movie was five million dollars. At the end, they got a, a completion bond for two more million. It cost seven million dollars to make New Jack City. Seven million. You make, they shoot videos like yeah, it was uh, <clears throat> Law and Order episode cost eight million dollars. So yeah, it was it was a it was a very uh, interesting procedure working with Wes. Wesley was dope. Right. I, here's a funny story. So. Okay. We, we go into the reading. We're going to read, right? So me and Chris Rock are new. So we walk in and Wesley Snipes come in and the motherfucker got a, a leather. His, his, his script is in a leather bound folder. <sighs> Opens it up. It's notes on every page. Me and Chris Rock script are folded up in our back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> we like, oh shit, this is a real actor. Like, oh shit, we were nervous as a motherfucker. Uh. But Wes, Wes was with us and... You don't know you're making a classic movie at the time, you know. You don't know that, but Mario did his thing. Right. Could, could, could there be a New Jack City too? No, I don't think so because no. it was an era movie about an era. Yeah, but what if Nino <clears throat> Brown's son? Oh no, no. That then back then there was supposed to be a Nino uh, uh, too, like Nino Brown's son, or maybe or maybe before he came Nino Brown. Some shit you should Or an updated version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, a, just something kind they of They try to do Superfly. How you gonna do Superfly uh, yeah. without a nigga with a perm? Uh. 
Uh, you know, you can't run on Neil. Oh, yo, yo, priest, you know, that's it. Yo, man, I got to kill. I got to get out the game for, uh, you know, I got to ice a motherfucker on one of these motherfuckers ice me. I live off of that line, right? But New Jack City, what we were, we, we had the potential to do part two. Uh-huh. But I got in trouble with Cop Killer and Wesley. And Wesley went and did um, uh, Demolition Man. And they paid him like seven million. That's when he got the burger blonde hair. Yeah, but they he got he got the bag. Right, he got the so bag. once he got the bag, he can't come back and play with us in the street no more. You know, he 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 elevated. And then I got in trouble. And uh yeah, but the the, the New Jack City part two, Wesley wasn't supposed to die. Wow. Is New, is New Jack City based on a, like a true story? It's based on a lot of people. Uh uh the guy out of uh Frisco who had a, a dope uh, or a dope, uh, Crack well, a, a internal situation. He had a, a building where you would buy the drugs and do the drugs in the same place. Yeah. I, I wish I could remember the guy's name, but it was famous hustling. So that's kind of based on that. But no, no, San Francisco. No. No. And I also said he was based out of the. Nicky Barnes. Nicky Barnes. Yeah. No. No Nicky Barnes neither. Damn. It's a Frisco hustler. Oh, that's Frisco crazy. Hustler. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's probably, I mean, I, I can't, it, it probably had a little bit of everything. Yeah. Because they were implementing other, you know, Nino was a mixture of all drug dealers right. put together. So I cannot say that. But I know that the, the actual Carter. Yeah, the main, okay. Was based on something that was happening up in Frisco. People used to say it was like someone from Carter. Like, you know, but people like, used to say, Mr. I'm telling you. want to say it's your family <laughs> Like, you're pushing I, this. <laughs> yeah, you're pushing it. I mean, you know, the thing of it is, people have all kinds of ideas about what happened, but being on the ground in the movie, if you probably do research right now and find out, go and check. The internet has it all. Felix what, Mitchell. Felix Mitchell. See, That's the, just, just Google it, Mr. Lee. <laughs> Felix Mitchell, and if you retro, if you check his 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 hustle, you'll see he had a he had that type of thing going, and they build off of that. They build off of that. Take a little drug dealership from this guy, from that. It's all influence. They did the same with Scarface. It was a yeah, bunch of people yeah, that yeah. they created to make yeah. Scarface. Yeah, the you can, they use it as influence. So, based on it. So New Jack City at the time. You, you're a gangster rapper making gangster music. How do you study for that role? How do you do the? It's because it's, it's the exact opposite of of what you represent and who you are. So how do you you do that? Like I was scared, Nori. I was scared. I thought, like I said, I thought it was career suicide. Okay. But then I got all my people saying, "Man, this is an, a, a a chance." Right. Um, there's no studying. You just act. Acting is make believe. Mm. You just act. Uh, anybody in here, we all have had enough experience with the cops. You can act like a cop. Uh, like when I'm on New York, when I'm on Law and Order, right before I do the scene, I just go, asshole, asshole, asshole. asshole. <laughs> and then I talk down to you. But dig this. <laughs> oh, shit. Playing a cop and playing a gangster is the exact same acting. Uh, exact same acting. Wait, wait, say that again? Playing a cop and playing a gangster is the exact same acting. We both got a gun. Right. We both got an attitude. Right. We both want answers or there will be a consequence. And we talk to you in that manner. See? So the police talk to you. They talk down to you. Like, motherfucker, you finna answer my motherfucking question. I am the law. The gangster's like, fuck you. But it's the same exact energy. Right. right. Demand respect. It's the same. So, like, when you see me on Law and Order and I'm interrogating somebody, I don't necessarily have to think about being a cop. I'm just like, this motherfucker has an answer I need to get. <laughs> and I'm leaning across to him just like Ice T would. And, you know, I'm this nigga, what's happening? <laughs> and then, bake, but now I'm even worse than a gangster because I got the law. Right. You know, so I, I can do whatever the fuck I want to you. So that, it's the same acting. I remember when I was live. When cats, when cats had too much ego, we knew they were the cops. Mm. Like if we was with somebody, we'd be like, homie don't care. He seems a little bit too much. Like he ain't worried. He's not, he got his hammer on him. He's always talking shit. He's the police. Mm. Because, it's, you know, he had no fear. And they usually were. <laughs> and you brought that into the role? 
that understanding? Well, I, I, it's me. You know, it's me. It's it's. I think I think the key of the key of acting is casting. You know, so you want to cast a tough guy. You pretty much want to find somebody right. who at some point is tough and can put that in there and on that. You know, so. I don't know what I bring to the role, but whatever it is, people dig it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. I don't know what the fuck it is. When you're acting, you're just doing it. And see, the thing of it is, you can't you can't say you're a great actor. The audience has That's to say right. it. it has to be believable. Though. They got to believe it. Right. So whatever I'm doing is working. <laughs> Let's say that. <laughs> Let's say that. <laughs> Let's say that you got speaking of great great actors, you got to work with Denzel Washington. How the fuck was that? Denzel was so dope. First thing Denzel did was he came to my trailer and he zeroed out like he 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 became really cool. Like he was talking to me as a friend and stuff, and he's telling me stories. Because I guess later on I figured it out. Like you can't just hit the stage and work with Denzel Washington if he's like this. Mm-hmm. If me and you got to play best friends, we gotta. Or I'm always gonna be like I'm on the stage. With, I'm, I'm I'm acting with Denzel. You know you you start. So he kind of chilled with me and talked to me, told me about his life That's being dope. on television, some personal things because I had to play his friend. Right. And uh. I never forget the first time I sat with him, Nori. I sat, we did a scene, and uh, he's telling jokes and shit. Uh-huh. They said action. Denzel jumped in character. All right. And he said his shit, and I flubbed my lines. He was like, come on, Ice. Like, let's go. I'm like, oh, I see what you're doing. You're dribbling between your legs. <laughs> you're showing me that you can go from this to that uh-huh. quick. And at that point, I said, I want to learn how to act like that. See, the thing of it is with acting, anything, nobody is anything. You're not born anything. You you become a basketball player. You start off as a fan. Mm-hmm. We aren't rappers. We yeah. taught ourselves how to rap. Right. You're not anything. So any you could do anything if you're willing to take the time to learn how to do it. But you got to want to do it. If I want you to act and you never really wanted to act, you're not going to get right. it. But if you wanted to and you're willing to apply yourself, you could do it. Mm. You know, nobody's a concert pianist. You mm. practice. Mm. So once I, once you get that understanding, you can pretty much be what you want to be because nobody is anything at birth. Right. We all started off fans. I started off listening to Melly Mel and them. I'm like, mm. yo, mm. How, do, how they rhyme those words together? And I try to practice. You start off, you whack. <laughs> right. You got to start somewhere. And then you get better. Right. You get better. Right. I want to play play you um, a clip. Y- you got the clip? Yeah. Oh, shit. What you got? Some fat baby mama about no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> What kind of sidetrack <laughs> shit is this? Play the clip. Yeah, what, play clip? The clip. <laughs> what clip? <laughs> what clip? I thought we was homies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. What'd you say? I see. <laughs> I How does that even happen? Squeeze Coco. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Respectfully. Yes. yes. It, was res- it was respectfully. It was a, a Halloween good- party. True. Right. And how, how does this work? You said, can I grab your wife's ass? I literally walked up to him. Mind you, I had had a couple drinks at this point. I walked up to him and I said, because mind you, she had on like, she had some shit on. Right. Okay. So I walked up to him and I was like, bro, all due respect, uh, I've wanted to squeeze Coco's ass for a really long time. And he said, you know what? And I'm just the kind of pimp to let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and he yeah. called her over. And he whispered something in her ear, and she looked at him and smiled, and then looked at me and smiled, and turned around and bent that thing over, and I grabbed as much of a handful as I could. <laughs> he gave me a pound, <laughs> and we finished, and we drank and hung out for the rest of the night. That was, that was it. That was it. I'm trying to figure out who's more gangster in the situation. <laughs> you or him or Coco? Or is it all? Oh, all three. Like all three. It might just be a. Let's, a, let's, a, let's a, just take, I'm taking a shot for that. Yeah. Bro. Story. You want to go with the back story? Yeah. yeah, please. It was Halloween. Did he say that? Yeah, he said that. I think it was Halloween. Halloween so party, I think he said. It was a Halloween party. And I, I've been knowing Neo. I, I like Neo. Uh-huh. You know, I seen him when he first started, and I've always been a fan, and also I was inspired by him, young kid making his moves. So Neo and me had a cool relationship. So we at the party and stuff, and it's uh, Halloween, so all the girls are 
extra hoish, right? <laughs> it's extra hoish. So Coco had on some uh, some some like booty shorts with with the fish nets and shit. And so he's in the booth with us. He didn't just walk up. He was hanging and stuff. And Coco and them, Rihanna was there too. Coco and them is dancing. They don't and invite us to this party. <laughs> yeah. Coco and them's dancing and I know the nigga was just like gazing like, yo. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of ass in the air. Like <laughs> He was hypnotized. It was, it was happening. So then he was like, he did the player shit. He said, yeah, Ice Man, I always wanted to touch Coco's. See, he changed the word. He said he didn't say grab her ass. He said, I just don't want to touch Coco's booty. Could I do that? Now, I was like, that was kind of player that he asked. You know, that's kind of player that he had. He didn't ask a finger banger. He didn't ask a fucker. He didn't ask a sucker titty. He asked to touch her butt, right? So I'm like, you know what, player? I could make that happen. <laughs> I could make that happen. So I said, Coco, Neo won't touch your booty. Let Neo touch your booty. She like, okay. You know, she's following instructions. Yo, I say, wow. So she bends over. He, gra- he touches her butt like that. I'm like, hey, it's like make a wish kid. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, the fact, the fact that Neo felt it was appropriate to bring this up in a drink chance interview, <laughs> that was something maybe he should have kept to himself. You know, but I'm not mad at him because I mean, that lets me know that was a moment in his life. You know, that was a, mo- a moment, a moment in his life. It was a great moment. You know what I'm saying? Now, then everybody watching, don't see me out with Coco and ask for butt. <laughs> Get to Neo's level first. <laughs> you know, celebrity butt squeeze. But no, it, 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 was, it, was some, it was some player shit. And we was in a player mode that night. Right. You know, everybody, was, it was yeah. fly. <laughs> Sometimes it's fly like that. So what did you dress up as? I don't know what I was dressed Oh, I think we was on some S&M shit that okay. night. I had on some leather, an ill vest, probably a ball gag. <laughs> on some old decadent shit. Right. We love we love Halloween. Right. Women love Halloween because it's a night they can be freely hoish. Right. You know, everything. Oh, you want to be a school teacher? Sexy school teacher. Yeah, sex- right? You know, whatever it is. <laughs> doctor they say sexy. sexy. They say yeah, sexy. Yeah, that's a chance, and nobody can say nothing about it. Right. <laughs> that's a night. They just get it, they let it out. It's okay. And players dig it. Guys are like, that's cool. You know, I never had a problem with my girl being sexy. I, I, I'm like, you don't drive a Ferrari with the cover on it. You did. Right. Mm. Right. Some people do. That's cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? You, hey, wrap them up. That's your thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, um, like, like, is there, does, does your wife have stalkers or she, has she ever had a stalker? Now, my daughter had a stalker. Your daughter? Yeah, my daughter. Damn. Not my little daughter, my older daughter. Oh, okay. And how did that go? Um, well, let's go back to Coco. We had a couple... What, what one situation we had, we had a... We, went, we, we, we had an apartment, and we moved, and so we go to the apartment, and it's a car following us. And so we stop at Target and stuff. Yeah, we still shop at Target. We keep... We at Target. <laughs> Tajay, not Tajay. What the fuck is think that at some point you humans leave the planet? Like we don't, we don't eat a Taco Bell or we don't like motherfucker. He goes to Target. Like what the fuck if you need Target shit? <laughs> where, where do you go if you need Target type shit? They don't. One time somebody said, "Yo, you eat at Denny's? You eat at IHOP?" I'm like, "Is there a Gucci egg on this? <laughs> is there some egg someplace? I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do for breakfast. An egg is a fucking egg." So anyway. <laughs> We at tar- we at Target and the- and she says she sees the motherfuckers in the store, right? And so I'm like, where? So when we come out, she says it's in there. Then I escalate. So I'm like, all right, cool. So we go and she had to go to this nail spot, right? So we pull up and they pull out, right? So I'm like, okay, we finna do this now. At this time, I'm not armed, but they don't know that, right? Uh-huh. So I-, I walk over to him. I'm like, what's happening? They like, oh, we've been hustling, man. We just, we just paparazzi's. I'm like, yeah, nigga, fall back. I said, stop following me. Stop uh-huh. following me, man. Stop playing. Uh-huh. No, no, we could. They thought I had the hammer. I was like, this. I did my shit. You got it. What's up? What's up? You want to die, nigga? You want to die? You know, so, <laughs> so they, they fell back. But that was just one situation. Uh, my daughter, she lives in Atlanta, and. Uh, 
you know, my daughter's grown, so she calls me and she says, Daddy, this dude is following me and shit like that. So I said, okay, this is what you do. I know you know niggas down there. Talk to some of your goons and tell them, say, your father would like them to help you. Wow. Right. Because they all got love for me. They know who she is. So I said, get a couple of them, tell them to come to the house and just lay in the cut. So, I, so they they want to do a favor for IC because that could pay back off. Yeah. So they, they, they he, she get a couple of dudes and sure enough, the dude pull up in the parking lot. And she told them, and they walked over to him, just let him understand this is not a good career decision. Mm. <laughs> Fall back. She got cousins, brothers, and people that love her, and we don't love you. Mm. So pull out. And that was the last she saw the dude. Wow. But she didn't really know how to activate homies. Right. I said, activate them. So I told her, I said, when I go to Atlanta, I want to meet those guys. Right. So that's it. But no, no stalkers. Right. Um, you know... I mean, anybody could have a stalker. No, we don't have any problems like that. I get. I, I. I think. I think just knowing who I am and people like that, they kind of keep their distance and shit. She don't got her OnlyFans or nothing like that. She do. Okay. Yeah, she started OnlyFans, but see, Coco does Playboy level. See, OnlyFans hustle is deep. Mm-hmm. You could do anything on OnlyFans. Yeah, you can show yeah, feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can show your feet. Yep. You could cook dinner on the motherfuckers. Yep. Yeah. So she had a girlfriend that had one. So Coco's like, yo, what do you do on it? So Coco, Coco's always done Playboy level shit, yeah, swimsuit yeah. shit. That's her. Yep. You know, if you want to be on OnlyFans, stick a refrigerator in your pussy, you could do that too. Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you could do anything. But what you do, you you, you put a page up and say, this is not a porn site. Right. Right. Blah. Blah. Yeah. And she made quite a bit of money. She makes quite a bit of money on that motherfucker. More, uh, I understand why chicks don't want to work once they go on. Yeah, yeah. They just like, why would I work when I could make 60000 whatever? Um, at least a lot because the subscriptions. But I, but the thing of it is, it's like the chick has to set their limits. Like Iggy Azalea's on there. Right. But she does just swimsuit shit. Right. But she made like 600000 Yeah, I heard she 000. made crazy bread on there. So, you, you know, you could be on that. I mean, it's it honestly, it makes more sense than Instagram. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you're getting paid. You get paid. You got you have subscribers, and then you have paid, and then you also put up stuff, and you make them pay. But you know, it is what it is. Um, maybe this will help you get some more money. Uh, People say, "Well, you don't need the money." I say, "When do you not need the motherfucking money? <laughs> <laughs> when do you not need the money? Like, you know, it's it's a hustle, man. We we me and my wife are hustlers, right?" These flowers, man. Yeah, yeah, goddamn it. You listen, Ice, our show is about giving people their flowers while they're here. You know, so many people say that after 10 years you washed up. We do not say that. We say that our season, we want to give you flowers too. Oh, that's tough. And you drink champs alumni, so. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I think one thing about Ice T, and I think what people will figure out about me is that ice is going to do what the fuck he wants to do. Right. You know? And I, I understand. Let me put it up here where they can, the camera can see. I want the yeah. camera to see this. It's a real player ass shit. Yes. yes. Snoop well, said it's better than a Grammy because it comes for his people. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Mm. God damn it. Make some noise. Yo, you see rolling that weed? This shit is good. But nah, man, you know. It's the Nino Brown weed too, by the way. We we can't one thing we can't forget is that forget. that you helped pioneer the space that we're in now as well. Yeah, I had a podcast. Yep. My first podcast was called the Final Level Podcast, and uh, me and Mickey did it. Mickey did, Benson, yeah, Mickey Benson. I did fifty five episodes. They're available on uh, some place, some platform, but it wasn't my time. I couldn't do it, mm-hmm. so I started doing it at my house. Right. Right. So I do one person. But then if you're in my house, you stay all day. Right. So it would take over the day and I would do it on Saturday. So that burnt me out. Then I tried to do two a month. Right. Same thing. Buster came over. Raekwon came over. All that. Then I was like, I can't do it in my house no more because it was just you, you, the homies come over to the crib and they just lounge out. They like after after the podcast, it's on TV, <laughs> turn on the game. I was like, yo, this is crazy. So then I tried to do them on Monday nights. After Law and Order. But we were in the same studio, tax one, tax one when it was in. We're up there, loudspeaker. Yeah, and it it was cool. But I'm a 
all di- no disrespect, but I kind of interviewed everybody I wanted to talk to. Right. After about 50 people, I'm like, I really don't really want to talk to people. Now, <laughs> now they want content, and I'm like, well, they're getting these people. I'm like, I'm not even interested in them. Like, I don't give a fuck. So I did all my homies. Right. I didn't do Nori, but I did all the homies. And then at that time, you know, podcasts, you make money based on how many views. And you have ads. You know how it yeah, works. Ad, you know, ad it wasn't really lucrative enough. I was giving all the money to Mick. Mm. And I just said, man, I got to pull the plug on this. My, I, I can't. It wasn't. Uh, it needs to be a full-time gig. So, you know, but I understand, I know what this is. It's cool and it's fun. But, I mean, fortunately, you guys have created a space where someone can come and talk comfortably right. and it's not with the bullshit. What, what made you even start a podcast? Like, because, you know... I, I, well, you were doing it on internet, you were doing on internet radio let me, first. Let me, just, let me just tell you how, how, how we say it. We, they say, we say that Juan Epp was the first hip-hop podcast, but Ice-T was the first artist based podcast we, so so you like the cool herc of this shit just in case you don't know a lot of people don't know but they say those who say don't know and those who know don't say uh. so i i um i'm gonna tell you this nori and this is the i really didn't even like asking people questions all right mm. you dig it all right i found out at the end of it i much prefer for you to ask me questions than right. to me i just felt like i just didn't like it mm-hmm after a while. Right. You know, it's not my thing. You got to find your thing. Right. You got to right. find your thing. And just prying into motherfuckers' lives was not my thing. I was like, eh. Nah. I'm cool. And plus, you're making too much law and order money. That was making... That yeah, thing. you know how to fuck that up. Well, that... That, too... That, that's when I'm saying it wasn't lucrative enough. Like you're saying, I'm making a lot of money over the week. Then I come up here and I do this. And it was time... And then I have a baby daughter. Right. And, oh, yeah, that's and, a big and, and difference. Like, that makes a difference. It wasn't paying off. Mm-hmm. So I was like, eh. Now, I, I mean, now if I was doing it, you guys are taking it to another level. But at the time, it wasn't making that much money. So well, We thank you anyways, because you did yeah. pioneer you, uh, the space. Well, um, Rosenberg and them crawled so you could walk. So me and Ian Finn could fly. I was happy. I was happy when I when I saw you doing it because I'm like, this is a good thing. All right. I always felt that our culture should be reported on by our own culture. All right. You know, uh, I think one of the key parts of the death of hip hop was the Source magazine going left. Right. And, you know, at one moment, all of a sudden, Public Enemy wasn't hip. Right. KRS wasn't right. hip. You and, and Benzino, the first time we... Um Interviewed you. You and Benzino had just seen each other, right? Beef TV. <laughs> you take. I'm gonna take a beef. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, tell, well, tell us about that, because uh, I mean, our fans from back then know, but this, these are new fans we have. Beef TV. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is what happened. Okay. I'll tell the true story. Okay. What happened was when I got in trouble at Warner Brothers and Cop Killer hit the fan and they got rid of shit, Benzino, RSO, got caught in that shit. Oh, wow. They got caught in that tailspin of they dropping gangster rap. Oh, wow. Now, body counts metal. What? But it also affected um, Death Row or, or whatever, Aftermath, when they, remember, they were getting ready to do a deal and then it fell back through because they pulled out, Warner pulled out, something happened. It's not C. Dolores Tucker time, right? No, no, no. It was after C. Dolores Tucker, right. but my shit created a, like a, a, a wave that fucked with a lot of people. So Benzino, being Benzino and them, right. went in some fuck ice T shit. Like I, like I folded, I folded up to Warner Brothers. Right. I don't even really know you, Benzino. I'm not even. I don't. I, I have nothing to do with you. I didn't tell them. Fuck, get rid of them. I'm. I did my shit. I'm doing my shit. Right. So he went on one. Of course, everybody hears anybody. You got niggas. Yo, man, who are these niggas? They talking crazy. So I'm like, I don't know. Where they from? Boston. So I don't know who they are, but whatever. Right? We L.A., right? So Benzino comes to L.A. Mm. So I'm deep. Right? I'm at one of their situations. I can leave the house. 
this is a source situation you're saying? I don't know. It was it was a, 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 a an event. Okay. Nori, I can leave the house by myself. By the time I get to event, it's thirty niggas. Right. Right. Yo, we with ice. Yo, we with. <laughs> right? Because right. everybody wants to not only get in the event, they know if they with me, they coming in. So we deep. Right. Yo, that's them niggas over there. Ice. Who? Benzino. Word. Go holler at him. And he walked. I walked over to him, and he saw them people. That nigga was like, "Yo, man, hey, man, it's my bad." <laughs> right. And we shook hands, and that was it. But I think, what what did he tell you? Same story. No, no, no. Remember, y'all was together the last time we recorded in New York. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, but that was but that was before the situation. There's a there was a situation with me and Benzino. Oh. I had I, I kind of yeah. He's I've heard him say it on a, in an interview. He said Ice T and him kind of walked up on me. I think he did say it one time on here before. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were deep, <clears throat> but it wasn't an altercation. It was just like I want like me myself. I like to clarify shit. Right. If you say something about it, I don't take it. I'm gonna walk up to you, F, and well, it, what am I hearing? Is this true? Right. No. Nah. Okay. Cool. That you know. Even if you said it, if you're not man enough to repeat it, I'll take that as a right, right. I'll just say, all right, cool. But if it is, let's figure it out. And I, I'm I'm the I'm always the bigger man. What did I do to you? What, what's the matter? Right. What happened? You know? Nobody wants conflict. I'm, my name's Ice. My name's not Bullet. My name is <laughs> <laughs> My name is Ice. I'm about smoothing things out. And I think my whole life has always been squashing beef. Right. You know? That's that's it. Anybody can start it. You know, you got to have certain energy to stop it. Let's take it back, though. Yes. Yeah, okay. oh, no, no, I, I want to go back a little bit. OK. Uncle Jam's that. Army. OK. Talk about that. What is what is that collective? How could I compare it to New York? Uncle Jam's Army was the first promotional company in L.A. that did parties for kids 16 to 20. So there was a big market of people that couldn't get into clubs. So they would throw events at different halls with DJs. They, at some point, were able to do the L.A. sports arena by themselves. Wow. Egyptian Lover mm. was a DJ. Bobcat, who worked with LL Cool J. Battlecat, who's still out with Snoop. Uh, Arabian Prince was part of Egypt's crew. Was Pooh in that? DJ, DJ Pooh. Pooh. Yeah. All them work with Uncle Jam's army, uh, and that's what they was known for. They were the biggest promoters, and uh, they would do the L.A. Sports Arena, no acts, just music. Mm. First raves, like black raves. I'll never forget one night we were there, and uh, they had an 808 drum machine, and no one had ever seen a drum machine. And they put the drum machine on and they were like, ah, Uncle Jam's Army is about to go live, live. And they put the beat on and they held the records in the air. And the audience was like, what? Where's that music coming from? And they held the drum machine up and that New York 808 has a light that shoots by it. Right. The crowd went crazy. Just screaming over a drum machine. It's like, yo. And they used to let me rap. I was the only person they would let rap. And, you know, I was still up and coming, learning how to rap. And this is early L.A. scene. This is what is a world class wrecking crew happening around this time. Not that's before wrecking. Crew. Before that. Wow. For wrecking crew. Dre and them was wrecking crew. They I, I seen Dre and them uh, in Dudos. See, Dre and them is from Compton. Right. L.A. cats don't go to Compton. Right. Compton. Compton would be like in New York, like it would be East New York. Compton's far. It's like 20 miles out of L.A. South Central, where we're from. So, you know, you can own a horse in Compton. You can ride, you can have donkeys and pigs like and shit. Horse in Compton. yeah. <laughs> Compton's like the country. But the, the threat of Compton niggas is they come to LA and get down and then go back and you never see them again in your life. So that's Compton. People in Compton don't usually come past Manchester. That's a whole nother thing. And then when NWA came out, people were like, oh, you from Compton? I said, no, I'm from South Central. So I sent it where the riots popped up. Right. That's where I'm from. So Dre and them was playing in Dudos and we now went. Watts? No, no, no Watts, Watts is, is another area. Okay. Watts is an area that's mostly projects. Okay. So if you talk Watts, you're talking about PJ Watts, Imperial Courts, Nickerson Gardens, and Grape Street, right. Jordan Downs. Right. Those four big projects over there. Right. 
So that's that was the first riot, the home of the Watts riot mm-hmm. back in the day. But anyway, uh, I seen Dre and them playing at Dudos and stuff uh, back in the day. So I'm 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 always been cool with Dre. I've always been cute with cool with Cube. N.W. and you know, I when I was out. See, I had I had two albums out before N.W.A. dropped. Nah. They dropped on my third album. So we would go out and tour together. Me, Easy, DOC, uh, we're all friends. Ren, we're all friends. What type of person Easy E was? Because obviously, <clears throat> Easy was crazy, but he was Easy was a cool ass dude. The trip with Easy was he convinced people he was fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of his records, he said something about him being young. <laughs> so people used to think he was young, but he wasn't young, and. uh my favorite Easy E story was Ice Cube would write the rhymes. Yeah. Ice Cube right. write the rhymes. That I say. Yeah. So Cube was talking to me. Cube was like, "Yo, I wrote that. I didn't think he'd say it because <laughs> <laughs> he's actually outing himself." Right. Well, he's saying it, but <laughs> Easy didn't care because right. Easy wasn't really the rapper. He, right. was the, he was the money behind. He was the genius that saw hip hop was going to come someplace. He had his little, you know, drug money. Easy wasn't moving kilos. He was just right. on the street hustling, but he had enough to get him in a record store, and he was the brains behind. Yeah, he had foresight for sure. He, yeah, Easy, me and Easy was cool. We never had shared a, a, a angry word. Me, Dre, all of us, all solid. Ice Cube, solid. You know. Uh, and was uh, an Arabian Prince? So you, he was in Uncle Jams, and then he was down with yeah in the beginnings of NWA. NWA was Candyman. Uh, and, uh, uh, Arab- uh, Arab- Candyman was a part of it? Candyman was If you look at the first album the They're all standing there NWA and the Posse That one Yeah Candyman was Well not part of NWA and Right just like, the Posse, like they're part But it was all part JJ right. J. Fad All that stuff And then they just started to morph And morph And morph into You know the world's most dangerous group I knew When I heard Straight out of Compton It was a rap At that, that day What's the line that Ice Cube said That That you think made it gangster rap? Straight out of Compton, crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube from the gang called Niggas with Attitude. So up to that point, they was calling what I was doing reality. reality. Right. But I'm like, it's not reality because it's not everybody's reality. Right. It's my reality. We didn't have a name for it. And then when he said gangsters, the, the press called it gangster rap. The press called it, because we said this on here, and people were like, no, no, the, the artist said, no, the press did it. press called it gangster rap. Cube just said, from the gang called niggas with attitudes. They said, it's gangster rap. So me, I fell back and said, oh, okay, if this is gangster rap, I'm the original gangster. Mm. And that's where OG came from. So OG didn't come from the hood. No, it did, but it just fell in place. OG is a term for first generation set. Okay. The first generation of whatever's set. So if we drink champ, uh, we drink track. Uh, yeah, if we drink champs, Crips. But right. y'all niggas the OGs. You the originals of the set. Right. The new kids would be the baby gangsters or the. But the OGs are the founders of the set. Right. right. Also, LA term OG means anything original. Right. The original five hundred one. Levi's. The original Chuck Taylors. The original Shelto. That's them OG. The first. Is OG. Right. Can you fight your way up to be an OG? Well, you'll be a, you'll be an OG once you put in enough time. Yeah, it's time. But it's now, experience. It, now it just refers to being an old school cat that's done some things. Right. Like I refer to everybody in here as an OG. They've they they not new gangsters, right. you know. But the term comes from LA gangs. Right. So I took it and and it flipped it, you know. But then if you look at that album cover. I also, I got myself in shackles, but then I got myself in a tux, right. which is saying I'm the same nigga. Right. Like, even if you see me, you know, suited, don't get it fucked up. Right. So that's what it was. So that's where the OG album came from. And that was, been, was supposed to be a double album. Wow. The first double album? Yes. But it was a double album motivated by N.W.A. Mm. Wow. Because you dig, I'm out here, I do, I do uh rhyme pays, I do power, they drop, boom. I'm like, nigga, I gotta get to work. Right. They dropped you after that? No, no, no. no, no, no. I, I, do, I, I do the first one. Okay. I do the second one. And then here comes Godzilla. Straight out of Compton. Crazy. 
Yo, I'm like, yo, NWA is really like live. <laughs> yo, nigga, we got to go in the studio, right? The homies is really getting it in. So I made a double album at that point, motivated by the power of them. They, you know, like I said early, hate. It wasn't hate, but it was like somebody else is in the room. Right. Now, nigga, you got to go and earn your stripes. So I had to drop heavy. You dig? You, you were going to say that you remember the first time you heard Straight Outta Compton. Yeah, it's, I, it felt like Godzilla walked in the room. Right. I was like, yo. Because remember, we was out on tour. They had Dope Man. Because Easy came out first, right? Yeah, but Easy didn't shake me up. Easy does it. I was like, okay. And Easy, like, you know, Easy, the way Easy rap, uh, he ain't cute. Right, right. And or and, Ren. Ren, and is, Ren. Ren is incredible. The ruthless villain. Yeah. You know, anytime I pull an AK off the shelf, you know, I was like, yeah. ooh, 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 these niggas like Ren is ooh. Ren is a beast. I was like, yo, they turned it up. They turned it up. Right. And uh I had to, but then my thing was, as Ice T is like, okay, NWA is taking it that way. I gotta take it this way. Like, I gotta not, I can't go out and gang bang with them. So I just keep it player and hustler as much as I could, you know? So that was a conscious decision you made to say, I'm not gonna try to be in that same lane. I'm always trying to find my own lane. All right. You're a fool to go down the same lane somebody else is doing. You gotta find your originality. You gotta find what is, what are you, what, what you are. Right. You know, and me, I was a different breed. I was never in a gang. I'm not a gang banger, but I, I grew up amongst gangs. I'm not a, I'm not a bully, I, but I defend myself. I'm an orphan. So, you know, like I was telling you, you know, we were the cats with the Fila, Fila shorts on, the socks, the sweaters, you know, yeah. tennis racket, but we had an Uzi, you know? <laughs> That's who we were with the perms. That's who we were, you know. So it was no sense, and you know they they pulled up on some real gangbanger shit. I was like, okay, got it. So cool, but it's all love. It was love. I was happy for NWA because I was happy to have help on the West. I by myself for a long time, and at the time I remember, like. You know, people making fun of the S-curl. Like, yeah. But that's an S-curl. I had a perm. Don't get it fucked. <laughs> I had perm. Don't get it fucked up. That was a Jerry curl. That's a Jerry. That's what Cube had. The yeah. one that drips. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck up my silk. Fuck up my shit. My material. Wait, did my you have was... a Jerry curl or an S-curl? It was a Jerry Same curl. Same thing. You call it the S-curl with the little ones. That are Puerto Ricans. If you're Puerto Rican, you call it the S-curl. Got it. All right, <laughs> no. My shit was my shit was perm. I was magnetic rollers, a lot of body. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pull it out, them shits be crackling, and the girls push the waves in. You know that shit had to be right. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's some it's different shit. You know, Big Worm had a perm. Yeah. Friday. Friday. Yeah, and Friday. Yeah. Yeah, but I you know, Big Worm was she was bald. No, no, he had a no, he had his curlers, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm bugging, I'm bugging, yeah. I'm bugging. Okay. With the hair net. Yeah. I used to go to I used to go to junior high. I mean, not high high school homeroom with my curlers still in. Right. L.A. shit is different. Wearing house shoes, <laughs> and then in nutrition, let the girls take my curls out. <laughs> <laughs> Play quick time. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's do explain it. to him the rules. Yeah. Right, oh, we're, we're gonna give you two choices. You pick one. We good. Nobody's drinking. I mean, I don't know how if he's taking shots or not. No, I'm, I'm fucking with you. This. Good? This, good? Is nice. this is nice. This is nice. But this if you is take sips of that. This is very sophisticated. Yes, yes. If you say both or neither, so the politically correct. If you don't pick an answer, then we drinking. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to go first? Let's play the rule. Let's play the game. Let's go. I've, I've, I've submitted to your game. Let's go. You let's go. Go ahead. <laughs> LL or Big Daddy Kane? And you can say why if you want to. Both. Oh, okay. we drink. We drink. Damn, damn. Damn. Damn, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Sip. Both. They both super rappers. Cool. Oh, shala. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Snoop Dogg or Jay Z? Wow. Let me get ready. They're so different. <sighs> it's whatever criteria in your mind if you pick. I just got to go with Snoop Dogg. Okay. 
West Coast and you had to go that. No, I'm going with Snoop. I think Snoop is the biggest rapper in the history of the world. I think that even though Jay-Z's bagged up rich, I think more people, parents, kids, will uh, internationally recognize, will recognize right. Snoop Dogg. Yep. You, you, you don't think Snoop is the most famous rapper? That's what he's saying. That's what, That's I said. what he just said. Okay. <laughs> I think, I think, I think. I, I, I thought he said it in his, his way. And, no, no, no. <laughs> in the world, I think just he's loved the most. Uh-huh. He's, he's transcended more different elements. And everybody loves Snoop Dogg. Yeah, we Dogg. agree here. You know, yeah. Jay-Z is, is a superpower, but... Some people might not know who Jay Z is if they would, right. if he, you know, it's Snoop. Snoop is a motherfucker, and we love Snoop. Can you go anywhere and people not recognize? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could go. Fame is kind of like think of it like being a tennis player. You could be the number one in the world, but if you're not into tennis, you just walk right by. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So, television has made me far more visible, right. Right. and Coco is another one. So it's like the one-two punch. Like, me and Coco have this thing called I Should Have Known. Uh. What should have known is, like, say if we're at, a, at an airport and somebody's checking out Coco, they be checking her out, and then they'll see me, they go, should have known. <laughs> <laughs> should have known he should be know. there. Yeah, if you see a hot chick, check around her. There might, there should be something else floating near her. <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah. Uh, Ice Cube or Scarface? Wow. They're so similar, both. both. They're both. Yeah, drink it. Take, take, take a sip. Both. Not like the boy. And, okay. and switch to the shots. Uh, I used to go on the road when we first were touring. Um, when we did Dope Jam tour, Ghetto Boys would, you know what pay to play is? Yep. They would they would like pay, they would pay um, uh, Jay Prince would get him on the front of our show, like you know, like because they would. And they would rip shit. Mm. And I remember uh, calling Mr. Scarface. And, and and Scarface would walk around and, like, throw crack in the audience. Like, he had, like, <laughs> he had little packets. He was like, throw it. That's different. Them niggas was ill. He had the cane no, and shit. No, that's different. <laughs> I might be wrong, but I remember even throwing packets. <laughs> so, it wasn't real crack, but it was like he was acting I like it. Know. Like, yeah. You know, it was it was part of the show, <laughs> part of the show. But I was like, "Yo, who are these Texas ass niggas? These niggas is ill." Right. Ghetto Boys was ill. Yeah. With Bushwick, right. they was Bushwick ill. Is Ill. They were ill. They were they were they they, they were a solid gangster rap or hardcore rap group yeah. ever. Willie D, all of them when they would go, come on, man, stop it. And Scarface to me, deeply rooted. That album he just did, that made me want to nah, make a new album. He's one of the most lyrical artists out there. Yeah, but him and Cube have a similar type yeah. get down. Yeah, I love them both. Okay, so you said both. All right. Jada Kiss or Nas? I don't like this question. Y'all keep repeating this. Jada Kiss or Nas? Both. Oh, Jesus. Take he's making us drink. Both. Both of our lyrical beasts. Uh... <sighs> A lot of these guys, like I look at people that I think can out rap me. Mm. I think everybody in hip hop, I look at hip hop like a basketball game. Uh-huh. I know who got the jumpers. Right. I know who got handles. Right. But everybody has a place on the court, you know? So I might not be able to out rap Nas, but I could say some shit flyer than Nas. See what I'm uh-huh. saying? So I'm going to hit you with some fly shit. World renowned as the king of the fly rhyme. You know, uh-huh. if I was dope, you could step on me five times. Right. You know what I'm <laughs> so I, 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 those two rappers are lyrical beasts. Right. And uh, you just listen to them for the punch rhymes. I love Nas. I met Nas with, you know, this humble Super guys. Yes. Frank White or Nino Brown? Well, I have to go with Frank White, even though he turned into a snitch. Uh, Nino did too. But Nino was a, <laughs> Frank White was a real person. Right. Nino but, Brown ain't shot yeah. nobody or sold no dope. Yeah, Nino Brown, Nino was Brown a, is was based is on Wesley Snipes. He's, right. a, he's a character. So how would I pick the character over the real nigga? Wait, Frank White ain't that from... 
King of New York? Yeah. That, that's a, that was based on a real person. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking of who, who did oh, Denzel about, play? Oh, you're thinking of American Gangster. Oh, you're thinking about Frank Lucas. Yeah, I was no, too. I no, was no, thinking no, Frank no, Lucas no, no, too. No, no, no. My mistake. I yeah. was comparing Frank Lewis. Yeah, Frank White is a made-up Lucas. motherfucker too, yeah. <laughs> well, then, of course, it's Nino Brown. Okay, yeah. that's what I, 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 I was, It's I Nino Brown. Okay. I can't fuck with Wesley. Yeah. No, we yeah. fucked you up. Sure, I, yeah, yeah. I, was I never Frank liked you Yeah, 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 no, no. Cancel that bitch, I'll get another one. He said, he said, he said I never liked that pretty motherfucker. Fucking myself. Yeah, he cool. I, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Okay, I was thinking about Frank Lucas. Okay, yeah, no. Okay. Karis want to rock him. It's so totally different. I'll pick Rakim only because Rakim really changed the way that we all started rapping. Right. Like, I, I didn't understand the term flow oh, yeah. mm. when I heard Rakim. And Rakim, Chris had K, had Criminal Minded out. Right. But when I was making my first album, I had, I had never really witnessed a hit record outside of Run DMC. And I was in Harlem, and every car, I came in the door, I came in the door. I said it before, I never let the, what the right. it was in uh. every single car. Right. Every car, Rakim. And then the next record came out. Uh, uh, I take seven MCs, put them in the line. I'm like, who is this motherfucker? And early, I thought his name was Eric B. Mm. Uh, right? <laughs> because he, he, just, he just threw it. My name is Rakim. But just the whole theory of how Ra rap made me, got I got to rap better. And he didn't curse. Yeah. Well, it didn't matter. The cursing didn't matter to me. It was the flow of his rhyme right. and the confidence and the comfortableness he set in the in the in the beat. Because right. at, at one time everyone was yelling on records. Right. It was different. Now, no, no hats off to KRS One though, because you do not want to go against KRS Live. Nah, he's one of the best. Man. You'll get destroyed. One of the yeah. best. And then he'll teach you a lesson in between. At the same time. Yeah. Because Chris is big. Uh. First, he's big. Yeah. Uh. He's a big nigga, like King Son. He's Towering, a big nigga. Yeah. You'd be like, word? And then, <laughs> then he's loud. Uh. So he just is everything. He commands the stage. He, he is a real MC. Commands the stage. Tupac or DMX? Mm. West Coast going to hate me, but I say DMX. I'm much more of a DMX fan. Uh, I love Pac. I was friends with Pac. Uh, but I just like the more aggressive shit. You know, when I heard where my dog's at, I was like, yo, who the fuck is this? I was in a club. I was like, yo, this shit, you know, the the the, the Rough Riders hands. I did, that's more my shit. You know, that's just, I liked that. Pac is a human being and a man it's something else. It's, it was it was magical. You know, it's like you were sitting with young Malcolm X, you know. Wow. But music wise, DMX was more ice tea type shit. Let I me mean, the next okay. one. DJ Quick or MC eight? <laughs> they was battling for They was battling. Well, I go with even though I just got off the phone with Quick, I gotta fuck with MC eight. Well, let's just say both. Okay. Let's go on both on that one. Let's go with both Shout on out that. To both. They both legends. Both on that. And we need both of them on Drink Chance. Yeah, we need both on Drink Chance. Uh, yeah. I know you. You sing about. You say something about pop. People want to crucify you. Uh, I, I. I just. I'm. Well, I'm here to be honest, right? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Rough Riders anthem. That's just. Stop. I was like. I was like. DMX, I, I, I performed with DMX so many times. It's like, yo, he was art so... Art of rap? Art of rap and different shit. Just such a... Like, he was like a monster. He was like a boxer. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he's getting ready. You're not, I'm going to do the show. He's going to do the fight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got this ice. Come on. You ready to go? <laughs> Where they at? <laughs> All right, Mike. Um, what was the question? Uh, uh, next question. You can go to the next question. B Street or Break? No, 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 no. no. I, I, I skipped one. 
Like, oh, no, no, no. no you, I mean, eight, it was eight skipped after two. No, he, no, he said both. He said, uh, said quick, both. He okay. said quick and MCA both. But I thought no, you were yeah, MCA. going more on Tupac on the not, story. My yes. MCA, my favorite lyric where he said, he told a homeboy, I'm the neighborhood rapper. He said, I'm the neighborhood jacker. <laughs> One time, gaffled him up. Yeah. Yeah, CMW is quick classic. after two. Is what? At the Tupac of DMX. No, I did. I said quick and MC. I changed it. Yeah. Quick and MC8. Oh, that's why I'm quick. Yeah, 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 quick, yeah, yeah. Quick. I don't even know what they beef became about, you know? But yeah, interesting. But they both dope. And nah. Quick is an incredible producer. What? He's legendary. Yeah. Do the next one too. B Street or Breaking Two? B Street. Why y'all pick Breaking Two? <laughs> it, fuck Breaking. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking was really homogenized. It was more of a kid's movie. You know, rest in peace, Shabadoo. You know, Boogaloo Shrimp. You know, Turbo, Ozone, all that shit. It gave me a break. It was my first job, really. Uh, but it wasn't as dope as Beat Street with New York City Breakers, that, that scene where they broke in the subway right. and all that shit, and Melly Mel. Yeah, with each other. Yeah, it, it, it was... It was it was our version. See, what happened with Breaking was... We thought that was Bloods and Crips. We were at a club called The Radio. That was a New York club, an L.A. club that, that had um, Rocksteady Crew come there, Soul Sonic Force, Cold Crush Brothers. In L.A.? Yeah. And right. that's where I met Africa Islam. That's crazy. So the producers walked in and seen the scene and said, we're going to make a movie. You'll be on the stage... These kids will dance. And they just wrote some bullshit story, corny shit. Wow. And, uh, you know, it was them trying to capitalize on a hip-hop movement. But we wasn't enough hip-hop in L.A. to really do it. New York City was official. So Wild Style. Because this is after Wild Style, all of this. Wild Style was, Wild Style was first. But Wild Style and B Street was way more official right. than Breaking. Breaking yeah. was for kids. It was rainbow colors and bullshit. Wild Style felt like a reality show, like a real like documentary type I was, just trying, so I was just trying to, you know, get some paper and, and just be in a movie, you know? And I was trying to dress like break. Back then, I was dressing like Melly Mel, mm. you know, trying to be a rapper. You had the spikes? I had the spikes. Yeah, he had the I had outfit the hoodie. on. I had all that. And, you know, who changed my image was Russell Simmons. What did Russell say? Uh, we were at a club in L.A., and it was a rap show, and Russell was there. And Russell and me was chilling. And I had on like a Fila sweatsuit, some K-Swiss, had my perm, had a little Kango bullshit, you know. And um, the, whoever the uh, the, crap, the, the uh, act was, they called me on the stage. I used to see the building. So I got on the stage and I rap. And Russell's like, that's your look. Fuck New York. Like you trying to look like New York. You got to look like L.A. I used to, that is your look. The mm. way you look now, the way you dress on a regular. He said, that's why Run DMC looks like Jam Master J. That's how Jam Master J used to dress. He said, you're authentic L.A. street shit. That's you. Rock that. And that was the end of me with the New York shit. Wow. That was the birth. And then when you see me on the Ryan Page cover, I had on the Kango. I was in the Porsche with the girl Darlene and my boy in the palm tree. That was all Russ, Russell said that you you got to represent L.A. I mean, you love New York, but you, you got to hit L.A. That's that's dope. Yeah. We got to make some noise for that's Russell. Good. Russell came to my star, too. Yeah, I know. Russell I came, know. Yeah, Russell always gave me some good game. Yeah, you want, want to do the next one? Uh, Nipsey or Easy e Rest in peace to both. 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 Take a shot to that. Both. Both legends. Um, Nip had so much left to do. Right. Yeah. Nip was just getting started. But he's a good person, good soul. Um, you know, it just it, it just reinforces us that, you know, the safest place you think you are, you at the most risk. You know, like, because that's what... Player always told me, you get hit in your strong spot, player. Mm. The place you think you the most secure, that's where you're going to hit. You think you cool with the bitches? You think you got that in check? That's where you're going to get hit because you're not guarding that. See what I'm saying? So those those moments when we feel the most comfortable, you're in the most danger. Even though all of us is here having a good time, if the cat's coming in, they they got an advantage on us because we're comfortable. Right. We're not, at, we're not on down. point. Right. So 
that if Nip was very comfortable in this neighborhood and it went wrong. Rest and uh it, yeah, rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle. He was just getting warmed up. Yep. You can do the next. NWA or Wu Tang? Hey, you skip one. No, I know, but we said NWA or Wu Tang, both. Okay. Both. Take a sip. Both. Roots. Similar energy. I think NWA is two rappers. I always was in awe of Wu Tang. Nine MCs? All right. The fuck you do that. Because right. you just said NWA was two rappers? What do you two rappers. Yeah. It was- I mean, Easy would rap with them, but NWA is. What are you saying? Ren and Q. Yeah. Yeah, Ren and Q. Yeah, they pretty much wrote. Every and then Dre and Yellow were. Jay and Yellow the background, and Easy would jump on occasionally, but those were the two main rappers in NWA. Right. Wu Tang's nine. Right. You, you heard the story about me getting surrounded by Wu Tang? Yeah. It, tell us again. Tell us, tell us. Please. Y'all heard that story? Please, please, please. Last night. <laughs> I'm at an event. I'm at an event in New York City, MC Light event, right? So this is for Wu Tang, it came out. Uh huh. I get surrounded. I look, there's a nigga here, there's a nigga here, there's a nigga here. So I'm like, okay, my way out is this way. I look, there's a nigga there. <laughs> nigga there. I'm like, I'm surrounded. Yo, what up, Ice? Yo, yo, we shall in this Wu Tang. I think it's a gang. I'm from LA. Like, a gang? Is it over? Is it the moment I fear? Like, should my chain just crawl inside of my. Like, you know, like, uh, what the fuck? Like, so they were like, yo, yo, Wu Wu. I'm like, okay. So what's up? Yeah, we from Shaolin. Yo, we fucks with you. West Coast hardcore shit. We fuck. I'm like, oh, you like me? <laughs> they like, yeah. I'm like, oh, all right, Wu-Tang. What's happening? What's happening? But for a moment, the whole room stopped, right? I'm like, yo, they about to, what the fuck? So they told me this. They show me how to do this shit. I'm like, yo, yo, woo, woo, woo. So, like I said, it was the moment I feared. I thought it was going down. <laughs> and they went off and blah, blah, blah. And later on, now, now the thing of it is, I can't tell if any of the actual Wu-Tang members were those guys because there was so many of them and I was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wanted to do this. So I'm like this, dude. I'm, 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 I'm six feet, 220. Two guys... Ten guys? <laughs> I'm about to get stomped the fuck out. Like, I'm like, yo, this is going to go bad. I'm by myself. So, uh, yeah, but they didn't, they was fans. So, bow. And then I saw the Wu-Tang Clan come out, and I was just always amazed at nine MCs. You could put nine MCs on a record. And then each one of them, it was like each one of them had a different skill, like yeah. a kung fu movie, you know? I like genius. Uh. The Jizza? Like, yeah, the Jizza. Like, I'm like, yeah, Jizza. His rhyming shit was always, you yeah. know, super sh- Keep my sword sharp. You know, he was, I like that. I love ODB. I, I like all I like all of them. I think they all, even all of them have superpowers. Yeah. Yo, you know what? Before we move on, we want to wish everybody a happy Father's Day from Drink Champs. I, 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 Everyone just, except for Mr. Lee. You know what I call Sunny D. You know, but yeah, everybody let's give, let's out give, there. Give, we got yeah, a Father's Day gift for you. Give you a Father's Day gift. Some, some, a, you and Miami. got our drink chance slippers back. We got a drink chance slippers you. Miami, you got to put on some slides. You know what I'm saying? Goddamn. First ones that got these. We don't even got a pair. Yeah. Uh, we don't even got a pair. I call this happy motherfuckers day. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I mean, I mean, y'all, I'm hooked up. I'm gonna be able to open up a little store, <laughs> drink champ store around this bitch. Okay, hold I'll on. take this shit Comp- right down on Ocean Drive. And- Comp is most wanted or above the law? Are uh, they both? Okay. Both, you know, uh, both. You got, you got. Uh, well, that's MC8 again. Yeah, MC8. Yeah, right. I took a sip though. Remember? Oh yeah, that's MC8 again. Um. And um, by the law, that's Big Hutch, Code 187. Mm. Rest in peace, Lay Law. See, the cool, the cool thing about West Coast rap, none of us ever had any beef. The only beef ever happened was NWA. Right. And that was a family feud. Between so, them, so like Cube and NWA, right. Right. So I created Rhyme Syndicate. 
which was based on Lucky Luciano and the Commission. Mm. I, I read all gangster novels about Meyer Lansky and all that shit to learn how to stay out of jail, right? So I learned, I read about my, um, Lucky Luciano creating commission with the five families okay. so that they wouldn't beef. Before they beef, they talk. We sit down. Right. We have right. a sit, sit down. Right. So I said with Rhyme Syndicate, all of us will agree to have a sit down. So you got Cypress Hill, you got Low Profile with Dub C and all them, all these different groups. I'm the founder, I'm not the Cypress lead. was in it? Yeah, Muggs. Oh, damn, I didn't know that. Muggs was Syndicate. Uh, Muggs I know was Everlast at, was a part of it. Everlast. Muggs had a group called 783. That's right. Okay. So he was sick. He used to live with Aladdin. So all these cats were together. So I just said, look, too many Crips and Bloods. We're going to be the rhyme syndicate. Our, so there is no gang banging within the syndicate. And um, we managed to have peace. Every once in a while, there would be a beef. We put the bosses in the room, squash it, hmm. end it. Real quick, because the bosses always got cool heads. Right. Like, what's the problem? Effing, oh, man, yo, my man. Okay, well, well apologize, nigga. Okay, cool. Poop, bow. Right. You know, nobody got shot. Bam. So we never had no beef on the West Coast. Everybody stayed friends. And, and when NWA went at each other, like, we politely stepped back. Mm. How am I going to get mad when, when Cuban eat? They friends. They, we, we all hung out together. And, and it's about business, too. Whatever it's about, like I say, nobody got shot. All right. <laughs> Self destruction or all in the same game? Mm. Both, right. definitely both. Take a, um, take a shot to that. Both because hip hop has the ability to change the way we see things. Um, one of my favorite records is Brand New, being slowed down. You know. Hey, baby, you know, you know, shit is whack. Crack is whack. Like everybody, when cocaine hit, we all looked at it like it was fly because it was a high end drug. Right. Then we realized it was killing us. So rap made crack whack. Night of the Living right. Bass Heads. We have that power. Right. They have the power to make syrup whack if they want to. They can make all this shit whack. Like, wow, you still doing that, cuz? Like, what's happening? So with the violence, New York came out and did self destruction. Right. Michael Conception was out there. He had grand jury records. He called up. He said, I want to do something from the West Coast. That was Michael Conception, Dad. Yeah, and I heard Karis one recently talked about this story. It's dope. Wow. So I get the call from Mike. He says, you know, need to do this. Do you remember all the people that was in all the, on, on all the same game? Lord Finesse. If you watch it, Lord Finesse is with me. Got okay. Def Jeff. But Lord Finesse is from New York. Right. But he was actually signed to me at the time. So he was in L.A. when we shot it. And he's there on the in, west side. In the video. Okay. But, you know. The actual record. You, you don't remember the artist that was on the Yeah, record? I remember. I can. We did an Arsenio. But it was, it was, you know, you just go do your bars, say your shit, and uh, don't be left out. It's one of those kind of things where it was a bigger diss not to be on the record. Right. But it was, it had good intentions. And somebody like Mike who definitely was a street nigga, right. to say, I want to do this. I was like, okay, you're doing something right. Let's go. Let's do it. You know, because I knew Mike Conception for years before, you know, so. Before was, he was in the wheelchair? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, it was a good, it was it was meant to be, those are two good things hip-hop did. Hip-hop needs to do another one right now. Yeah. The youngsters do. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That resonates the same way because and, and that's the thing. It worked back I, then. I, I tell you, I tell you who should do it. Where it should come from? The South. Yeah, because they're the together. The South got the, yeah. They're already together. If they was to do like a put your guns down, stop the violence type of movement, you know what I mean? Like I'm talking about, you know, the powerful people from the South. Like I, I think, I think it would make a, a huge impact. It has to be maybe maybe somebody like Killer Mike. But the thing of it is, is that you got to understand it has to be that certain age yeah, bracket. Yeah, it's got to be even young. It's got to go younger, yeah. It's got to be. Like I always said. I was thinking like more like a, a future. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, future's hot. Yeah. I mean, like, I, it's not, it's not like, I mean, he, he knows how to make the music that's still relevant. Mm -hmm. He knows how to, how to how to orchestrate it. And I think that if, if future was to come out right now with a everyone put your guns down type of type of record. like, like But even bringing people under him that are younger even then. And then make it a club record. Right. Like, make it a club record, that shit would be so fucking dope. Like, I'm, I'm not in the record business no more, you know? But if anybody out there is listening, if you, right now, what could hit, 
be a young public enemy mm-hmm. and a Ooh. young Lauren Hill. Ooh. Them two. It's needed. A young Lauren Hill, a singer, rapper, beautiful woman speaking pro black, not doing the hoochie shit, just keeping it straight, solid, like Lauren did. Well, we got Rhapsody. Okay, well then she's out there. Yeah, yeah Rhapsody. Okay, Rhapsody. well then she needs to, we gotta yeah. blow her up. Yeah. But Rhapsody, and then a young 20, 20 year old militant little niggas that ain't about no jury or nothing, it's about what's right. right. That's what we need. Uh, Contra. Uh, Coast Contra. Coast Contra. Dope. To me, they like leaders of the new school, though. They, 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 yeah. they, they but, but I'm talking about some little militant niggas. That that will that that know they knowledge they got their knowledge together because remember you know Professor Griff was hitting the stage they they're like twenty five yeah oh, I'm getting this been in effect get a late pass I'm like who is this little nigga like Sah! I was like yo wait a minute I'm a pussy I got to get my shit together like yo this shit is going down that's when W's had me like fucked up uh-huh. and honestly <laughs> Public <laughs> Enemy Public Enemy made us West Coast rappers. Get more militant right. in our records, not just talk about bullshit and talk about issues. Then all of a sudden you hear NWA do respect yourself. It's like they made you accountable. Well, Amongst the shit. Right. We talking about the streets. From your peers. Yeah. And then I toured with PE. That was my number one touring partner. So I went around the world three times with Public Enemy. Okay. So I knew what they was about. You, know, so you I, telling them to pimp the hoe and they telling them, girl, go home. <laughs> that's, that's what I call balance Well you know what way we did it I said Chuck's politics are global Mine's are basically around the hood mm. So he'll tell you about the president I'm telling you about the guy that runs your block That's the president in my world So I had the pistol And he had the African Senate So he was more geopolitical Right. World Ice is going to tell you what's going on on the block Point blank So we both and at the end of the day, I remember one time I was with, uh, we went to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's house and sat with Minister Farrakhan. This is when um, I was in the cop killer shit. It was me, Q, Sister Soldier, Chuck. And we sat with, um, uh, uh, Khalid was sitting across from me. Remember uh, Khalid, yeah, yeah, yeah. Khalid Muhammad? And I got really close with Mustafa. Uh, the, bro- the the son of it was interesting, and that was during the time I was going through cop killing and soldier was going. Yeah, you. Now, I Elijah Muhammad just told me straight up: if you stand in the street, expect to get hit by a car. Bro. You basically said cop killer, like get ready. And that's when I learned that freedom of speech. Just watch what you say. You have the right to say anything, but you must be prepared for the ramifications of what you say. Right. You can't come out and diss gay people and don't and get mad when they attack. You can't diss cops. You can't like Kanye. You can't diss the Jewish. You say, it. get ready, brace for impact because they will come back. If you sit down, if you Colin Kaepernick, you put your knee down. Get ready. Protests will come with resistance. Right. That's why it's protest. Don't get mad when you get attacked. Right. Brace. If you want to put your fist, if I want to put my fist, if I want to say something right here, right now. That might make me lose my job. Don't get mad because I lose my job. See what I'm saying? You have you have freedom of speech. You can go home. You can't go home to your wife and say, "Baby, I just fuck your sister." Free speech, <laughs> <laughs> right? You have the right to say it, but you got to think what's going to happen. <laughs> so there it is. I learned that. I learned that during the cop killer thing, and uh, now I, I, I intentionally. I'm not ever trying to start no beef. I don't I don't want to if I want it, I want it. Let's put it like that. If I want it, I want I want no unintentional shit. Right. right. You know, it fucks up everything. Like the mob, you say it's fucking with the money, man. It's fucking with the money. Like, why are you doing this dumb shit? It fucks with the money. Like my boy says, keep the cash flow at a maximum and the drama at a minimum. Mm. Okay, next one. <laughs> Primo or Pete Rock? Woo! Both. Jeez. God damn it. <laughs> Both. I miss CL Smooth. Mm. Yeah, man. Pete Rock and CL Smooth together. Yep. Pete, Pete, CL Smooth used to say L shit. Mama's in the kitchen cooking fire. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, 
That nigga was saying some smooth shit. You know, butter sauce on the wet rack. Like, what the fuck? It? Like, it was so fly. I was like, CL Smooth is the smoothest rapper probably in the history of the world. But, you know, B-Rock's Beats is just official. Now, when you talk about Primo, uh, Gangstar was and Guru, my, rest my in peace, guru. guy. Gangstar slept in my house. Gang Guru was guru, just yeah, he was the best man. Such a real person and so so dope. I used to love to see Guru and Cool Keith hanging out together. That shit that must have been crazy. That's but Guru and in and Primo shit is just the most to me. Primo has the is the God of the boom bap. Yeah, he's yeah, hands down. And the God of the of the of the scratch hook. Yep. Mm. <laughs> like he'll put a hook on you with four different rappers, and it's just so dope. If you wanna if you wanna test your rap skills, get a primo beat and go in. I mean MOP, like Freddie Fox. Who can fucking produce Jay Freddie Roo. Fox? J Rue to yeah. damage you. Jesus Group Christ. Home. Group home. Yeah. You know, Jamie the damage you come clean. Royce the five nine with with huh? pre replace. How that shit go? You wanna find well, get your luck if you're feeling lucky, duck, then mm. press your, your luck. luck. My nine spray, my mind spray, Ooh. malignant lyrics. Who raps like that? Like, you know, dunk <laughs> your remains put in a car trunk. Come come to the and that ghetto beat. of the can't truck in that yang, you gonna survive it live. I don't gang bang or shoot out bang bang. The malignant lyrics, the only dope I sing. I'm a true gangster. You can tell that motherfucker. Like I was like, and had the undercut. Yeah, and you that know that was that performance though. The water shit. dripping, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sample for the water. Like how happy with the with the with the stove. With the stove. That was the water. And the thing of it is, in a rapper's career, in a rapper's career, you might make a classic record. Right. You might make. To three, but some records is just like come clean. It's just mm. that's like special ed. I I, I got I'm it made. Me. I'm your idol, your highest title. I'm like yo, this is a classic hip hop record. So premiere, premiere from Texas. Yep. Yeah. How about that? How the most New York nigga in the world it's is from, from Texas? Texas. <laughs> You know who else was my, we're talking about beats? You know who else was one of my favorites? Beat Nuts. Love Beat Nuts. Yeah, we love the Beat Nuts. Love the Beat Nuts, and we, they deserve part two of Drink Jack. Yeah. And Reign of the Tech is one of the most gangster records ever written. John Wayne couldn't even stand the rain at the video. Yeah. Like, who is these niggas? Niggas coming Some out of the helicopter with they the were tech? producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Psycho Less. Part of Native Tongue. So, you, yeah, Juju. So, you know, like I'm saying, since we're doing the hardcore shit, we got the hardcore radar up. Yeah. So when that came out, I'm like, ooh. That was from They produced one of my records. All right, so hold on. Let me just get, let's get, let's get um, podcast or radio? I think podcast. Because podcast, right now, you talk to me for an hour or two, which is much more comfortable than radio. Radio, you're always trying to promote something. I haven't promoted anything. Right. Radio, you... you Rappers have this switch where they can hit and they go into promo mode. Right. I got three seconds. They get my new record, man. Yeah, what's up? What's happening, man? Yeah, funny, check out my look. shoes. I got my shoes just bowing off and it's on, man. It's on. <laughs> fuck y'all. Peace. Kiss my ass. Yeah. It goes now. Yeah, yeah. Fuck y'all. I love you. Kiss my ass, bitches. You know, that's that's rap. That's rap mode. This is this is where we get to just chill. Right. I respect but, that. And also about podcasts is you get to pick who you fuck with. Like, if you don't like me and you made it to this part of the podcast, you're a stupid motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you're a dumb motherfucker. You have plenty of time to right. get turn this shit yeah. off. I'm yeah. not your I'm not your shit. Right. Oh, <laughs> next. Yeah, I love this question. Chill out, Will, or America's Most Wanted? <laughs> Well, those are two Ice Cube records, right? Yeah. I gotta say both. I couldn't. Yeah. Should have been Death Certificate or America's Most Wanted. I mean, all Ice Cube's albums uh, to me rate yeah. pretty much the same. The only one that rate, rates higher would be Straight Outta Compton, which is N.W.A. Right. But Ice Cube had a has a a basic solid body of work. Yep. Oh, let me sip. Yeah, I did. I sip. I love. I sip. You know one thing about me. 
the rappers I like are digestible. Like, I love Nori because I understand what they're saying. I'm a Mob Deep fan. Prodigy is my favorite rapper. Right. Right. Because I understand what he's saying. It's legible. I understand it. So that's the thing. Like, I like rappers where I don't have to decode it, mm. you know, that can sit up and sit, sit, fit shit to me. And I'm like, yo, that was dope. I got that. And, you know, Ice Cube is one of those rappers, you know. I try to be that kind of rapper. I'm not, you know... I say in one of my rhymes, I say, I check your style, although you rhyme quicker. No matter what you do, I'll always lace mine thicker. Jealousy will make a fool die quicker than liquor. Watch your back with your nigga, because that's right, Will, it'll stick you. Mm. So I said, I got to rhyme heavy. I want you to listen to Ice T rhyme and go, woo. Mm. That was that shit. Not even a bar, not, not even wordplay, game. Right. right. So, yeah, you know, I, I just did a cool Keith record where I say, it's not how long you're living. I said, wait, well, no, it's not how well you're living, it's how long you're living well. Mm. So let me ask you <laughs> New Jack City or Ricochet? New Jack City. New Jack City. I mean, Ricochet was my first co starring, but New Jack City is my legendary flip. Yeah, you know, break like. Film. Yeah, still. Yeah. When I do my shows, I end with New Jack Hustler and Colors. Those are my. My, those will be my biggest records. Dr. Dre or Puff Daddy? Dre. Okay. Dre. No, no doubt. I love Puffy. Puffy to me is the ringmaster. He's the master of everything that moves in hip hop. He does his thing. He's a, ma a magnificent promoter and stuff like that. But I'm not really. I don't know Puffy's true producing power mm -hmm. as far as what Dre does. Dre is a studio rat. Stays in the studio. The only thing about Dre, and Dre is one of my very dearest friends. Right. The reason I never record with Dre is it'll never come out. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, all right, let's work. And I'm like, okay, now we did it. Let's put it. No, 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 no. He just, he's very so meticulous. But see, the thing of it is when you sell 10 million records, you don't want to put out anything that's not right, going right. to sell 10 million records. Right. But he just finished a new album with Snoop. Yeah, oh, man. That's the, them... Right. Cause Snoop is Dre's first artist. Right. That's the that's the magic. Can't wait to hear that. I've heard a lot of it, but uh, oh, you've heard it. Yeah, I get. I, I got a whole. I got a. My phone is full of Dr. Dre records. So where do you think it compares to his body of work? That what you've heard so far? It's just magnificent. See, Dre, Dre, Dre. I guess has certain people he trusts, and so I listen to the music and I give him back my. Honest my opinion. feedback, right. Honest feedback. Like, he'll send me five records. I'll say, this is my favorite. That's all you need. I like this one out of all of them and stuff. But um, Dre's special. Cool. One next question. Don't think Puffy ain't special, though. Puffy invited me to a lot of fly-ass parties. I don't want to lose my invitation. Fuck. <laughs> I love Love, love, Mr. Love. I love you. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. I fucks with Puff. Puff is cool with me. <laughs> Let the record show. <laughs> so would you rather be loved or feared? Love. Absolutely love. Fear, fear is not, is not, is the bullshit. Love keeps you safe. The reason nobody will let nothing happen to me in here because you motherfuckers got love for me. Right? Not because nobody's scared of me. Uh, a scared man, it only takes six ounces of pressure from a kid and a torpedo, send the kid at you, pow, they put you mm. down. Let me, can I break this down? This is a good one. Yeah. If you got love, you have a group of people around you that love you. That's your inner circle, right? You taking care of them. They talk to other people and they say, yo, yo, Effin's my man, blah, blah, blah. That's another circle. Maybe you helping them, they helping them. Okay. There's another circle of people outside of them. They hear, oh, Effin's a good dude. That's my man, right? So it's a big circle. That ice is a good, or you're a good dude. You know how you're in danger? is when your inner circle turns on you. When your inner circle it got a problem and they the ones that can let motherfuckers in. Mm. But if you got that circle right, before somebody over to the left moves on you, they're going to run into one of your people that's like, nah, that's not going to happen, cuz. Because of layers. Because right? of love, of layers of love, not fear. Right. Fear is a challenge. Mm. Fear is a challenge. Oh, he's supposed to be hard? Nigga, fuck that nigga. You know what I'm saying? But love, 
will protect you uh, to an extent, to an extent, because like I told Nori last night, the bullet will hit you before the rep hits them. Mm. So I'm in, I'm in South Beach cruising, fly. They move on a car. Blah, ice got hit. That was ice? Yeah, they didn't know. They don't know. So the niggas out at night doing dirt, they can get it. Now, why, why do I know that element is out? Because I used to be in that element looking for fucking hunting niggas. So I know you're in danger out there. You look like a big piggy bank. You in a Maybach, you look like a big piggy bank. But in a real situation, the only reason anybody in here would hold me down is because they got love for me, not because they're afraid of me. Right. Fuck out of here. Yo, yo, or Lady of Rage? <laughs> I'm not fucking with that one both. <laughs> Rage is dope. Rage has what we just talked about, a classic record. Right. You say Afro Puffs is Rage. I mean, that shit was so hard. And then Yo-Yo was Cube's girl. Yo-Yo is so dope in real life. She's such a real champ, a real person, a sweetheart. Still, I'm the kind of person like I put the West Coast on my back. Like all all West Coast rappers, right. we all family. Right. You know, so I would never talk down on neither of them chicks, and both of them always treated me sweet. That's what's up. So, Mob Deep or MOP? Ooh, shit! I say both, even though, like I say, Mob Deep is my favorite. Take a, a big, yeah, yeah, I got to take a big one of them. Yeah, a big one of that. That's a good one. Bob Deep and M.O.P. Yeah. I did a song recently with Fame and um, and um, Little Fame, uh, Havoc, wow. and um, Razzcast. Wow. They got a little group they put together, so I did a video with them. But... Um, Little Fame, Havoc, and Raskas? Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, there's something coming. There's something coming. We shot a video and stuff. But um, I'm not, I'm just in the video. But um, like I say, like to me, Mob Deep, Mob Deep is the calm before the storm and MOP is the storm. Blood. Well, MOP came out first. But MOP is blah, blah, blah. You know, like, yo, come out some hardcore, nigga. I did a record with Billy Dance, and it's like, yo, the shit, the way they do it, they have a technique on how they do it to get that shit like that. Yeah, the ad libs are sick. But then, then like, Mob Deep is just like, it's scary. See, my thing with gangster rap is the music has to match the content. Mm. Like, I've never been into, like, saying gangster shit over happy music. Like, that didn't work for me. So, like, when I heard, when you hear uh, uh, For All the bill Killers in the $100 Bill, bill doo, 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 doo. real niggas who ain't got no film. Before they even start rapping, you, like, niggas start stabbing niggas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just gets you in that zone. I got to talk off the realness. We be the infamous. So I'm like, no, oh, this shit is so gangster. So that's my thing. Gangster music should always have that that sound. And that now, club. now Annie Up. There's two records I stand up in the club. Oh. Two records that I don't care what the fuck happens. I stand up when uh, Jay Z says, "Allow me to reintroduce myself." I'm like, "Oh, I'm like, yo, <laughs> A to the O V. Yeah. I'm in the club. I'm like, oh, that's my shit. I stand up and Annie up. Right. When Annie up, I stand up. Right. I can't help it." Gotta I gotta get up. You know my other record that makes me stand up too. Ugh. You don't want them boys to come over and start asking you what you wanna do, nigga. Uh, what you trying to do? Whoever nigga. made that record, he's a he's a good nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I love the part, I love I just love the word nigga. <laughs> what you wanna do, nigga? <laughs> what you trying to do? Yeah, that, 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 that record gets me a turn Certain records. Now this one is this one, <laughs> it's a good one for oh, yeah. me. Illmatic or All Eyes on Me? Illmatic. Illmatic, because like I say, I'm much more of a lyrical cat, and I loved Illmatic when it first came out and stuff like that. I love Pac, but it's on, I only like certain Pac records. You know what I'm saying? I only like certain Pac records. 
it's my it's my taste. Now, crucify me on the West Coast, but I'm a much I I, I would study Nas. And I think the Nas being what was he sixteen? Uh-huh. Yeah, he was young. That that eliminates the excuse of young rappers claiming, "Well, I'm young." Hmm. That kid was, you know. And I I sat there listening to that album like, I got to get better. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I like. You know, if you if you're the baddest nigga in the room, you're not gonna grow. You know, when I go out, I want to be the brokest nigga in the room. That's the only way I can come up. You know, so I like to be around. So I like I love being around Busta Rhymes and super rappers and shit like that. People who you, you think is, is just as good as you are or better. Better. When I first started rapping, I was in the studio with Cat with Melly Mel and Cat and Kaz. All right. And that first people I ever seen right in the studio, right they raps in the studio. What? Yeah. But they was like, yo, if you write it to the beat, it's gonna flow better than if you write it and try to push it over the beat. Mm-hmm. I had to learn that. Now I don't write. I don't write until I got the beat. Mm. I learned that, but Nas is a Nas, is half man, half amazing. This nigga is something else, and 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 like, and Pac was too. But Pac had to kind of grow. I don't know. Think of it is with Pac. I knew Pac when he was in Digital Underground, right? Right. So it took me a minute to accept Pac as a rapper. You know, because we're gonna come back to that. We're gonna come. You know what I'm saying? It's we'll different. Come back to that. Schooly D or Cool or Coogee Rap. Two different type rappers. Uh, with, uh, I can't compare them. I just say both. All right, so take a sip. Wait, y'all just taking sips now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what kind of part of the game is this? I've been going back and forth. Sip. Schooly D is the is the inventor of gangster rap. Yeah, he's the in your opinion inventor because they say you're the inventor of gangster rap. I I I, I put saying I put the fentanyl. Hold on, 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 hold on. Breaking news! Finally, ever. Finally, who, ever. Yes. So you say who's the originator against the Schooly D. Schooly D. Now there also there's another group in New York called Mob Style. Mob Style. Right, they were doing the gangster stuff. I was, I was, I was, I was after actually it. AZ from the Alpo crew. He was actually in that group, I believe. Oh, rhyming? No, he was rhyming. He, no, no, no. Yes, I pretty Tony. Yeah, pretty Tony. Yep. Uh, uh, All right. So anyway, so bottom you line. saying Mob Style and Schooly D? Well, I don't know. When, saying- I don't know when Mob Style came out. Okay. I don't. I can't know. So that. I, I, but I was aware of that group. Okay. All right. You know, if, if people trying to put you in history, you want to be placed correctly. I don't want to know fucking fake shit. Yes. Right. So the Schooly D story goes like this. Mm. I was already writing gangster raps. Right. But I never put it on wax. I was writing rhymes for gangbangers. Mm. Right. You want to hear gangbanger rhyme? Yeah. Yeah. Strolling through the city in the middle of the night. Niggas on my left. Niggas on my right. Yelling, cut, 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 rip. There be nigga I see. If you bad enough, come fuck with me. I seen another nigga. I say Crip again. He say, fuck a Crip, nigga. This is Brim. So we pulled out the Roscoe. Roscoe said crack. I look again. Nigga was shooting back. So we fell to the ground. Aimed for his head. One more time, the bitch nigga was dead. Walked over to him, took his gun, spit in his face, and began to run. So if you see another nigga laying dead in the street, and a puddle of blood from his head to his feet, opens time all you niggas get hip. It's fuck a Brim, nigga. It's West Side Crip. I said that on the other on, on the other drink champs because I then I ended with rolling sexy crib, but that was something that I would say. Want to hear one more? I got another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to fuck you on TV. Take this. This this was even this was even more fun. This was even, this was even more fun. I said this in Crenshaw High School. It goes like this. Fall into a party on a Saturday night and I left the pad down and out for a fight. Had on a waistline leather, Levi's cuffed. Under the coat, I knew I was buff because I was driving the iron, getting ready for that set and I was packing a punch and nigga never forget. The ring in my ear was hanging halfway to the floor and I was so tight, I walked sideways out the door. Now the hoopty was lifted, front side and rear and the glass was all tinted. Wasn't none of it clear. It was Craigered down, those are the rims. It was Craigered down with a cold ass pearl, deepest diamond tucking 
in the goddamn world. I had quadraphonic headphones with the tone you could fix under the seat. I had a 30 odd six. Now, on the way to the party, I was scraping and hopping because I knew by the end of the night there was going to be some popping. When I got to the set, I let it lay on the ground. The Buddhists came to check it out from Chinatown. Now, when I fell in the party, it was niggas for days. I was looking crazy in some hellified ways. I just walked in the corner, listened to they talk. First James Brown record, I jumped up and crip walk. Now, I was walking so hard, niggas couldn't compete. I was about to turn out the party with my goddamn feet. But Nori, then some niggas went and got out of line. His nose, my fist had no trouble to find. After driving the iron so hard all that day, I drove his grill in in one hell of a way. But his partners fell out, so did mine. Squabbing went on for quite a long time. But then all of a sudden, I heard some popping. I knew not too soon this fight would be stopping. I seen 22s, 38s, and a 45. I knew not too much would be left alive. Uh, the niggas broke out in a goddamn rage Cause I even think I seen the sawed off gauge Because I was sent from hell, not heaven I broke out with the chrome plated 357 And the name of the game is simply survival At the end of the night, 10 was dead on arrival And me and my partners, we was gone like the winds Police blamed it on the crypts of the brims But some niggas knew in the corner in the dark Them crazy niggas reside in Triangle Park They go by the name of Burnett, Zell, and Trey and they belonged to the association called the EPA. That was called the Eliminators Pimping Association. That was one of my little crews back in the day. <laughs> Jason, how are you on television? <laughs> this, Every, for the record, this is pre-hip hop. <laughs> right, right, right. Damn. This is 1970, say, five. Woo! In high school. I was Saying these rhymes to the gangbangers to entertain them. So I can entertain them. <laughs> I can insert your gang name. I can insert your shit into the set. This is how I kept them savage niggas off my bumper. Right. Yo, nigga, say one of them shit. Say my name, cuz. Put my name in it. So this is it. So when hip hop came, I was like, I could do that. Mm. But I just had to learn how to syncopate it on the beat. Some people still don't know. I think I can syncopate it on the beat, but that's another story. But that was my attempt to learn how to do it. So that was gangster rap, right? right. That's so. You, if you count that, then maybe I am the first. But it wasn't recorded. So I'm in. I'm in a club called Two One Three. No, three. It was in Santa Monica, and I hear this. <laughs> PSK, we making mm. that green. People always say, what the hell does that mean? Peace for the people who can't understand. And the music sounded, I don't never get high, but it sounded like angel dust. I can, I, I, I can hear that. Y'all agree with that? I can hear that. PSK, all that reverb was like... And all of a sudden, this pimp nigga, PSK, you know, pimp my, and then at the end he said, I, I, I went to the DJ, I put my pistol up against his head, said, suck your ass nigga, I should shoot you dead. And I, so I was like, who is this? So I do the research. They say it's Schooly D. We had to go to the library? Yeah, I had Google. <laughs> no, I, I, just, I, I had to check with my DJ. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good. But that record fucked me up. That night I was in the club oh. chilling, doing my thing. But that record, I was like, who is that? Mm. So we found out Schooly D. We did the research. It said Philly. Like, cool. And they like, PSK stands for Parkside Killers. Yes. I'm like, he's repping a set. PSA or PSK? PSK. 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 Stands for Parkside Side. Killers. It's crazy. A gang. Right. Never been done before. All right. No, hip hop was throw your hands in the air with peace, love, and you know, this nigga's rapping about a gang. So I was like, that was a green light. Like, oh, all these other rhymes I got over here? Cause I was like, you can't do it. Like, right. you gotta remember, hip hop was like disco. Right. It was homogenized early. The spikes. Yeah, Tight. it was like being like rock star. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. but then oh, I, yeah. but then I sent, heard this, and it was such a dope record. Then, it, then he had smokes and kill, and he was cursing and shit. I'm like, let's go. Mm. So we take the 808, we make the beat. Uh, six in the morning was made. Six in the morning. Six in, six in the morning. But peep game, peep game. Six in the morning was made, kind of like to resemble a Beastie Boys beat. Yeah. Uh. 
Beastie Boys had a record called Holding Out Hit It. Yep. Well, well, I chill, well, yeah, well, I got it. Yep. Then it would stop holding out, boom. Uh, yep. And then it would start, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So six in the morning stopped and started. Dun, 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 boom, 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 boom. That was the Beastie Boys stop. I wanted to make the record stop and start. Right, so that I, I say, I, I take, I take that. That you guys, you DJs, understand yeah, what I'm yeah, saying, yeah, right? Yeah. That because over my head, right? Because B, that was if you listen to holding out head at the record stops. Yeah, holding out. Wait a minute, hey Leroy, all right. Well, after boom, 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 it starts again. The break is just separate. So the, our break was dun 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 dun. So now, Schoolie D, PSK, we making that green. People always say, "What the hell does that mean?" Six in the morning, police at my door. Uh-huh. Fresh to the squeak of uh-huh. one more, Let me take you another. Let me take you one more step. The boys in the hood are always uh-huh. start, start talking that trash. Same shit, all three. Same cadence. Everyone same. Was, was following. Dre will tell you that boys in the hood is six in the morning, part two. Wow. I was today years old. <laughs> But see, when I tell it, when I when I when I say it, it makes sense. It makes total sense. It makes total sense. So, Schooly D inspired Six in the Morning. But what I did was Six in the Morning. I put the guns and the drugs and all the other shit because um, Schooly was vague. Right. You know, he alluded to it. Yeah, people always right. say, "What well, peace for the people who can't understand how one by one, uh, how a uh, home run homeboy became a man." As for the way you scream and shout, one by one, I'm knocking you out. That was basically it. I was six in the morning, police at my door. You know, they found a Uzi and a hand grenade, and we beat the bitch down at the got. You know, it was like I took the fentanyl <laughs> on it. I added it to J. I took. I, I, I and this shit was on steroids. But. Yeah, it was on steroids. But then what happened is Schooly hears it and gave me the. He's like, yo, nigga, that shit. Once he said, once I heard the doom doom, he said, that shit's hard. So me and Schooly always were friends. It never turned into nothing. And then when Cube came out with Boys in the Hood, I got it. It was just homage to one to the next. And where's Schooly D at now? Is he Schooly D's in Philly? Schooly D started, he started um uh making Robert Bank? Bank? No, no, no. That's that's steady B. Oh, my bad. I'm here to get you right. I'm here to get you right. My hip hop cars should be moved for a day. Don't put that on school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that on school. Schoolie has been doing soundtracks. He actually brought up King of New York. He did the soundtrack for King of New York. Wow. Yeah, so Schoolie's my dude. But yeah, Schoolie has old school style of rhyming, you know, the way it is, but that's Schoolie. But he was always dirty. By yeah. the way, so did, did you pick Schoolie D or Coogee Rap? We forgot. I think we said I both. Said both. both okay. I said both because, come on, it's a demo. Right. Like, right. yo, what the fuck? DJ Polo. Like, I think really, like, when we say Rakim was the flower. Right. Coogee was the key, was the, was introducing a complex rhyme style. Mm. Complex. Tila Rock really was, to me, the first introduction of a complex rhyme style. But then... Kooji Rap sped it up. Yeah, Kooji Rap. He took it into the future. I did a record with Kooji Rap, too, for uh, DJ K Slay, rest in peace, one of his. Rest in peace, K Slay, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been very fortunate to meet all my idols and have them have a mutual respect. The worst thing is you meet your idol and they look at you, they don't like you. <laughs> oh, you a sucker. Oh, you don't like them when you meet them. I've had that happen, weird shit. You right, know, I'm into it. What you talking? About? I had somebody that I dissed, and I met, and they was the nicest person in the world. I learned my lesson. I stopped that. You don't want to say that person thing. I think it was. Uh, I think it was MC Shy D. Oh. Remember Shy D? Yeah, man. Yeah, well, yo, yo, shake it, shake, shake it. But Shy D, Atlanta or Miami? I think. Yeah, from and I don't know why. I don't even know why I wasn't a fan. But when I met him, he's like, "Yo, I see you, my idol." I was like, "Yo, I'm an asshole. I'm an asshole." Uh, Shady was I'm dope a, out here in Miami. He was. Dope. I'm a fucking asshole. This is the nicest dude in the motherfucking world. I don't even know why. And, and you know, at that point, I, I like I told you last night, man. Music is like religion. It's like ice cream. That's where there's 31 flavors. Whatever you like, that's what you like. I've learned that over time. It's not for me to pick out your pre- preference and what you like. 
Right. You like it for a certain reason. You know what I'm saying? Eminem, to me, is one of the most incredible rappers. Eminem, right? Okay. Eminem says his first record he ever heard was Reckless, mm. right? Mm. Eminem raps at a certain frequency. Mm. If you can't dial into that frequency, you can't listen to Eminem forever because Eminem raps at a certain frequency. I'm, I tune into a lower voice. Does that mean I dislike Eminem? No. I cannot rap at, at his level. Right. But... For me listening, I'd rather hear Big Daddy Kane. You know what I'm saying? It's just what, where my energy level is. As a player now and an older player, too, right. I ride around more chill. Okay, so let me say. <laughs> MC Ren or Spice One? Both. Okay. Both, because they both legends. Ren is... Oh, yeah, shots. Ren was always, to me, the more <laughs> serious... Believable, dangerous person in NWA. Because Ren was, you gotta remember, Ren was Easy's boy. Oh, so Ren was really, Ren's birthday was yesterday. Wow. Yeah, so Ren was really about it, you know? Spice One was just a fucking, his style was incredible, and, you know, Spice One is still a beast. Um, I was, once again, I, I love all West Coast, because all the Bay, everybody, man. See, when I started, I couldn't come out Crip of Blood. I had to come out West Coast, mm. you know, West Coast. So everybody from Too Short, right. all the people up and down the Bay, it was all help to me. Mm. Let me let me add a different one. Yeah. King T or MC Breed? Both. Okay. Both. Both. Uh, Ain't no, ain't no future in the fronting. I went to Flint, Michigan, when Breed was alive. Nicest guy in the world. Was they water good back then? Yep. Uh, no. Well, I lost I'm my leather. I lost my leather coat. That's my only bad thing. I, you know, how you do in a show and you throw your leather coat. Nigga <laughs> stole this shit. I went after the show. Where's it at? Oh, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. Them niggas. But uh. If you listen to a lot of any, like everybody knows Breed's number one records, but if you listen to any of his records, he's dope. Nah, Breed is dope. D, Breed is dope. He, That's why I brought him up. He's rapping his ass. Now, King T is a whole nother. I know. To me, King T was West Coast Biggie. Yeah. The King T flow is so similar to Biggie's flow. And I have a picture of him and Biggie together. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, It's Tila, man. That's my guy, man. That, that's my guy. King T has what's called the drunk technique. You got to get King T on the yeah, we, Nah, man. yeah. I mean, King, the alcohol is in that alcohol. whole thing. If anything, is a So for him to rap, to he has to hit the right level of drunkness. Right. Wow. If he gets too high, he can't do it. If he gets not high enough, the flow don't happen. Right. But when he hits that, the drunk technique, what's one of his <laughs> records? It's just, yeah. yo, I, did, I mean. So the Kung Fu technique, the drunken monkey. Pretty much, yeah. pretty much. But Tila is, is no one raps like King T. Mm. Nobody. And to me, honestly, that's my thing in hip hop. It's like originality yeah, is yeah. number one. Right. There's no component Noriega. There's no Nas. There's no, so you name it off people that there's no, they're not replicas. Right. right. You know, I've had people show up my house fucking like, DHL men that rhyme and they sound just like DMX. I'm like, you sound like DMX. Like, how many rappers that come to me with demos that sound like Pac? I'm like, and tell you they sound like it too, which is even that crazy. That doesn't count, <laughs> motherfucker. And they say, I'm the new, I'm the yeah. new, I'm the new, I'm the new, such and such. I'm Everlast, when I first met him, he sounded like Rakim. And he was silent. really, yeah, yeah, he was in Rhyme Syndicate. He sounded like with long, when he had the long hair. And I said, you dope, but you need to rap in your own voice. A lot of rappers don't like the sound of their own voice. Right. So they'll emulate other, other rappers. Yeah. The next one. Drink Champs is dope. Come on. Are we getting into stuff? Yeah. I see is opening. I'm opening up some good shit for yeah. you, motherfucker. <laughs> Hip hop. We're going to strip club, booby yeah. trap, or magic city? 
I never been to e- I, 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 the only strip club in Miami I think I ever been was. Did y'all ever have one called Diamonds? Yep. yep. And Rolex and Rolex, Rolex. Back with Luke. Oh. Yeah. I got a quick story for you. <laughs> you was I don't know. Did Luke do? Did, was there a players' ball in Miami? But he had a party or something. So so Luke's had, remember the club Luke's club? Yes, I was. There. I was DJing. Right. And Trick Daddy was there. I don't remember that part, but I remember you coming up to me. I'm DJing. Okay. I got a picture of this, and you said, I want to rhyme, play Shook Ones Part 2. Okay. And I played it, Bob Deep, and yeah, and I got the picture of it. Picture looks weird, but... We're gonna put the picture in the episode, yeah, cool. but it was it was it was memorable. It was memorable as hell. I think that was the night I first ran into Zoe Pound. I I guarantee you it was. I never seen. <laughs> right? Am I right? <laughs> guarantee it was. I ran into Zoe Pound and I had never seen so much jewelry. Uh, I was like, who the fuck you? Yo, Ice, we Zoe Pound. What, 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 we fuck with you. That's all I care. Is the second word is we fuck with you, then I'm good. <laughs> nah, and, and Zoe Pound, some real dudes, good dudes. Yeah, yeah. So I met them that night. They was they was like, we fuck with you. I'm like, that's oak. Then I'm good. <laughs> good in Miami. That. Shout out to Zoe Pound. Zoe Pound. Mm. All right. Law and Order. Organized crime or law and order SVU? Fuck them all, SVU. <laughs> Wait, what? It's a different law and order. Oh, a different law and order. Okay. No, law and order, the original law and order. I give a little love to the original law and order because without them, we would have never been on. Right. Okay. Uh, law and order, uh, crim, uh, S, uh, organized crime is Chris Maloney's show, spinoff. Right. But I got to fuck with my team. Right. I had to keep my motherfucking boat floating. You feel me? Uh, SVU, Mariska Hargitay, most incredible woman to work with. I've been very fortunate to have a a sweet, you know, Mariska was Jane Mansfield's daughter. Uh, she comes from, you know, royalty. Right. And I love working with her. And it's been a very, very fun job. People say, well, how do you do the job so long? It's because I go to work every day and everybody respects everybody and it's, we all know we all players on the team. So you yeah, SVU, okay. season 25 to season 30 to see, I, till I check out of this bitch. <laughs> you just do it. You just end it out. I got one. You know what? I, look, 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 y'all. Why is this glass not going down? Because that girl right there. <laughs> Shout out Jamie, our bartender. Yeah. Jamie keeps sliding in. Yeah. And I'm not, Jamie, don't fill this up no more. Because I, <laughs> I have no reference point to how much I'm She's drinking. smooth with it. Ice tea, the non-alcoholic nigga. <laughs> Drink champs got me open. All right. OG or home invasion? OG. OG because... OG, like I said, it was a result of NWA coming out and me coming hard as I could at the time with the attempt to do a double album. But Warner Brothers didn't want to put out a double album because Wax had went out and they couldn't put more than 70 something minutes on a CD. So that and then Home Invasion was me in turmoil. Home Invasion was after Cop Killer. That's when I went over to Priority and I was kind of like flustered. So it was a angry album. I don't like making angry. I don't like right, making impulsive music. I like to make like it reactive, like, right? Yeah, you might. But it was good. The first record on Home Invasion is the best rum. It's on. Well, I'm mad at the Source. Source Magazine, you're the first one. You know, <laughs> fuck Source Magazine. How, you know, you pick, you pick Chuck Cube and me. How the fuck you pick us three? They dissed us three. Yeah. I say, you punk motherfuckers ain't shit. You're just a bunch of whores making money. No, I said, uh, Source, you punk motherfuckers ain't shit. You're just a bunch of hoes making money off the pros. And when I see her get you in your sight, in my sights, I'll give you ass a story to write. Okay. <laughs> Say, hold your Source magazine in that one. <laughs> being an actor or being a musician? Or if you want to take just being an MC? Both. Both. I'll explain. Okay. I'll take a Please shot explain. Being a musician. Being a musician is beautiful because I control everything. I go in the studio. I get to pick the beat or make the beat. 
I write the lyrics. I create the entire picture. Acting, you're just doing what you say. I have to act until you're happy. I have to, I have to fill your image. If you're the director, Efren, and you say, nah, nah, you are more mad than that. I get mad. You go, no, split the difference. So I'm working off of you. So it's different. Only way acting would be like music is, but I wrote it, directed it, and produced it. But usually as an actor, you're falling into somebody else's um, right. vision. But that being said, both of them are dream jobs. Both of them jobs you don't ever retire from. Ever. I cannot stop. I can stop making records forever. If I go to a Nori show and he calls me up on the stage, I got bars. Mm. I'm re- and also, like Rakim said, I came in the door. I said it before. I never let the mic magnetize me no more. Even when I'm at other people's show, I'm like thinking in my head some bars just in case I get called on. <laughs> That's a real Because you'll black out. You'll be on somebody, you know, Fuji's pull you up. You like... Oh shit! So you know you you know sometimes even if I'm going to people's show I'm I might say I might practice some shit just on the way there just because I don't rap off the head I'm a writer right. so I got to figure out what show I'm gonna pull up if that moment you know but uh and acting who retires from acting those are dream jobs right mm. those are those people dream to do that shit That's so. True. <laughs> you can act yeah. for the rest of your fucking life. You act and making music. Your knees could be bad. Your knees could be bad in the, in the in movie, the film. right? Yeah. In, the, in the show. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. I mean, Morgan Freeman's still getting a bag. Yeah, he getting a hell of a bag. Uh, yeah, you know, so it's it, entertainment is something that's beautiful, and if you are fortunate enough to be able to make a career doing it, first off, you're living a miracle. Right, it's a miracle. The percentages are very low to um, be able. Yeah, to, it's, yeah. You don't have calluses, right? <laughs> what? Like, like. Like, hey man, I got fucked up hands from I jewelry stealing jewelry back in the day. I got cut. I wasn't ready for that. But um, yeah, but uh, I uh, yeah, they're both dream jobs, and I think as long as you know it and you're aware of it, you'll continue to be blessed. Right. I'm very very fucking fortunate, you know, to be still in the game. I, like I say, when Law and Order, I'm just gonna go read for all Samuel Jackson's parts. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I could say motherfucker just like him. You know what I'm saying? So I'll read for all Samuel's parts. Maybe I'll get a couple. And the commercials, I'm trying to get the a commercials you've been doing have been crazy. Commercials is good. I, I, I fucking uh, was watching Shaq one day. Shaq said he never spent any money out of the NBA. It was like, hell. Yeah, I, I saw that. I was like, word? So I called my manager. I said, I need some, I need some, uh, like, advertising gigs. They won't fuck with you. Top killer. You bad. This, I said, give me, yeah, I, I, right. get, I need to advertise an agent. So we got somebody. The first one I got was the Lemonade. Read the sign. Mm-hmm. Remember I, that? I, that was amazing. I, I, I see. So I do that. And they waiting on the blowback. They waiting on some, and no one said anything. And next thing you know, I just start getting them. Bow, 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 bow. I got a, uh, one coming out. Of course, I got Car Shield. Car Shield is a, uh, Car Shield's a gig. So what happens is you go out, you do the shit, they like it, and then they sign you on for years. Oh, it's like getting a show. So you do a year deal, a year deal that lets you, they'll run the commercials all year. At the end of that year, they got to read up. Uh-huh. And me, I just did one, you see the one I did with Iverson and, and, and Ric Flair? Yep, yep. And the bag is, the bag yeah. is substantial. Mm. The, 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 the people that have, that, that do uh, promotion, like Cheerios? Yeah. Those ad agencies have, they flush with cash. Cheerios, nigga. How the fuck I get on a Cheerios box? <laughs> After the crimes you just said, I don't know neither. I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how. Even though we off topic. No, the, we on topic. No, we on topic. The Guardian, the gates have changed. The, the, gate, the gatekeepers. Yep. The people that used to be in charge are right. gone. They grew up on you now. The new people that are in charge are our fans. Right. Yep. That's real. How the fuck did Snoop and them get at the Super Bowl? Right. Because right. the person that's making the call is 48 years old and grew up with us. Right. The old motherfuckers are gone. Yeah. Right. The people that... I love Ice. Fuck that. Put him on Cheerios box. He's 37 years old. CEO. Billionaire. Yeah. So now, right now, that's why Snoop is doing so. Snoop just did Taco Bell. Right. 
Corona. <laughs> but the people in charge. Yeah, during Corona, though. <laughs> let's just, let's yeah, just be yeah, clear. Let's just be clear. During Corona, it made me say, then, fuck it. Did he diss Corona afterwards? Oh, yeah. I don't even know, but I, I drank right, a Corona. Right. That, that, everybody was moving away from it's, that beer. They was just like, wait a minute. It's the 50th oh, anniversary. Of, catch that shit. It's like, the 50th anniversary of hip hop. That's, it's the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Hip hop has gray hair. Yes. I mean, I'm clearly yeah. showing Hold this. on. I, I gotta go to the bathroom. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So the, so the people that are in charge are grown. Right. So the theory that you're gonna walk into a anything, I don't care whether, whatever it is, and you're gonna run into somebody that doesn't like you, fuck that. I'm gonna walk in, meet the CEO, and he's gonna be ice. I went to college with you, I grew up with you, man. Let's get some money. You know, I remember, I remember Ozzy Osbourne bit the head off the bat. Yep. Right now, we could put out a bat cereal. <laughs> With Ozzy Osbourne. With Ozzy on the cover, and it would sell. It would sell. The parents would get it. <laughs> the kids would have no idea, and it would sell. Because the guards have changed. Yep, yep. You wouldn't be on the radio if the guards, I mean, on, on, on podcast if it wasn't. Right. The guards have changed. Yep. Huffy's now a guard. Right. How about that? But what you said is important. It's still... Being in this space is a percentage thing, and everybody's lucky that can actually survive in the space. Yes, you, if you can survive in the space, but the the new people are are our people. They grew up on us, right? So the fear of ice tea is no longer there. The fear of cop killers, no. I'm, I was there when that happened. We love you. Fuck that. Right. You know, let's get some money. When I saw Snoop with Lee Iacocca back in the day, I'm like, yo. Then with Barbara Walters. Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. That was it. Selling lighters. It's been like Martha Stewart should be an honorary honorary member of G Unit. <laughs> Cause she did her time. She held her water. We should have her on right? Drink Champs. She needs to be on Drink Champs. She didn't say. She held her water. She got caught. She said, All right. It's facts. It's facts. It's about Martha Stewart. Yeah, Martha Stewart is gangster. He said she should be an honorary member of G Unit. Yeah, I respect that. Yeah, she, she didn't. We got Tony Ayo coming soon. Yeah. We're going to we see him soon. We're going to tell, we gonna tell, tell her. her, yes. Yeah, she, I, I mean, I respect her. Gangster. Right. She did her shit. She's back doing her thing. She fucks with Snoop. She's obviously a real woman. Right. That's real shit. You want to do that? Right, we almost done with quick time. Yeah. <laughs> Not so quick time with slime. Yeah. Well, we having fun with it. We elaborate. Exactly. Right, right, right. exactly. We are gonna show you how quick time should be done. Yeah, that's so right. Just answer the motherfucking question. <laughs> elaborate, nigga. That's right. All right, I'm gonna I'm, I'm make this a three way question. Claire, I wouldn't okay, go ahead, elaborate go. on that for a second. I just <laughs> heard that pimping you just put down, but could you elaborate on that? Okay. <laughs> so this is gonna be a three way question: New York, Miami, or LA. Oh, okay. I mean, all, all, all of above. Hey, we're all, still drinking. I love drink, them all. I'll take a shot for that. Then. I love them all. all. Okay. Oh. Miami. I start with Miami. Okay. Yeah. We love Miami. First place I ever came in the United States, they had blue water. Mm. You know? New York, that shit's crazy. Yeah, come on. <laughs> right, down. LA, that shit down. is like it's like. Let's speak on this. It's like it's like seaweed and shit. <laughs> I came down here. I'm like, I'm in the Caribbean. You know, I used to live in Sunny Isles. I had a pad in Sunny Isles. I'm go out. It's beach. It's beautiful. Um, Miami's going through transitions. You know, I've been coming down here for years. It always goes through transitions. Blue. It's very transitional. So it was different. You know, I came out here one time on. Memorial Day, I never seen no many, so many white T-shirts and Tims in my motherfucking life. Around how can I be down? I was like, yo, <laughs> let me take my bad mask back up to North Miami. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, it was too. Yo, ice my nigga, what's up? Yo, yo. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I got wild around them times. So I was like, cool. But I love Miami. It's beautiful. It's fun. The people are here. You just got to know where to hang and what to do. Right. I mean, we're planning on going down to Miami Beach tonight. We're staying up here. We're going down to Ni Miami Beach tonight uh -huh. with the wives, uh -huh. have some dinner, enjoy it. It's a beautiful place. Uh -huh. um, New York, I, lo I learned to love New York. I came to New York. I'm like, first when I got to New York, I was shook because I came in the winter and everybody had coats. Niggas look big. I thought niggas was looking at me. I'm like, niggas is looking at me. Like, no, they ain't looking at you. Niggas in New York got shit to do. <laughs> they got shit to do. They not thinking about you. 
So I like, I like, you know, New York is different because y'all don't really have the gang, so to speak, but Bronx niggas don't fuck with Brooklyn niggas. Don't fuck, you know, it's different, mm. but I'm from, I'm in Manhattan. Mm. So, you know, I hooked up with Smooth the Hustler, Trigger the Gambler. Uh, Brooklyn, that's Brooklyn, yeah. Brooklyn. And then, of course, I'm hooked in with the Zulu Cats. I used to roll with B.O. and uh, all the Sugar Ray and all them up there. I love New York City. I don't think there's another city in the world like New York City. God New damn York. it. New York, is a, New York is like a Rubik's Cube. God. No matter how long you lived in New York, you can't tell a nigga what's on 26th Street. <laughs> And if, you lived, snack, yeah. and if you lived on 26th Street, you can't tell them what's on 27th. Right. <laughs> and if you know what's on 27th, you don't know what's on the 34th floor and yep. in the back. Yep. So you go in a building in New York, downstairs it's a regular store. Next door is somebody's suite. Next, door is a, next floor is a sweatshop. Next floor is some S&M shit. Right. Next floor is somebody got this badass, you know, loft hooked right. up. Next floor is abandoned. It's like New York. You just and then it then it does this. Once you think you know it, it shifts. <laughs> like that Hellraiser ball. Right. <laughs> New York's a deep motherfucker. You can never penetrate the depth of New York City. Right? And then L- LA. I love LA, but LA's violent. And um LA is a very, very fucked up place. Uh Outside of the nice areas, you know, when you go to Beverly Hills, a lot of people come to L.A. and they go, oh, yeah, I was in L.A. I'm like, nigga, you was on Sunset. Right. L.A. is 40, 50 square miles of niggas and Mexicans surrounding it. And we've had we've had gangs and the gangs are extremely dangerous. Right. And growing up there, just going from block to block is is dangerous. I don't really fuck around in L.A. Like, I I survived L.A., but I don't go back and hang out. Like, you go back to the block now. You go back to prison? You went to prison. You go back? (laughs) Visit, nigga? (laughs) Nah, 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 I don't because I made it. And you're safe when you got your boots on the ground. I don't care what neighborhood you're from. You're safe when you got your boots on the ground and you know everything that's happening. Everything's moving. But once you leave and you come back, you're not tied in like that. You're not tied in like that. And um, I had a story going back to L.A. I, I, I... I went to Crenshaw, but I hung in the 40s before the 40s had a gag. Right. And uh, they want to go shoot an album cover, or a, a magazine cover. So I go back to 42nd. I'm there. I'm in the corner right by a liquor store. And they got the white people shooting the video. And little niggas from the 40s, now Crip set, is being very disrespectful. Mm. Fuck all these white people coming up in the hood. Da, 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 da. I'm Ice T. Niggas would not back down. Man, fuck that Ice. You ain't. Ooh. I'm like. Oh, man. Yeah, so I call down the street. I call my boy Shiny Mac, who live on the street. Yo, Mac, man, these little niggas over here is being disrespectful. Nigga, I'm in Colorado. Nigga, my age, I'm out. So I'm like, call little, call Big Timmy. Who's Big Timmy? Big Timmy, my boy Linda Jackson's Timmy Fly. That's Linda Jackson's son. I mean, I'm bro- little uh, brother. You mean Timmy? I used to carry it like this. Oh, no, that's Big Timmy now. That's Timmy Fly. I call him. Yo, Timmy, I'm around the corner from your mother's house. Like, oh, what up, Unc? Yo, you little 40 niggas being disrespectful. Hold up. He hits the corner. Jumps out smacking niggas. Nigga, that's my uncle. Cuz, nigga, you trying to die? Blah, clears it out. We shoot. What did I learn? It's not my rep. It's the nigga that's putting a foot in their ass on a daily basis that they scared of. They don't know shit about me. So, so therefore, in the hood, my card is invalid to these little niggas. Right. They don't give a fuck. I'm an old nigga. So, fuck that. I'm like, I'm not hanging out. I can't hang out no more. Huh? I'm not supposed to be there. And I always say also, if I see get shot or if I die, I'm supposed to die someplace I should be. I should slip and fall in Gucci's or some shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nigga can't. Oh, I, nigga was in the hood. I don't want a, niggas to be in my funeral like dumb motherfucker. What was that nigga doing over there? Why was Nori back? What, you know, 
Nori flipped the speed boat. You know, like him shit. You know, like <laughs> that's how this shit happens. I can't get caught. With, yeah, some pimp shit. You know, fly. Shit, you know, all oh, this private jet trip. Oh, okay. But not, but it can't be niggas in the funeral like. Dumbass. <laughs> Why was I even hanging out with these niggas? You know, like, so I always think about that. Like, I can't be in the, caught in the wrong place. So L.A., man, I, I, my, my heart bleeds for L.A., but L.A. is, is a dangerous place. With, whether you're from there or you're not. People are like, oh, why you think you got, I don't have no pass. I got a pass maybe in my little neighborhood. Uh, like, I go over there, I'm out of bounds. You know, what's the kid, PMB? Yeah. Manchester, like nigga, I don't even go there. I'm from LA. Yeah. Them is swans over there. So every area got a gang. I don't know them niggas. Right. God bless them, but man, stay in bounds. If you go to LA, stay above Wilshire. Go, go into you know West Hollywood and all the night. Don't why? It's like why would I come to New York and like take me to the grimiest area? Kind of sense does that make? You said you used to like to do that. I used to do that. I was like, you know what's crazy? <laughs> you know what's crazy? Um, when I first got out, that's what I thought was it. Like you know, we would go to a certain place and we would say, "Yo, where's the hood?" So we we didn't want the weed man to come to us like how we do now. We wanted to go, to, wanted the to, go to the weed man, so we would go. We would do that and we would enjoy it. And it was the now that I'm a fucking 45 year old grown man with kids, I realized that was the dumbest shit I probably ever did. Like, like I was already, I'm there to do a show. I'm there for business. And I'm requesting to go to the worst area that's in that city right. to, to buy butt. I mean, you know what? That's kind of how I met you. So it's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like good and bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, but what I'm saying is like that style of play is crazy now. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's dangerous. But hey, let me just go to the next question before we go to the last quick time. Let me slide. say something about that, though, yeah. real quick. When we used to travel from sea, from city to city, I was I had a, a mentality of take me to your leader. So, like, when we go to a city, I would be like, you know, when I would meet people, I'm like, who the niggas around here? And I would in, bring them to my show. Uh-huh. I would show them uh-huh. love. I'd give them passes and shit. Uh, and that was how I would always stay secure. Instead of acting you like you wouldn't go to the actual. No, I'm not going in your hood. Okay, fuck okay. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I'll invite them to the to, to the hotel. Right. Get them some, you know, laminates, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. And then I was good. I always said, you know, we're here in your town. I because all gangsters want is respect. Right. right. That's all they want. Yeah. You show them that. Hey, man, I'm paying homage. Yo, Ice, we your fucking fans. Okay, yo, we here. We in your town. Let us. Show us how you move. But like you say, I'm not going to the club after with you guys. Right. That ain't going to happen. No, I'm good. I chill in a hotel. Right. You don't need to push your stripes. You don't need to push how street you are. Mm. That, you know, I always say, if you challenge the street, the streets will catch your fade. They'll take your fade. Yeah. Right. They'll be like, oh, I think you can't get got. Somebody will catch that fade. So I don't want no beef. Right. Me <laughs> I don't want no beef neither. But but on that note, hold on. I gotta ask you this. Cause this is on the list. This is my producers who make these questions. Ice tea or soldier boy? <laughs> hey yo, these drinks are really starting to sink in. <laughs> I'm not even gonna validate that question. <laughs> nah, I'm not with you. That's a joke question. Yeah, it's a joke question. How did, let me, let, 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 let's build on that. Yeah, how did how did that start? What the hell happened? I don't I don't get it. I was in the studio. Uh-huh. I want Soldier Boy to hear this. Okay, yes. I was in the studio making a mixtape for some of my homies. Uh huh. I'm in the booth. The niggas start fucking with me in the booth, like they trying to you know like a fighter trying to get you to. Spit. Right, right. They hyping you up. Niggas don't want to hear you, nigga. They want that soldier boy. They want some Hurricane Chris, nigga. I'm like, fuck them niggas. <laughs> and that's how it started. I just said, I don't even know. I didn't even know who Soldier Boy was. Right. I was like, fuck them niggas. And then I just went on my old school iced tea. Nigga, he eat a dick, bitch. I mean, you know, you put a nigga in front of me, I'm going to devour him. I don't even know who it is. Right. So I was talking my shit. I don't know who Soldier Boy is. I have nothing against the guy. Mm. These idiots 
took that and put it at the front of the mixtape. These guys aren't my friends anymore. <laughs> you feel me? You feel me? Right now, you could we could go in the studio. We chilling right now. I'm, I know I'm being filmed, so I, I'm I'll, I'll, I'm be held accountable for every single word I say. Right. Right. But if me and you is chilling and I'm talking shit and I look over and homie got the camera. Oh. Yeah, what's that? Oh, nigga, this Hood TV. Oh. Nigga, Hood TV, nigga. I might segue into a murder, nigga. Like, right. they turn that shit off. Right, right. So they took something. That's how that happened. Oh. It was, it was just me talking shit. Right. That goes out. Soldier Boy pops up. Fuck Ice T, old ass nigga, this, that, and the third. Blah, 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 blah. I could have let that die, but my son, who was 18 years old, Dad, you got to reply. <laughs> Y'all feel me? My son tells me I got to reply because he's on the same age wave. So I, I'm in Arizona. I say some dumb shit, and I regret it because people looked at it like I just jumped out of my bed and went in on the kid. But that's not how it happened. Right. It was just, and, and and even the insults, I was not even aiming it at him. Mm. I didn't really even know. I, I They just, Hurricane Chris, who is he? He's a rapper, right? Yeah. I was talking shit about them. I don't know them. It's Hurricane, soldier, I'm not your enemy. I don't know you. Like, I don't yeah. care. Like, it wasn't that thing. But it got bent out of shape and people like, I just, well, you did say some real shit. I regret it. Uh. Because that's not my character. My character right. ain't to go in on niggas right. like that. But, you know, I learned. I learned my lesson. You ain't, I ain't talking shit about no fucking body, man. Right. Fuck that. Because it, it's counterproductive. Mm. It don't make you no money. Mm. Right. You know? It don't make you no money. It don't make you bigger. It don't make you smarter. Dissing people. If they not your flavor, then it's not my flavor. You know? But people will turn something that's not a diss into a diss. Right. Because I say I like DMX over pop. Oh, nigga, that's a diss. Mm. Not a diss. Mm. It's it's preference. They create narratives. To monetize. Now we're looking at your shirt. You got a shirt with every sponsor in the world. <laughs> this is a, a F1 shirt. Oh, you, you down with the, the racing F1? car race. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Lewis Hamilton back that's in That's why the IWC. Yeah, well, Lewis drives, drives for Mercedes. He yes. used to drive for McLaren. Yeah. But I'm a Watch car guy. IWC. Right. Yeah. I, I'm a car guy. So the, you just had the, uh, the uh, Formula One down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm friends. And it's, he's a black kid. And he, he's, you know, world champion three times. Right. That's so, yeah, I fucks Make with some him. noise for Lewis fucking Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton. Uh, the last, last, last one. Yeah, the last one. This is the last quick time of slime question. We still got more, but quick time of slime. Quick time of slime. Um, loyalty or respect? Loyalty. Loyalty. Why? Because loyalty can save your life. Mm. Loyalty is the most difficult thing, you know. Uh, I say respect is about the hardest damn thing on the streets to earn, but respect is ego based. It's like. Do I care if people respect me or this, that, or the other? I don't care if you respect me, but if you're loyal to me, I, I, I much more prefer that. I prefer loyalty. You know, I, a nigga can respect you and still throw you in under the jail. Wow. You know, I love him, but yeah, but a loyal motherfucker won't turn on you. You see, the difference is I won't cross you, not because I'm going to get caught, not because... I'm a rat. It's because I can't. Mm. That's loyalty. Mm. I just can't do it. It's my motherfucking man. I, I cannot do it. So that's why whenever somebody out is pocket out of pocket, talking out of line, saying shit, you got to understand that that's not loyalty. Because if I'm loyal to you, I will never utter a word out of my mouth. God damn it! Against damn. you, I can't do it. I take a shot to that. I'm I can't. I mean, Sorry. yeah, FN let me, he held me down. Right. He held me down. I was fucked up. I slept on his couch. By the way, we're going to correct you. His name's EFN. Man, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> FN works for me. <laughs> That's after, after some after. <laughs> DJ EFN. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> How about... 
Hold on. I want to go to the root of body count. Let's go. Where does that, where do you get that? Where did you, where did that come into play? Like what, okay. what's the root of that? Real quickly. Uh, my mother died. My father died. I was moved to Los Angeles to live with my aunt. She had a son. Her name, his name was Earl. Earl. He thought he was Jimi Hendrix. Uh, he kept the radio station on the rock stations. I had to live in a room with him. So I was put into the rock world by listening to everything from Jethro Tull, Black Sabbath, uh, shit, Traffic, uh, ELO, Blue Oyster Cult, all the rock bands. So I understood rock. I also understood punk because punk came through, Black Flag, things of that nature. Right. Okay, that's part one. I grew up listening to Parliament, Funkadelic, things like that. So rock and guitars were always part of my thing. Right. I go on tour with Public Enemy. I go to Europe and the kids are moshing off of hip hop. Now, if you you played in front of a mosh pit before MOP, yeah, it's wow. So once you see a mosh pit, fuck a crowd. Mosh pits. That's the shit. So I'm like, yo, this shit is dope, right? So now I want to make music for a mosh pit. They would mosh off a of Terra Dome and fast stuff. So now I got Ernie C. Ernie C was my childhood friend, went to Crenshaw High School with me. He was a guitar virtuoso. I said, let's make a metal band. Let's make a rock band. Like a oh, Jimi Hendrix. But more like thrash, more okay, fast. Thrash and punk. Yeah. More faster. Wow. But I sing about the same things I sing about. Mm -hmm. And that's where Body Count was introduced. And uh, the first album had Cop Killer, KKK, Bitch, right. different things on it. It was also a chance for Ice-T to pick another lane. I, I, Hip-hop was now getting crowded. I said, so I did it on the original Gangster album. Body Count just recently won the Grammy for uh, Best Metal Performance. Wow, congratulations. Wow, congratulations. So it's also like black people don't even know I got a band, Blood Camp. So uh, we play for 100,000 people over at the Download Fest in Europe. Uh, Body, I just finished a new album, which is called Merciless. And um, it's just a side gig that turned into a major gig. Now, Body Count sells more records than Ice-T. Yeah. Wow. So that's, that's Body crazy. Count, BC. Wow. And also Body Count, the name Body Count, was how many people we got to show that we dope to become fans. And then also it's BC, Blood Crip. Wow. <sighs> yeah, so BC, Body Count fans, respect to y'all. New album's coming. It's called Merciless, my first promotion on Drink Champs. That's goddamn it. And I just show I just showed Nori in a body count video for uh, yeah. Rain and Blood. Yeah. I'm wearing a relaxed T-shirt. You're wearing a relaxed Star Rock T-shirt. Uh, Star, Star Rock. There you go. There you go. There she goes. Right. She's with elusive. That bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> the bottomless drink. Yes, yeah, yes. It's got iced tea on drink. Uh, now, everybody out there that's watching this to say iced tea. You say you don't drink, and this, that, and that. Mm. That's it's the truth. I really naturally don't mm. drink, but I'm not afraid to drink. Just I'm not afraid drinks. of marijuana. I've never smoked weed, but I've been on the levels of contact high. I ain't smoke either, but we smoking right now with Nori. Yeah. I've been. <laughs> on, yeah. I, grew, I hung around. Like, Y'all smoking right we now. Smoking right now. I've been on levels of contact high. My son was working in a dispensary. I never forget. And they was smoking all kinds of shit. You know, at the dispensary, they got, yeah. you know, we smoking abortion. We smoking dead body. <laughs> we smoking, you know, the names is like dead body. This is kill 20 niggas. Eat that, try this. <laughs> you know, the names they got. So I'm so high, right? I'm standing. <laughs> Let me show you. Uh. So I tell the nigga like this, yo, man, I got to go, man. I'm about to get out of here, man. You know what I'm saying? So what's happening, man? Let's go. <laughs> I was... Fuck. Oh. I'm like, this nigga just stood up, turned around, and sat the fuck back down. So, yeah, I've been very, very high. Um, back in the day, we used to sell weed. Remember when weed was five fingers? Anybody that old would get a bag of weed? It was a big bag of stress with stems and shit in it. Yeah. Right? Early weed game back in the day. Uh, you call it what you will. So, under my staircase. <laughs> Under my staircase in my apartment, I had a little closet. Uh -huh. 
And we call that the gas chamber. Mm. And they had pillows in there. Niggas just go in there and smoke weed in there and just, mm. just like inhale it and just be fucked up. I didn't do it though. Uh. But yeah, I've been high. <laughs> and this champagne is not 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 bad at all. Uh. No, this, this that's is that that's the spade. And I've been it's drinking that, that Japanese, I've been drinking that De Leon. These are all De Leon. These are De Leon, that's the killer. This is the killer. This is black owned. Diddy, give me some of that. Stop playing. You you gonna play it right? You got a good shot? Oh, shit. Then he gonna have some Mama Juana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give him a shot. Like of I said, and a shot of mine. when I tell Diddy. people I don't drink, yes. EFM, when I tell people I don't drink or I don't get high, what? I always never thought it was, I never thought it was attractive. Right. Mm. Being drunk in public. No, no, as no a, not being drunk. You gotta be stem- No, I understand that. That's what we do. But being drunk as a woman, I was yeah. like, this is whack. This yeah. is dangerous. Guys. Let, that let me explain something to you, Ice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut mm-hmm. you off. But a neighbor of mine said to me one day, he said, don't walk over there by Nori. You're going to get high. To another neighbor. Right. To another neighbor. Said, don't walk over there. You're going to get high. Just by being near you. By being near me, I didn't like that. Did you give him real de Leon? Right. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's Which right. One? That's Which right. one? Which one, Chad? Yeah, and I'm going to do the, you know, I'm going to do my, my de Leon. Okay, all right, cool. So, um. If, so, I, if I drink anymore, I'm going to do some break dancing. So, so, so look. So, look. So, look. We're hitting so, record so, views so, at that point. Look, 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 look. So, ice, ice. Uh, it's how much. It's how much I didn't like when he said, don't go over there, you'll get high. I went upstairs, I got all my papers. I got my mar- medical marijuana license, and I came down and I said to the guy, excuse me, sir. I don't get high. I get medicated. Mm. <laughs> I said, this doctor subscribed. Right. You understand? <laughs> Getting high is when you go see the guy on the corner right, right. that's doing pull-ups. Right. That sells your weed. <laughs> This is, I'm not, I don't get high. I get medicated. <laughs> the doctor told me so, to do yeah, this. You know what I mean? Like, this is the total difference. Let's be clear. I'm so sorry. So. I, I mean, I'm myself, my whole life, I've, I've always been like a leader. That's right. So, But today, can you take a shot? But today, can you take you a, a shot? shot? <laughs> you got a shot. We, for we, drink champ. Yes, for drink champ. Yeah! <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Why would a nigga do that? Danny, you gotta give him a shot of Mama Juana just to, just <laughs> yeah. to say he did. Yeah, but hold on. Hold on. See, there's no reason to drink this shit other than to get high. Right, yeah. It, it doesn't taste good. <laughs> this. Oh my God. I disagree. <laughs> well, I know, but I do know the more you drink, yeah. the more the easier yeah, it goes. Yeah, yeah. No, but shots are never good. No. Nah, shots are never good. You're supposed to have it chill. Shots are disgusting. Mixed with, Let's be honest. Mixed with something. Like I, as I was saying, Nori, you ain't uh, drinking the military. No, not in the military. You got. I was army. 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 Charlie was army. He was army too. He got kicked uh-huh. out the army. Twenty fifth ID. Twenty fifth ID. Tropic the first light. army talk we ever had on drink champs ever. But dig this. this. Hard. Now he yeah. talked about it last time. Okay. Dig this. I've always like been a leader. Uh-huh. I've never had security. Right. Uh, and I always just felt being high compromised my situation. I, I, if I was your security, I couldn't get high, right? Right. But now I'm my security. Right. So I have to be on point. I agree. Now, the reason I never I never could afford security early in my life, and I noticed people that had it started to believe they needed it. Like their brain said, I can't go out without it. Mm. Now, me, like I say, I'm six foot I'm, I, I, I always felt I miss a good fight. Like, I, I took martial arts. I can fight. But I don't get to use it. <laughs> you know what I mean? mm. So I always felt like I'm really waiting. Like, having a gun, you just bought a good new gun. I'm waiting to work this motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I want to use it. So myself has always relax, been ice. like, you gotta relax. <laughs> I'm comfortable. I don't have beef. If you come to rob me, my shit's insured. I'm not afraid. Right. Now, I know I gave you that Gotta Relax t-shirt. Yeah, I'm not afraid. Up to this point, now, I might say this, go out here and get laid down, but... No, no, no. With, with no, no that, that's not going to happen. But, but my point is, alcohol was one of my ways of saying I need to be on point. Right. Now, what happened was, early in my life, my guys, I became the... 
the designated driver or the sober nigga in the crew. And they they liked it. When I was young, one of the big homies was like, yo, Ice, nigga, hit the weed. I'm like, I don't, I want to hit the weed. You a bitch if you don't hit the weed. Well, I'm a bitch, make me hit it. Mm. Why you tripping, nigga? Why you tripping? <laughs> now, anybody tries to get me high, the big homie like, nah, nigga, don't get high. He don't get high. Because he couldn't get me to do it. Uh. So now I become the cat in the crew. Ice is good. So I'm the nigga like if shit, if shit pops off, I'm grabbing niggas. Like, yo, nigga, if the police pull up, I'm talking. So the homies respected that. It's always good to have a sober nigga in the clique. Uh. It's always good. A, hun- a nigga that does not get high. And if you're in a room, if you on some gangster shit, right? If you're in a room and there's somebody that don't get high, that's the most dangerous nigga in that room. That's right. You know, if you hire security, they can't get high with you. Right. you like, nigga, what you put that drink down, motherfucker. Watch my back. Uh-huh. So that's why I don't drink. But I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of weed. Mm. I'm not afraid of drugs. I am afraid of drugs now, cause of fentanyl. I'm afraid of that shit. Yeah, yeah. Don't get yeah, get it. Whatever. I used but, to, I done ecstasy before. Uh, oh what? You did ecstasy. No, I don't you, like your ecstasy you, story. This is camaraderie. Yeah, 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 I don't like that ecstasy <laughs> story. Go ahead. What what happened when you on ecstasy? I, I see on ecstasy. Ne- never weed. I was in Miami. Oh, never, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> never weed. Did a guy named Eddie Giggs bring it to you? No. Nope. No. Yeah. Never weed. Is Eddie here? Uh, uh-huh. Never coke. Been around tons of coke. Never did it. Never sniffed it. Never touched it. Never smoked it. Uh, ecstasy. So well, how, how does this happen? So I, my whole thing was, give me a benefit and I'll do it. You in Equinox and somebody coming to you? Why, why, why <laughs> you want it? Why you want it? So my wife, Coco, okay, she's a party girl. She's from Vegas. She done done blow everything, party, did the whole thing. The pretty girls go out on the yachts and the boats. They early life, they wildin', mm. okay? Mm. So she lived that life, had been there, done that, seen it all. But she stopped. So when we would go out, she would drink, and she would want me to drink. I'm like, I ain't really trying to drink. I got to watch you. You know, so that was cool. one, two, three. Oh, <laughs> yeah. If you out with your wife and That's she right. gets drunk, somebody got to stay sober, yeah. right. right? So I'm covering that, covering that. So now, ecstasy. It's a sex drug. Uh-huh. <laughs> got my attention. <laughs> Sexy time. It's a sex drug. Now it's not. I don't need. I don't have erectional issues yet. Where are we going with this? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready now. I'm ready now. Was it? Are, are, you, re- are you ready now? Yeah, ready now. <laughs> I, I don't have them yet. I'm uh-huh. good. I mean, I, I guess I'm doing the right diet. And, uh-huh. But they say it's more than that. It's not like I needed to take Viagra. It's something. It's, it's, it's spirit. It's, it's another thing. Right. So now they got my interest. I'm like, well, this sex is the best shit in the world. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I'm down here at, in Miami. Always Miami. <laughs> And uh, Don't remember the crowbar? Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. This might have been EFN. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to validate my stories with documented yeah, shit. Crowbar you is legit I'm not making, I'm not <laughs> making this shit. Okay. You know, my boy told me one time, he said, Ice, you never got to lie because people won't believe the truth. That's right. Your truth is so out fucking rageous. <laughs> Just tell the truth. They're going to they gonna be like, you lying. Okay, anyway. Crowbar. We go into crowbar. Mm-hmm. Now, crowbar is techno. Okay. Yeah. That was the first space? It's kind of, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, kind of like I'm in the story. Just right, you got, you got, you got living room down here. You got crowbar. You got this is lane, right? So I'm in crowbar. Mm-hmm. What, what is the um? It's like it's in a place that looks like a theater. Cameo. No cameo, cameo, cameo. Right, that's where yeah. we. That's where yeah, yeah, I'm in yeah. South Beach. Oh, South Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what the, that's what they called it. Yeah? Holy shit, I'm learning lessons. So let's go. Walk with me. Walk with me into this world of iced tea. Uh, <laughs> I'm with Coco Dolo. Now, me and my wife, we go everywhere by ourselves. We don't go with entourage. We we go on vacations alone. Now we got a daughter, but we go vacate. I don't need to bring niggas. I used to do that when I didn't have a wife. Now I got a wife. We leave the hotel. We go on the crowbar. She got on the sexy shit. We hit the club. It's techno. For some reason that night, I said, I'm ready to roll. Now, that's what they to call roll? it. To roll? I'm ready to roll. ready to roll. Let's roll. So she goes, you ready? 
You ready? I'm like, yeah, what do I do? He said, you got to find somebody with some E. So now I'm the dope fiend in the club. <laughs> this might be the great story. This might be the greatest drink this Sam is, this story. Is, this is the greatest drink Sam story already. Already. This story I see made me take a sip a that was not part of the game or nothing. <laughs> It's, it's tickling me because I'm remembering it. <laughs> All right, so we in the club. Blah. Coco got her shit on. I'm, I'm like that. So she goes, yo, um, find the tits. So now I'm walking around the club like you got E. <laughs> and the white kids was like, yo, I see you trying to get some E. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, this is bad. Like, fuck it. So now I walk over and I see the dude. I, I see the dude. You know, with the big pants and the big platform shoes <laughs> and the and all the all the lights and all the, you know, you see, I see I see yeah. Mr. E. <laughs> he's got it all. You know the look. So he's doing this shit. <laughs> so I walk up to him. I say, yo, man, you know, I'm trying to get some E. He looks around, he goes, yo, I see he's trying to get high. <laughs> So I said, yo, play it. Look, look, I, I heard you the man. I heard you the man. The motherfucker reached in his pocket and pulled out a handful of ecstasy, like maybe 20 tabs. He said, you heard I'm the man? He put it in my hand. He said, now you're the man. Real talk. Swear to God. God bless this dude. Started me on my life of drugs. <laughs> So I go back to Coco. But you got 20? You took the whole 20? You ain't... I took the whole shit. He gave me a hand. The nigga said... The nigga... The, the pimp shit wrote Nori was, you heard I'm the man? <laughs> now nah, you're the man. man. <laughs> so he, hit, he hits me off. So now I got the bag just now. I, just, I feel like I got the bag. Yeah, continue. Continue. So I walk over to Coco. I go, yo. So I show her. She goes, yo, that's too much. What are you going to do with that? I said, so what do I do? <laughs> she said, take one. One for the whole one. Whole oh, shit. Not, she took a half. It was one of it was looked like it was, it was one of the kind that looked like a cylinder with two flat tops. Yeah. You feeling me? Double stack. Double stack. Double stack. Yeah. Look at that. Look, look at everybody here talking about double stacks. Yes, I've got okay. those right now. At some point, at some point if Our you team is wild. At, at some point, if you stay on drink champs long <laughs> enough, you'll go into the hole. <laughs> You're going to you are tapping into a different go drink to that, level. We done left gang banging. <laughs> we done left cribbing. <laughs> all that pimping. We are in the E world. We stop break dancing and hip hop and we going into the E world. <laughs> Let's go. And it's 444, right? By the way, wait there. Okay. Continue. So, she tells me to take one. I take one. This is the first thing that happens. I start rubbing my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Then, for the first time in my entire life, <laughs> this is like an e commercial from my seat. <laughs> Listen, it gets greater. Because everybody in here that's done e understands I'm not. I'm not making this shit up. <laughs> I cannot lie and say I did e without these certain things happening. Okay, good. I start touching my legs. Then, for the first time in my life, I understood techno. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> All that shit that used to go bump, 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 bump. Because I used to hang out in techno clubs when we traveled all over. Look at the music started playing. <laughs> <laughs> when you, F EFM, when you travel as rappers all over Europe, the only clubs to go to with girls are techno clubs. Mm -hmm. They know hip hop clubs. Mm -hmm. So we would be in them, but I'm just boom, 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 boom. I'm not, I'm not getting it. I'm like, yo, yo, let's fuck. Like, I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> but they partying. So now, tonight, techno, the shit just opened up. I heard... <laughs> I heard the strings you over like here. The nuance of techno. I could see techno. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I said, this music, you gotta be high. <laughs> you gotta be high. Now, the next thing that happened is Coco, everything around Coco went out of focus. She was in a glow. She's dancing in front of me, but I don't see anything. Nothing else in the motherfucking room mattered but her. 
And she's looking hotter than ever. Next thing you know, I got her on a speaker. She done climbed up on a motherfucking speaker. <laughs> I feel like I'm shit. I might have shit. I might have been a little bit too cautious to do. But now, get on that speaker, baby. And I'm standing like yo, like it was like godly shit. And I'm like yo, now. <laughs> Here's a trip with ecstasy. <laughs> ecstasy, you roll. If somebody goes like this, you become high. I mean, you become, you're like, what's that mean? It, you come out of the high. It's not like drunk. You're always drunk. Right. E.E. It's kind of like people that have never done it. It's kind of like if you ever listened to music and you got into the music and you got into this vibe, but then somebody came in the house, you come out of it. You could come out of it. You could go, you're not always high on E. You got to let E take you. Right. The place. Am I wrong? Right? You can you roll, but then you can snap out of it. You're sober. Can you get so, back after? The- yeah, you can. You just gotta let it happen. Right. Right. It comes in waves. A lot of experienced people. So long story. No, no, but, the crowd, but yeah. I want this shit to be official tissue. Yes, yes, no. Because we over here talking about drugs, That's motherfucker. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, me and Coco lead the motherfucking room. Right? We get back the to club? The, the, the club. The club, the club. We get back to the room, right? I turn into like Max Hardcore. I turn into like the illest porn star <laughs> of the history of the room. I'm like in my deviant shit. Like, I'm there. So, <laughs> let me just break it down. This is, this is for viral shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're honing in. <laughs> the only way I can explain it is that at, when we got ready to have sex, it was like choir music and angels was coming out the pussy. Like, <laughs> like oh, 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 oh. And my dick was so hard, I like shut the door with my dick. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. This is definitely a first time on three shows. So I went into Max Harkon, you dirty bitch. <laughs> shit. So I fucked the dog shit out of her. <laughs> And the reason I know, the reason I know, I'm not just patting myself on the back, is when it was over, she said, where did you come from? <laughs> now, when your woman says that to you, you know you did damage. She said, where the, where did you come from? So that next morning, I called my homeboy, Shiny Shine. I said, I found my shit. I'm the poster child for ecstasy. <laughs> this is my drug. Fast forward, one more quick story. So we're in my, we're in, air, air, in a, this is why I don't do it. So we're in Atlantic City. Yeah, it's the positive part. No, this is the negative. negative. This is the negative. Yeah. We're in Atlantic City. I got a, uh, um, what they call it when you do, you get a lot of gigs in one place, a residence. Residence. Residency, yeah. I'm doing, um, I'm doing eight shows over 12 months there, like hosting, bullshit. Hosting is fun. Hosting is the best hustle in the world. You just show up at the club and get on the mic and get paid, right? You only do a show. So I'm hosting in Atlantic City. So Coco comes up to me because she always wants to get high. She would probably wants me to do that damn thing like that, right? <laughs> she wants so, to return of the Mac. <laughs> yeah, she wants to return of the Mac. <laughs> she like return of the Mac. Why they got some exercise? Nigga, take some. <laughs> so I like, I was like, she said, but this time she says they got Molly. Uh-oh. Oh, right, the holy oh, <laughs> can't change. Molly comes in a capsule. <laughs> Molly is not a pill. Molly, Molly is what the fuck they put in that capsule. Molly's when ecstasy went bad. So basically she gets the Molly, blah, we split it up, bam, we take it. Right? I'm hosting. Blah, it's over. Now, show's over. I get in the hotel room. I'm ready to turn into devious. You know, tungsten steel, Dr. Backbreaker. (laughs) I'm ready to go in. I'm ready to go in. Yo, that shit had me like this. (laughs) (laughs) You turned into a vampire. (laughs) I was like, yo, what the fuck is this shit? (laughs) Nigga, I'm lit. I'm like, yo, this is not... X, I'm <laughs> so it was it was speed or crystal. Oh shit, dog! I was up 
I was up all night. The next day, I drove back to New Jersey. I stayed up the next all night. <laughs> Safe to say you didn't devious microphone tongue no slanging. Sense. Wasn't it? No sense. I, we were both like, yo, like, yo. Oh, she took it too? Yeah, we both took oh. it. I was like, yo, like, what's happening? Like, nigga was like, what's up? Like, now no, we're like wrestlers. <laughs> Dude, the next day, Monday, I had to go to Law and Order. Oh. I showed up on the set, like, yo, I'm high as fuck. <laughs> I told everybody, I'm high as fuck from Saturday. <laughs> so everybody on Law and Order was like, Ice is high. They just thought it was funny because everybody <laughs> fucked around. <laughs> I'm ready for my lines. I'm reading my lines fast. Like, yo, it <laughs> yo, it took three days to come off that yeah. shit. <laughs> I have oh, you, not got, you got Molly Wops. <laughs> Everybody out there watching Drink Champs, you know this might, I mean, you might have, I didn't die. It wasn't fentanyl. I didn't die. It could have been fentanyl. Oh, real song. So, speed, though. so I died. It was definitely speed. Some, some powerful yeah, yeah. shit. Oh, oh, man. I mean, I was ready. I was like, I mean, you don't know what's in those pills. That's the problem. I felt with those like, pills. you know, Macho Man Randy said, yo, man. <laughs> <laughs> so since that day, I haven't touched any drug. Because now with the fentanyl and the death of all my friends, you don't know what is in this shit no more. And, you know, the cartel, they making Percocets that well, look like them yeah. and all that shit. Chinese is pumping it into the cartels and the cartels is pumping them up. I just have regular sex nowadays. I'm good with it. You know? <laughs> He's like, I'm not a porn star anymore. <laughs> I have to figure it out. I'm regular. Know? But then was that, that shit turned me into a monster. That shit is, you know, but no, nah, I don't, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm nervous. I, I don't want to die like that. Like I said, I can't, I can't die like that. I can't die like that. I just got to go down and like some wild shit, gun smoke, wild shit. You know? <laughs> well, um, I'll get to a serious note real quick. Real quick. Um, I'm in Vegas. Uh, you in Vegas doing the Art of Rap tour. I, I hit, we on the, on the run eating. We doing our food show. Right. So I hit Onyx. Onyx is like, yo. So yo, come to uh, the show. No, excuse me. I asked them, to, can right. they do a guest appearance on the show? Honest. It's like, no we're performing tonight. We're performing tonight. Can you come out with us? I'm like, no problem. What they didn't tell me was, right before they were performing, Mob Deep was coming out. So, Prodigy was a person I knew so long. Um, and that was like the last time I got to see Prodigy. Um, we, we we hugged each other, smack fives. He he told me, as he told me many other times that I was I was on tour with him. It's like yo, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, I ain't feeling good. I'm just gonna, you know, whatever, whatever. But I I heard that so many times, and then come downstairs and got drunk and mm -hmm. smoked high with him. So nothing. And Havoc was like, yo, I'll, I'll be right here. So I went and performed, and I actually. Like seen Havoc, I believe, had a couple of drinks with him. Then they said, um, a part of he went to the hospital. Again, I've been on tour with Marv D. Right, so right, long. Right. And this was a regular thing. So no one kind of got alarmed. But then, as a message, seven o'clock in the morning, I remember I was downstairs smoking a cigarette. And as I was smoking a cigarette, they said, Prodigy passed. Mm. It was like, oh, shit. Because, like, like you ever seen, I don't want to say, like, the, the wolf that the, the cry wolf, but you ever yeah, seen right, somebody, right, like, right, right. people that the go that through something wolf. all the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like, like, all right, that's they just gonna normal. They're going to be all right. Yeah, they're going to be all right, right. That's, that's how I swear to God. That's how Havoc did it. That's how, I, in my mind, it, you know, Trip did it. So everybody that was with them, you know, all, my, all their people that I know and my people that I know, but then that shit, it hit that moment. I know I had to feel weird for you because he was actually out there. With me. Yeah, with you. So how did you? How, yeah, my event. Well, we did the Art of Rap movie. 
And I wasn't able to incorporate everybody that I wanted in the movie. I actually shot Norio, Noriega and, uh, and Capone, mm. uh, but I had to make the movie a, a 90 minute edit. Mm. So they made it onto the extra, right. like we get the extra CD. Right. But it was still more about people I respected. Right. So when it was over, Mickey Benson, my partner, I said, why don't you take this on the road? Let's turn this into a, a brand where we could bring out people that we feel represent the art of mm -hmm. rap. We're still going. Right now we have one coming up this week uh, or well, this next month with Benny Siegel, Memphis right. Bleak, and Freeway. We're doing them? shows. Art of rap? Yeah, art of rap shows. Yes. But it's just a brand. It's like Rock the Bells, whatever. Right. Mob Deep being one of my favorite groups, we always extended a leaf to them. Like, right. like, yo, we got shows coming up. This is what we can pay you if you guys want to show up. Wow. They always did it. You really love Mob Deep. That's beautiful. Everybody got a favorite group. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. Who's your favorite group? That's beautiful. NWA. Okay. It's beautiful. So, <laughs> I just, I, I was, to me, Mob Deep was like, I never heard two rappers rap so similar. Right. And then I learned Havoc taught Prodigy how to rap. Yep. But actually wrote his raps in the beginning. Right. But to me, Prodigy shit was not just gangster. It was more like conversational shit, but it was so gangster the way he would say shit, you know, and I just loved it. I just loved it. I mean, you might listen to some of my shit. You'd be like, that kind of like prod shit. You know, I actually used Prodigy for one of my hooks on um, retaliation. I'm busting off to my, I'm letting off to my arms tired, right? So anyway, I met them. Of course, when you like somebody, you you end up meeting them. Love is love. They used me on the intro of one of their albums. Mm -hmm. So when I did that, so now here we are in Vegas, Mob Deep, they done LA, done this, that, and so. I couldn't believe it mm. because if you saw Prodigy that night, Prodigy was like on swole. Prodigy came out of the pen. He looked good. You know what I'm saying? He was standing straight up and down like, what's happening? Uh, dead? And we get so used to people dying from gunfire and this, that, and third. I just, I don't want to sidetrack one of my buddies one of my best friends, Big Rich, I get a call this morning. His son just drowned. Damn. His son was jumped into some lake or something that was near a dam and he hasn't been found. I came here kind of fucked up. But Sorry, we get yeah. so used to. Sorry. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Big Little Rich. But we come, we so used to violence. If you had have told me somebody clapped Prodigy on the strip. I'm like, but Prodigy talks a lot of shit. Right. Dying, they said he choked on an egg. Oh, yes. I, I was just fucked up. Like, my idol, one of my guys. And the cold thing is Prodigy just moved over by me. He just moved over into Jersey where I live. So I was looking forward to kicking it with him, you know, making records together. Wow. It fucked me up. And then the, the, the B side of that is later on, I, re I ran into Havoc. Mm -hmm. And Havoc sat next to me and cried. Good. Like, Ice, man, you you don't even know just you saying how much you love us, how that has helped us, you know? Like, if you think about it, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but if you think about it, we saw the last moments of his life. Yeah. Like, we and he was healthy. We were all he was there. healthy. He did the show. He got yeah, off. He, he was healthy, yeah. He was healthy. And then that, that, that quick thing, sickle cell. But, you know, I think after COVID... All of us realize how fragile life is. Was that after COVID? No, that was after COVID. But I'm that saying after COVID. At, no, that was before COVID. Was before no, before COVID. That was before but I'm COVID. saying add. But he's saying this after COVID. We after realized COVID, that. all of us oh. now realize how life is so precious. I, I talked to F Fred, the godson. Mm. He was in the hospital. I, I got this. I got this. I got this. Don't worry about me. A couple days later, he was gone. Wow. See what I'm saying? So one thing I say, Nori, is that we are all the same age. Yeah. Everyone in this room, we're the same age. You either are alive or you're not. Because you might know how much money you got, but nobody knows how much time they got. Mm. So we're here. That's what we are. We're not an age. We're here. The kid that's 15 might die before me. You see what I'm saying? So age really doesn't matter. It's 
you're alive or you're not. There's no age. It's when it because no, there's no date on it. And prodigy to go like that. It fucked me up because I was look, a lot of times. Like, uh, huh? Yeah, no, no, I, I was looking forward to good times. Yeah. I was looking forward to having fun and getting closer to him right. as a friend. Um, it sucks, man. It's it really it hit me hard because like you know Travis Scott had performed right when he performed like so many people like blamed him for over it. Was there anybody that no you? no okay. Nothing, we had nothing to do with it. I mean, if anything, we got praised for being somebody that was putting out, putting Mob Deep on the road. Right, that's right. You know, the thing of it is, it's like a lot of these rappers right now, the art of rap was created just for you. Right. A lot of rappers are gold and platinum sellers. But if you're waiting on Drake to take you on the road, you may never tour. Mm. You feel me? So we needed to create something for people that were gold and platinum that could still go gig. So that's what Art of Rap is based around. Mm. People like yourself, Mob Deep, mm. uh, uh, Woots, just groups that need to go out and gig and still can. Right. So that's what that's what my my platform is from. And I've never made a dime off of off of Art of Rap shows. That's Mickey's hustle. That's my that's the way I gave my man something to do. Go do Fire. Something. Yeah. Up Mickey Benson. Yeah. God damn it. Make some noise for that, God damn it. I told Mick, I said, Mick, when we do my, when we do uh, Art of Rap, I'm an artist. You got to negotiate me with me for my price. Right, right. And then you just pay me what I do, and I do the show. I'm not going to do none of the bullshit in the back, no negotiations, none of that. I'm showing up as an artist. Many of y'all know Drink Champs wants to give flowers while people are here to receive them. Giving flowers and celebrating our legends while they can still smell them. We have partnered with What The Flower to create this movement where everyone can give flowers to the legends in their lives. You can now order a custom flower box for the someone you want to show appreciation to by visiting www.wtflower.com and place your orders now. I love the baby right there, man. I appreciate it. You know, this means more than any award that you can get on some real shit because it means that you're appreciated by your peers, you're appreciated by the people that you do it for, and I accept my flowers with love. Yeah. <clears throat> we so, took us to a serious mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went from ecstasy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Drink Champs is, it's a roller coaster. I need some coaster. dark liquor. If you want to take me there. Look, I gave you a shot of Mama Juana. Yeah, I gave a shot of Mama Juana right there. That Come dark on. liquor. You know, like, get, drink that shot of Mama Clear liquor makes you party. Dark liquor be like, you know I love you. Look, you, you got the shot. Look, you got the shot right there. Look, look. That's my mama. That's you drink this, I be like, Nori. Yeah. Niggas fuck with you. Yeah. I be the first to die. <laughs> I, 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 I die, I nigga. <laughs> this shit has you in your feelings. Mm. Fuck it. Mm. <laughs> I don't like how this shit tastes. That's bad. <laughs> that right there didn't taste bad. See, you see? What's that? That's the Mama Juana. That's, 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 that's decent. It's nasty decent. It's nasty decent. Niggas got me flunk. It's decent. Niggas got me see over here slurring his words. It's decent. It's decent. That's that pimp shit. It's, it's. On a song power. Okay, I love it. Now, I'm, now I am officially on Drink Champs. <laughs> right now, they got... Piss break. Yeah. You are off the chain. Yeah. I'm old, nigga. I usually have to piss every time I stand up. <laughs> so if you sit down, you good? I don't know. I haven't had to piss. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'm. Maybe I'm. You guys got me on adrenaline or something. Yeah. <laughs> but when you say they hating you, but you hating them back, and it reminded me of your speech. Was that? I don't hate nobody back. I, 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 I don't know why anybody would hate another motherfucker. You know, like Me a lot of times people hate you for shit they heard about you that wasn't even true. Oh. You know, there was this kid that um, this kid had a kid named Ice who was connected to uh, uh, um, connected to Joe Button. His boy. And he made a big thing about why black women ain't shit. And I took the heat for it. And I never said it. 
So a lot of people. Oh, because they, they see. Because Ice, the name Ice. Yeah, what, what's his name? You know his man? No. You know? It's a guy named Ice, one of his friends. Hey, he said he's on the podcast, right? So anyway, he actually called me. I said, Ice, I said that. That was not you. I said, well, there's no way to unring a bell. Like, they, the black women, since I got a white wife, they feel that's me. But, and, you know, they got pissed at me and it was something I never said. So a lot a lot of times people dislike you for the bullshit. Like somebody said, yo, Nori, you know, Nori did this, that and the third. Now they don't like you. And it wasn't even true. Right. You know, that's why good podcast is a good. I mean, a, a podcast like this is a good place for you to really decide whether you fuck with a nigga or not. You know, it's long form. You get a chance to. I always told bitches if a motherfucker that you dealing with a dude and he don't like me, that's a red flag, bitch. <laughs> if you dealing with a dude and he got a problem with me, watch that dude. Watch that dude. You dig? Watch him, not me. Watch him. <laughs> There's some reason he don't like me. There's some reason right. that he don't like me, and I might have triggered his real nerve. Like I done challenged his realness at some point. Because real niggas ain't afraid to say nothing. I'll tell you I'm scared. I ain't afraid. Of it's realness. Right. Oh, oh <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Holy moly. You can challenge. Your, your pimping what? will challenge another nigga's realness. Mm. So they'll watch you, and it'll offend them that you so real. Mm. It'll fuck with them. That's <laughs> basically. It'll fuck with them, especially around they bitch. Mm. They be wow. like, damn. I'm offended. <laughs> that shit got deep, right? But it's real. It's real. It'll offend them. It is, it's because it's a roller coaster. Are you, you got another shot? Are we taking a shot? No, I'm good. I'm over here drinking this uh, champagne. This fly champagne. champagne. Yeah. Champagne, I see. Yeah, you know what, niggas? Our players do. We drink champagne. Sniff yeah, the best yeah, cocaine. Yeah. So, yeah, let's. <laughs> ah! Let's talk about how, how did you get into pimping? How did. How I did never you... was a pimp. Okay. I never was a pimp. I hung around pimps. I understand the pimp penal code. No. I had the bitches. The pimp penal code. I know the rules of the game. <laughs> I had girls. When we was hustling and stealing, I had girls on my team. Mm -hmm. These girls were what they consider in the streets thoroughbreds. You know what a thoroughbred is? That's a bitch that'll fuck, steal, rob, work class. See, that hustle. But pussy is not out of the equation if that's what it takes to solve the, the, right. the Bro, hustle. Right. I rolled with some thoroughbred bitches. Mm. Was I sending them? Not necessarily so. It was part of the game. You understand me? So I never was no 10 toes down pimp standing on the corner with bitches. But I fucked with players and pimps and stuff like that. So I was in the life. So, you know, they respected me. I dressed the pimp look and all that shit. But as that being my occupation, making money, no, it never was. No. But some of the girls I rolled with was getting money, and they would handle their business however the situation aroused. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To pimp hoes, you send bitches. You send bitches, you get money and all that old shit. That wasn't really... I say I say in one of my records, I said, uh, I, said um, I took on the... Uh, I took on the Ice-T name. But the pimp game moved too slow, especially for a nigga who was hooked on quick dough. Mm. So being a robber and a hustler, that was just different. But I'm cool with the pimps. I hang with players. I grew up around players and hustlers. Some of my great uncles are, are some of the great pimps. So I, I understand the game. But no, I'm not a pimp. And I, I also would never, uh, I never uh, admit anything illegal on television. <laughs> Smartest shit ever. <laughs> Smartest shit ever, ever I said. Never, ever. I would never admit anything illegal, but no, that's no. It's an offensive word to a lot of women, but a lot of players actually hustle with women. Like the women are their partners. You're saying, yeah, in the game. But let me ask you, like, there's some strippers who made a whole life of themselves from being a strippers. And then there's some pimps that made a whole... Like, when you... I, I remember looking at your acceptance speech, one of the first people I seen you shout out was Bishop Don Wong. Ain't it, man? I love yeah. pimps. I mean, I understand the game. I'm, I'm a, it's... 
It's the underworld. Mm-hmm. It's the underworld. And one of the oldest no, occupations. No, 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 no. EFN, it's the underworld. Right. Guy over there, he's a car thief. Uh-huh. Guy over there, he's an armed robber. Yeah, yeah. Guy over there, he's a drug dealer. Yeah, you a pimp. Yeah. You coke dealer. Yeah. We all in the same world. Wait, the let's, let's switch. I'll it's the, the underworld, all right? <laughs> <laughs> the underworld. The underworld can all show up at the players' ball because we all players. We're right. not. We're not. We we don't abide by the law. Right. Right. The so I, I lived in that world for a long period of time. I'm very comfortable in that world. Do I condone it? Hey, it's breaking the law. Pimping is illegal. Selling drugs is illegal. So. A lot of people say, well, Ice, a lot of things you did, do you regret? I, I quote Fargo. You ever see the movie Fargo? Yeah, yeah I've seen it. It's, ben Affleck, right? Yeah. It seemed like the right thing to do at the, the time. time. That's my answer. Uh-huh. At this point in my life, would I do some of them things? I don't know. Uh-huh. I, I mean, I look at some of the shit I did. I'm like, I'm crazy. Uh-huh. Have I ever told a bitch, yo, go go hook, hook up with this nigga and get this paper? Yes. Was it my main force, source of income? No. But I remember I had this one bra, and I was trying to send her. I was reading this pimp shit. I had started dressing fly. I was trying to get her to hook up with these old men. That <laughs> she ran over. Yeah, like these old niggas. It was some tricks. that They was like, yo, see we want them young bitches down here. I was like, yeah. Cause they like <laughs> so I tried to send the bitch. So she runs over to my other dude. My boy, my my buddy, I'm not going to say anybody's name. It's funny, I like I used to say names, but a lot of these women have grown up and they're church women now. Right. They're school teachers. Like, Ice, don't say my fucking yeah, they name. Yeah, they Miss Louise. <laughs> I mean, that one of my buddy's mamas checked me. Jeez. Like, you put me in your book, Ice, come on. I'm like, okay. So I've learned that lesson. But anyway, the, girls, the girl I had at the time, I'm trying to send her, you know, testing my pimping. She runs to my buddy. I just try to. He's like telling me, "Oh man, she chose me." I hit him with. I hit him with the Mac, nigga. You a rest haven for hoes. This bitch is trying to escape this ism. Like, come on, man. But anyway, she ran off with him. But I mean, I mean, I mean, no, no. But I come from the life, and I'm very comfortable around the players, and I'm accepted as a player. Okay. Take it or leave it. That's how it is. You dig? It is. But I understand the pimp penal code. I understand pimping backwards and forward. I understand it. I'm named after Iceberg Slim. Mm. I named myself because I used to read so much Iceberg Slim. Of course, it wanted me to get in. It's not from Donald Goins, is it? No, Donald Goins is another writer. Okay. But Iceberg is, 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 Is is, is, is Jeff Beck, who wrote the Iceberg Slim novels. I actually have a documentary called Portrait of a Pimp. Mm. That we did, I produce about his life. So I'm reading that shit. Of course, I want to try to put it down. Right. But then I had an epiphany one day. I'm like, he's a writer. So there's going to be a lot of players, but the player that everyone knows, Iceberg Slim, is because he documented the game. Mm. So if I want to live forever in the game, I can't live the game. I have to document the game. If you listen to Ice T records, they're not records, they're books. Mm. The lyrics, they're, 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 it's Document. me doing Iceberg Slim over music. When you listen to all the records, it's like I'm spitting game. Not, it's not about dancing, throw your hands in the air. It's ism. So that's what it is. So, you know, I, I, I met Iceberg Slim before he passed. Get out of here. Yeah, that's Fab crazy. Five Freddy hooked me up with him. Damn, Fab Five Freddy. And I told Iceberg Slim to his face. I said, you know, I named myself after you. He said, well, who better, baby? <laughs> and I'm friends I'm with his daughters and all that, but Iceberg Slim changed his life at the end. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite Iceberg Slim quotes is, if you want to play this game, meaning the streets, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you. You know, whether it's penitentiary time, losing a close friend, but there's no, there will be a charge for admittance into this game. Wow. You know, and uh, I changed my life. I changed my life. See, Ice T, just so you niggas know, this is what Ice T is. Ice T is a hustler and a player who went down this road, the street road of hustling. And I, I run it. I'm, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be the flyest. I'm going to be that nigga. But I get to the end of this road and it's a cliff. 
And I see everybody going off, people I admire, dying, going, life in prison, LWAP. I see is me on this same road running backwards saying, don't go that way. Mm. That's my music. Don't go that way. Don't get in the gang. Don't try this. That's what I that's what I'm doing here today. That's who I see is. I know there's a cliff. You might not see it. You might pass me. Oh, you an old nigga. I'm smarter than you. Before we do stupid things, we all justify that stupid thing we're about to do. Uh. So you can take it or leave it. Like I tell niggas, you can listen to me or a prison guard, nigga. You yes. want to, you take your choice. Mm. But I'm here to tell you, I tested the game, the coke game, the, the jacker, rob game, all them games, and you're going to end up dead or you're in jail. There's no retirement. There's no ret The only niggas that have retired from the game have got out and transitioned. But there's no do or die dead gangsters 60 years old. It's been, it's still gangsters. Fuck out of here. It doesn't work like that. Now, you could be 50 Cent, and you could be a real live nigga on the streets, and you can get out. You could be a Jay-Z live nigga and get out. Right. But staying in it, 10 toes down, get out of here. Name one. Because the streets will rat you out. The, the enemies will come and get you. But a police... You know, I tell street niggas, if you popping on the street, EFN, if everybody in the street knows your name, so do the police. Mm. Mm. The only way you're going to survive is become an informant. Mm. All right. <laughs> Holy moly guacamole. <laughs> Did you ever think, I know this is a cliche type of question, but did you ever think that hip hop would make it this far? He's a perfect person for this question. Hell no. Because, because uh, tell us, tell us, describe to us in the beginning how hip hop was like frowned upon to, to, as opposed to how hip hop is looked at now as a global aspect. I was in the army. I did four years in the army. Uh -huh. While I was in the army, the cats from New York had hip-hop tapes. First generation of hip-hop is unrecorded hip-hop. Right. It's tapes. Right. Before Sugar Tapes Hill. of live shit. Of live shit. That's the first generation. Right, right. Treacherous right. 3, Funky 4 Plus, One More, all them. By me being in the Army, I'm with New York niggas. New York niggas is showing us off. They're showing off. I got tapes. I was fascinated with that shit. I was tapes. like... It's just hip, just rap. Tapes of live, live park jams, live shit. I'm fascinated. I never heard no shit no, I'm like. I'm fascinated that. with the kids finding out about tapes. Tapes, <laughs> yeah, tapes, yeah, tapes, yeah, yeah. Tapes, flashes on the yeah. beatbox. Uh -huh. you know, I was like, fast hip. The beauty, the beauty of hip hop, it's a culture that has four entry points: mm. graffiti, break dance, and DJ and an MC. Mm. You can get in four ways. Right. So that that really blew my mind. I was like, damn. Shit is dope. Then I saw New York City Breakers on the show called That's Incredible. Mm. Y'all, anybody remember that? Am I too that old? Johnny Carson? It was a no, show. It's not Johnny Carson. It was a show that had different people like that could do outrageous shit. Oh. And they had the New York City Breakers. And I saw break dancing. Well, I was like fascinated. Because right. we were popping in the West Coast, right? right? Spinning on their backs and and hip hop got me. I was like, yo, I want to learn how to do this. Uh, so I come out of the army with stereo equipment. I want to throw parties like Uncle Jam's army. Uh, but I practiced rapping. I was getting more attention rapping. The theory that it was going to be some way you could make money, never. No one had ever bought a car doing it. So mm -hmm. now I'm rapping. I hooked up with these guys called the New York City Spin Masters. My boy Evil Lee and, D and Hen G, they were from Brooklyn. They knew how to scratch. Ooh. So I hooked up with them and they were doing house parties. Mm. But at the parties, they would have four DJs. Feel me, right? Like on the, So I would show up with them and they would actually scratch break beats and I would rap. Wow. I got my name on the flyer eventually. Feel me? Because it was their show. 
the theory I'm going to get money. That's like I said, when I met Andre Harrell and them, I had a Porsche. I had jewelry. I was wearing two pages. I had a gun. <laughs> the niggas was like, why do you want to rap? You got it all. You got a Porsche Turbo. Why do you want to rap? I'm like, well, what I'm doing ain't going to last. Wow, you knew that. Every other rapper didn't have that at the time. Nobody had it. Run wow. DMC hadn't bought cars yet. Wow. I'm talking about 82. Wow. Wow. I just I just liked it. I would go rap it. I would do just shit in the day and then show up at a club on the weekend and be a star. Wow. And I liked that. Theory of it actually being my money, it never could happen. But it, it started to happen. Now the difference is the kids are getting in for the money. And they're like, I could put as little talent into it as possible. Like, we did shows before we got record deals. They get record deals before they do shows. Right. Like, you were, like, talent leaning. You had to have talent. Right. And I and, and by working in that club, I I, I, I I was able to rap every weekend and get better and get better. So I, I, I never thought this was going to last. They said it was a fad. They said it was a fad. I think when the major record labels started, I was one of the first rappers ever signed to a major. I got signed to Warner Brothers, Sire, Madonna's label. Yeah. That was the start. And then they, Sire is Madonna's label? Sire? No, Sire was was a label on Warner that Madonna was signed to. I was signed to the same level as Madonna, Talking Heads, Ministry. That's Chris, uh, a Basically a punk rock label by Seymour Stein. Just passed. I, I inducted him into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But um, he heard it. He told me when he signed me, he says, Have you ever listened to Calypso music? I'm like, No. He said, They sing about song, the problems in Trinidad, this, that, the other. But he taught, here's a jewel Seymour Stein saw me. Just because I don't understand it doesn't invalidate it. Mm. Mm. This means I don't understand it. What you're singing, I know people, it resonates, just maybe not me. Go ahead and make your music. I believe you sound like, to me, Bob Dylan. That's the only person right. you can connect to. How genius is that? To be able to say, just because I don't understand it doesn't invalidate it. It just means maybe I don't... Like, but I know I know there's people in this world that, that does relate to Right. Do you, you understand? What's, what's the Korean shit? The uh, K? The K-pop. Do you understand it? No. Does it invalidate it? No. It just means it's not your... This is my point. Right. But this is being an A&R guy, being that smart, saying, I don't understand rap, but I know it's something. Dope. Gave me my break. Do you think um, there was a difference from the Tupac that was on Digital Underground and the Tupac... That was on death row. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think we can all absolutely say that. see Pop when I when I first met Pac and, and, and Money B and all them. It was digital. Shock G, so you got Shock G, who's a hundred percent different. Parliament, this, that, and the third. I didn't even recognize Pac as militant or nothing like that. Just as a dancer, friend, Good. cool. And when he came out, I was like, "Yo, that's the same dude," you know. But I, I couldn't disrespect him because his lyrics was deep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to work on on Tupacalypse Now, me, him, and Q. That's a Rock, great album. Wow. On, on Last Words. Wow. So what, what people don't understand is I love Pac. Right. I love Pac, but he's an artist to me. He's just another artist. You know, people like Pac is a god, but Pac is an artist. He's like Nori to me. He's just an artist. Sure. So we were friends and... People, I, I, last time I was on here, I said something. Oh, I said I tried to talk to Pac, and people like, you can't talk to Pac. I'm like, Pac's 13 years younger than me. Right. And West Coast definitely has a pecking order. If you're a little older, motherfuckers will sit down. And uh, I had a story where Shock G came to my house. Told you that story. I lived in Hollywood Hills. Shock came on my door. I said, why the fuck are you knocking on my door? He said, I was up in the hills. I asked, does any black people live up here? <laughs> That's what Shock G said to you? <laughs> they said, Ice lives right over there. So Shock knocked on my door. We sat down and he was like, Ice, talk to Pac, man. You know, they feeding Pac gunpowder. Pac is like not listening to this me. This is no. Pac now on death row. You know, and, I, I, and we had conversations, but 
see, the thing of it is, it's like when you setting up, uh, when you're working with a rapper, you have to get a rapper in a state of mind. Death Row was training Pac to be a killer, which you heard in the music. But like I did a thing for Mike Tyson, which is like you train a man to be a pit bull, then you get mad when he eats the furniture. You see me? So that energy bled into the streets to his demise. Uh, because like <clears throat> at the end of the day, you would never kind of like recommend someone to get it. It's a gang culture because gang culture, like, it's like I wouldn't advise anybody getting in the streets. Like, right. it was like last if night, they don't last have night, to. um, I, I forgot you, you, um, I, I think his name was Nino Brown, or his his weed strand was Nino Brown, but he he said to you something like, oh, I'm from Hoover, and, and you said, Oh, I'm some such such, and everything that y'all spoke about, I was so lost as a person from New York. Y'all was just looking at y'all, and y'all said. You said over there on this ground, this ground, this down. And I'm like, that's some complicated shit. So if well, I'm like, you know what it is, Nori? Uh -huh. If I told you a part of Queens, right. you know what that block consists of. Yes. So he said he from 94th and Hoover. I'm like, yo, that's a very, very hot area. Right. That's the Hoover criminals. Right. It's hot. I don't. Where I'm from, that's called out of bounds. That's not where I go. I don't know them people. My my baby's mother, my my daughter, my adult daughter, uh -huh. her mother lived on 74th in Hoover, mm -hmm. 73rd in Hoover. Uh -huh. So I know all the Hoovers when Hoovers were Crips. They used uh -huh. Hoovers used to be Crips. Uh -huh. Now they anybody killers. They just they wear the uh, the H, the Houston hat. Those are the kids that killed Pop Smoke. Oh, God bless. That's Hoover. Them the Hoover criminal. That yeah, it's a set. I don't know them niggas. Right. So I was like, I just bowed down to his neighborhood. Like, yo, I'm from the West side. I don't know them niggas over there. That was it. Mm. Um, everybody knows the tough areas. Right. Everybody knows. So when you say it, if you're from there, you go, okay. Okay. I know how you grew up, but he went to prison and he came back home, but he's younger than me. See? So he said, my dad might've went to school. His dad went to school two years before me. But, but he said, yo, I'm, I, I, blah, blah. So that, that resonates with us. Right. He, so therefore, he's a little homie. So he going right. to treat me accordingly. Like, that's right. a big homie. Yeah. My dad knows you, right? right. Like, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's crazy. Like, I, when I saw that last night, like, I saw two people that didn't know each other and had a whole conversation, which no one else knew what y'all was talking about. It was <laughs> just y'all two. And, and and that shit was like like to me like is that is that any way you could go like any way you could go? You well, first thing I would do if you tell me you from L A. A lot of times niggas would tell me yo I'm from L A. I'm like what part? And then they'll back down. I'm like where you from? They be like Pomona. I'm like that ain't really L A. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's like you know I'm from Pacoima or some shit like yeah. that. Like I know where the I know where the trenches are. Mm. You know, so I'm like, but where you from? That's the quickest thing. I'm like, so what part of L.A. Where you from? Oh, I'm from whoop de whoop. I'm up from Main Street. OK, right. cool. I know. I know. Then what we'll do is we'll name off niggas. I know niggas from over. I know such and such, such and such. Right. They go, blow. Oh, you from 60s. I know that. I know such and such, such and such. But it's dangerous because if you like now you're in that world, right? right. Run into another set. Mm. Yo, who you know, cuz? Who you know? Oh, I know DJ EFN. Mm. Yo, fuck that nigga. <laughs> like, you know, right. it could be like, that could be the wrong name. Like, that nigga ain't nobody, cuz. Oh, shit. Now you better name a top tier nigga, you know? Right. So it, it's, it's just L.A. life. Like I said earlier, L.A. is dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I was able by knowing, being a player and moving around to different sets and learning about the shot callers and befriending them I knew enough people just to navigate the city. I've been in, I've been out of bounds. I was, I was messing with this girl from the bottom, which is uh, uh Crenshaw. The, no, the uh, bottom is the, bottom, the, um, the bottom. The bottom is the east side of the forties. So that's uh, that's um, 
The Pueblos, another project called The Pueblos. Niggas over there, want to hear ill name? They're called Bloodstone Villains. You ever heard of a gang called The Villains? Them niggas, is, huh? that name is scary, right? So, <laughs> so BSVs, Bloodstone Villains. So I met a girl on the west side, a pretty girl. I don't know the bitch lives in the motherfucking Pueblos. So she gave me her number. I pull up over there in the Porsche with the Fila, whoop de whoop. So she was fine. So I meet her one day. I was like, I'm going to pull back up. The second time I pulled up, she go, you niggas over here said they finna rob you. I said, all right, nice meeting you, bitch. I'm out. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> Pussy, nope, I'm out. I'm out. Because if I if something happened to me over there, my crew ain't coming over there. They like, nigga, why are you way over there? What? So there was a shot caller over there named Termite, uh, who was the main nigga over there that was selling water. Uh, so Water means dust. PCP. Okay, PCP. Second. Yeah, it's, it's what they use to make dust. Okay. So And we call it Sherm. Okay, sure. But anyway, just having the right connections and knowing where you are and mm-hmm. who's this and the third. I have a story where I went, I met this girl on the west side. I'm on the west side. West we side. gotta finish that story. So what happened? You was going through? Anyway, I just never showed back up at the bitch's oh, house. Yeah, he, he, just left. he just left. Okay, go ahead. I'm here to live. He's yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yo, a girl tell you, um, yo, you know the guys over here are planning on robbing you. That's all I need to hear. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm out. I'm going to go to the liquor store. I'm going to get something right quick. Yeah, bitch, yeah, you're yeah. not seeing me. I'm yeah, back yeah. on the other side of town. So one time I met this girl on the west side. West side is, any, you got the Harbor Freeway in L.A. Anything on the west side of that is the west side. Anything on the other side of that is the east side. Here's the thing. Ain't shit on the east side. Ain't no businesses. Ain't no hotels. Ain't nothing but drama on the east side. East side niggas wear sweatsuits with hard shoes. <laughs> you ever seen the old niggas that have the sweatsuit on with the party socks, the big socks, and Stacey Adams? Them niggas. Them niggas is on the east side. What? West side niggas is players. We got K-Swiss. We fly. East side niggas is dangerous niggas. Like, they... <laughs> <laughs> My man's laughing. Yeah. They, so yeah, East Side niggas is real hard, uh-huh. hard. So um, I meet a girl on the West Side, and she tells me she lives on 99th in Success. That's on the East Side of Will Rogers Park in Watts. I'm in high school. I catch the bus down Crenshaw. I catch the bus down Century. If you want to find, if you want to, if you want to go to the jungle, get off at the. Uh, LAX, you're on Century. Just take Century East. You'll run up in Watts. Right. But you don't. You go you go west. If you go east, you'll end up in the worst part of LA. So anyway, I, I catch the bus. The bus stops at Will Rogers Park. I gotta walk across Will Rogers Park. Dangerous. Nixon Gardens there, Imperial Courts. So I get to the girl's house. I go in her house. Her mother's sitting. And one of them big reclining chairs. Hi, baby. You want some water? Like she, one of them, one of them hood mamas, laid back, got the feet all swole up. Like, ah, you know, so I brought me some, some drink in a mayonnaise jar. I'm in the hood. hood. <laughs> in a mayonnaise jar. While I'm sitting there, her nigga shows up. Now I'm in the house. I'm talking to moms. Do you, do you got the Jerry curl? I had a perm. I'm gonna let something in. Don't get it twisted. That's what I meant. I meant meant the perm. But I'm a kid. I'm a kid, Nori. How old? 17. Okay, let's go. Keep it going. We in the hood. You know, you in the hood when you in a house that got car furniture in the house. Oh, shit. (laughs) Cinder blocks, the hood, hood. Like doorknobs is only one side. (laughs) You gotta use like a key. (laughs) So the dude shows up. So she outside trying to talk to him. She got another nigga in the house. I'm sitting there with moms. Like, yo, this is going bad as a motherfucker. Like, I got this number. There's some Watts nigga outside. I'm, this is fucked up. I sat in that house literally about an hour waiting for that conversation to end. The shit wouldn't end. So now I'm like, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm bailing, right? So I just walk out the front of the house. I walk out the house, right? I walk right past them. I turn and I'm walking. Now I'm walking, right? I'm expecting to feel this. Like the nigga just clocking me from behind, but I'm just walking like I ain't got it yet. 
I ain't looking back. What? Just waiting for them. <laughs> yeah. And I, I made it. I walk off. They never say nothing. I'm like, shit. And I got in the middle of Will Rogers Park, and I'm like, what in the fuck are you doing here? You don't not belong here. That was not your bitch. You could have died way over here. And I got my ass on the RTD, and I went home, and that was my last attempt. La I learned two learning lessons of being out of bounds fucking with bitches. Like, like what this Cube said, never fuck with a bitch from the projects. I learned my lesson, and I made it home safe. I didn't get hit in the ear. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't got the Conor McGregor's? I wasn't finna fight this dude over his girl. Like, I was just like, why am I, why am I here? Like, so yeah, yeah, sometimes you shouldn't travel too far for pussy. <laughs> you shouldn't travel. <laughs> shouldn't travel too far. Don't travel too far for pussy. Holy yeah, or, or in someone's total different territory where you don't know nobody. Right. Fuck that. Right. So let me ask because uh, <laughs> I know I know we touched on it earlier, <clears throat> but there was a stigma of going commercial, right? Like going to the other side, right? And what's what's dope about you is we we don't think you went to the other side. We still believe you're iced, right? Right, the same nigga. Yeah, I pretty much. Like, yeah. We we like yo. We see you play a cop on TV, but we know that nigga might still shoot you. Like that, like that that's real shit. It's acting. It's I'm acting. as far from a cop as you possibly could get. Mm. Right. That's acting. I can act like a cop. I can act like a slave owner. I'm acting. I learned that acting is acting. Mm. Now, how you perceive it, I don't really give a fuck. Mm. If you, if you want to make the mistake and think that you know that I'm not whatever, that's that's your mistake. You know. Right. What's it? Well, I did I did a record with R.J. Payne, the first first lyric. Cause I walk around with the rocket in my hoodie pocket. Your biggest mistake is thinking I'm fake. Mm. <laughs> so if that's what you choose to do, play yourself. No, nah. <laughs> man. But no, as far as being commercial, right. I. I never would do clean versions of my records. I was really wow. adamant about not doing clean versions. Did you do clean versions? Yeah, I was trying to get that bread. Right. <laughs> I was so, so, so like stubborn. I thought that was selling out. And then NWA yeah. did it and they made a lot more money. But a lot of records, I, there's no clean versions of Ice T records. I, I still hate doing it. Even when I do body count, I do it all raw. And then they like, can we clean it up? It still this seems whack to me, but yeah, you know, you are in the business. You're trying to sell them a record. Yo, Ice Man, I can't thank you. Oh no, yeah, man, you my brother. You've you've always been there. Every time I've called you, you was like one of the realest, if not the realest. And then and now, not only that, a lot of people credit me and Fat Joe for having the best stories in hip hop. I learned last night that we're not even in your league. <laughs> like, we're not even in your it. league. Like, he got it. You know it. what I'm saying? So you the big homie are not only hip hop, like, you know, crossing to another world and getting money in another world, uh, but definitely storytelling. Uh, it's you and Slick Rick. I love it. Well, look, look, one more thing. Let me promote sure. something. Can I promote Let's go. something? Yeah, oh, please, please. Me. I'm doing an album right now called The Legend of Ice T, Crime Stories. Ooh. And it's from my eight albums. Uh, it has, it's a triple album. It's going to be, um, it's going to be vinyl because mm. I want to make no. it special. No. And it's all my story raps mm. from eight albums, including five unreleased songs. Mm. Uh, and reason we titled it The Legend of Ice-T mm. is because a lot of things people believe in me is legend. Mm. It's not true. Right. Because what I write, when I write music, I write faction. I write stories based on truth, but just there's some things in there, you know. So a lot of people believe things about me that's not true. Mm. So that's the legend. The legend, Ice was in the club. Ice knocked five niggas out. Okay, I knocked one dude out, right? Uh. But the legend says it was five. So 
that's part of the stigma, like you say, of who mm. Ice T is. Mm. A lot of this shit's not real. Mm. But if that's what you choose, you believe what you choose to believe. I'm like, you know, let's have fun with it. So that's why it's called The Legend of Ice T Crime Stories. <clears throat> uh, it's all story rhymes. So people that like that part of my shit can dig it. It's going to be dope. And it should come out this year. God damn it. Yeah. And let's come back to Drink Chance. We're promoting it. We're doing whatever the fuck you got to do. Let's make some noise for motherfuckers. <laughs> And what do you say? It's always a treat. Yes. When players play meet, it's always a treat. <laughs> so before we leave, is there anything else you want to say to the fans? I, just everybody out there that supported me, that's fucked with me. I know in order to be an Ice-T fan, you had to fight. You had to deal with haters. You had to tell niggas, fuck you. I like Ice. And it's it's been a struggle to be part of my journey. But for those of you, that's that's just how much more gangster you are. Mm. That you're willing to stand on who you fuck with. And uh, my job has always been to make y'all proud. I know people out there got tats. They got all kind of shit. Mm. So when I fuck up, I know I let y'all down. So I'm trying to win because I know when I win, y'all win. You know, y'all get to say, that's my nigga. That's right. So that's why I always think it's bigger than me. It's I got people out there that really believe in me and fuck with me in a real way. And I've always been very proud that... The niggas that fuck with me are the most real motherfuckers. Right. The people that fuck with me. My boy said, Ice, there's pre-prison rap and there's post-prison rap. Uh. Your shit is post-prison rap. Motherfuckers that really been through some shit, fuck you with me. take you. a shot to that. Ice, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Simply, not, not a sip, a shot. Give, give, you, give, give him some nice shit. What, you get some old Give him some That's what you want to uh, do? I don't know. Give him one more that. for the road. Give me some of that shit right there. Oh, he wants some more wine. He wants some more wine. Get some more If wine. I drink enough of that, I'm going to put these on and walk the fuck yeah, out yo, of here. Let's go. You're going to speak Spanish. Be like, dale, get the way. Hold on, man. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I'm going to take yeah, a... Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, make this for the cameras. Get that. Mate, why the cameras yeah, ain't zooming in? Right, 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 right. No, zoom in from the front. You got to see it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look, 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 look. You see this? We take off the Louboutins. This is yeah. a pimp shit you don't know about. Yeah. Niggas got this pimp shit. And I'm putting on these player shits. Cause they got me so comfortable uh. right now. I'm so motherfucking comfortable. And this is how you end it out, Ice with a shot. Yeah. Salo. And we already five. Salo. Come on. Yeah, you know what? These niggas are so used to being fake, they have no reference point to real. We here to show them, give them a reference point. Woo! Right. Okay. That's something. Let's take a picture. Yeah. Let's take a picture.